whether it's first, second, third, we won. I think it was like 76% of the time over the three years. And so what that tells me, and th I say this because this would add to my linebacker view of seeing things, is that the quarterback is affected when there's people coming at him. You know, and, and I think it's a quicker effect. It's a, you know, I think if you're a form down rush, I think they feel that, the get off. Mm -hmm. I think they, that is felt. I think it's, I think it's faster though when a guy is timing it off the snap mm -hmm. and he's hitting it right in your face. Yeah. And whether it's an A or B, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we played uh, Utah State, we played San Jose State, and it was just for like a whack championship, I guess, really. San Jose State had a quarterback. Failed. Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah, we played. We played. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was, he was good. good. And um, <coughs> he was one of the few guys that we played that year. He was the only guy that threw guys open. You know, the yeah. ball would be out before they make their cut and fall in there and that. And uh, anyway, we won that game. We, we sacked him 13 times. Now all of those were on creepers. We played two deep. But we played two deep when it was just a four down rush. And we played two deep where it was certainly pressure. You know, the corner was rushing. Safety was rushing, and the QBR, the percentages, all of it, night and day. You know, it was four man rush to creepers. In other words, he saw the rush. Now, there are some guys that can very clearly see the rush, mm -hmm. and those are the guys you love to see. There's other guys that don't see it as much, but they're still affected by it. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And the ball is coming out sooner. And, you know, I mean, some guys just, their eyes come down, and there is no throw. Yeah. Other guys, the throw is affected. I don't know. It's always that's always been the case. I think the USC game, our last game, was a case of that. Oh, that yeah. guy was yeah, no was, was not. He was someone that game after game would step up into the rush and take hits. Mm -hmm. You know, we looked at all the, the you know we gave up two touchdowns, dropping eight in the red zone. And I look back, that's a mistake. But you know, prior to that game, the data on all that guy was he was the best in that league with pressure when people. There was pressure in his face. Right. He stood up, took hits, and that's when he was the most efficient. Right. And so he struggled versus drop back pass. Yeah. Now the problem with the, or versus uh, max drop, right? And so the the problem we had with max drop was that our three couldn't contain him, right? One of our freshman no guard, nose guards was doing like the hula. It's back there, so it's really just two guys rushing, mm -hmm. you know? And then we couldn't match up with those guys when we were scrambling. Yeah. Around, we were scrambling. Yeah, but <clears throat> so there, there's a there was you know hey we're gonna have to do what we do, you know, but there was a bit of concern is can we can our stuff affect this guy is he just gonna step into it and throw it? But yeah, I think pressure affects everyone. Really, mm -hmm. you know, they just yeah. Yeah. But um, these are some of this is Peso. These are some of like the odd the odd looks yeah, and, uh, and then. drops
blitzes, man. Yeah, man. So none of these. How's it going? Hey, good. Gotcha. Good. Mm -hmm. Dan O'Brien. Dave. Good to meet you, Dave. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So, and one thing, we, the one thing that's missing here was um, was five man pressure. You know, I think we ran one five man blitz, and that was versus Rutgers. We had a sack. We started like the third, started the third quarter. And we double bug the whole game, and you know when we visited um, the Bengals and all that, they were four strong, four weak, and we called the coach. At that time, we called it two sky. Mm -hmm. uh, like two by two, we play like a V, you know? Mm -hmm. And three by one, we play, we use the term dog, but three under three deep, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, all of that fits with all this. If you're building, you're building your looks. But when we had a sack on it, but it's just always, you know, I don't know. I think it's kind of like that place we just, you know, um, it's hard when you're getting pressure four-man rush to pay for a five or six-man rush. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like bargain yeah. shopping. Yeah. You know I mean? mm -hmm. If I can get a really good, like, chicken sandwich for two bucks, then why would I spend five? You know what I mean? I can get it for two. You yeah. Know? And then um, that kind of goes, that kind of runs its course. But I, th I do think, though, that I will say this, though, is because um, you can go crazy, and this is a little bit crazy. This kind of goes on and on. That those those are, those are the guts of it though. But um, I would say, and I think it does it does affect the five man rush or the overloads. The overloads are useful because they open up other creatures. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. this, to have the ability to show them and call them is important. Yeah. And looking back, I should I should have done that more. You know what I mean? Because I think because <coughs> yes. Um, whether it's simulated pressure, uh, whether it is uh, overloads, bare front, uh, double mug, I think all of those things, and then I'd go here as well. Now, we didn't do any of that really, but those I think offenses don't like. And you like to do the things that offenses don't want to see. Yeah. So simulate pressure, overloads, bare front, double mark front. Have that all in uh, that ability. The other thing I would say would be, you know, <coughs> what was, we call it circus. That's, a, you know, the little guys on the field and they're off the ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're able to, to morph into what you want to, to morph into. Um, okay, so. I was going to start with the peso, but I guess the general idea, like the big concept, and I think, right, we're all probably beyond it, but I wanted to kind of start with it, would be like, is, is, um, because I think this will kind of come up when we start talking about this, because the thing is, like, the fit, it's like, how is it, how does it fit, you know? And so, I mean, if we're to be something like that, we would call that front over, and the tackle would over to the tight end. And if we were to be in something like this, we would call this front under, right? The tackles are under or away from the tight end. And then um, this would be, we, we use the term tight for this, so it would be four eyes, four eyes. And so, you know, whoever these guys are, <coughs> um, the whole thought would be is that we want to build those fronts. And so we, we can build under this way. Build under that way. We can build under that way. Uh, we can build over this way. We can build over this way. Right? We can build over <coughs> this way. And, and so we're building over and under, and so that's what these guys do. Use it, so that's the idea of all this. They're all four man rushes, and it's all simulated pressure. We call them, we use term creepers, they're all creepers. And so we're just building these looks. So the fits for over are the fits for over, the fits for under are the fits for under. Um, with this as a part of it, <coughs> like say, if we were like in any form or fashion, all this stuff's coming up right now, too. At, at 
the school in that now, so I say if it was this. And say there's a three there. So this is all the time into this. So I say there's a, a linebacker here. Well, and let's say it's something like that, you know, and there's a guy here and a guy here. <coughs> all right, well, how does this guy, this B gap player, how does he play? Um, how does he play that B? Does he squeeze the guard? I'm talking about this block. Does he squeeze the guard? Does he gap charge it? Um, is he putting hand on the tackle? You know, how is he playing that? How he plays that, we would look at is how that guy, it affects that guy and that guy, right? All that. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, at um, in LSU they run the zone read, so they're, they're comboing uh, vertical. Ohio State would run, we, we call it the veer read. And so they're down, 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 <coughs> and it's that angle, you know. And so um, zone read, veer read. So right, right now we're kind of talking about the zone read with this guy. So how does he play it? If he were to be gap vertical, then that, would, that guy would be, he'd say you'd have to fill. Because he's going vertical, right? He has to make it big, right? Mm -hmm. So he would put hands on that four eye. He was a vertical charge, like Gary Anderson, um, Oregon State. For you guys, the flip of what your offense is going to see, and you see that he's going to go vertical. You know, he'll be in the gap, but it's going to, you know, it's this and this. If, if this block comes, he's a four eye. If that block comes, he's a three. Mm -hmm. Gary's been doing that forever. And so that would be that charge. Now, when he does that, this guy is forced to play the A. And then over here, this would be kind of, we would we call this like a uh, uh, a fill in the fold. Yeah, two years ago, we played this versus you guys when you guys came to Wisconsin. So you would fill this area and then you would fold. Meaning, if that ball went to the B, he would play the B. If the, if the ball was cut off with this with this stuff, he would fold behind. You know, he was sitting there for Q. <coughs> Doing the fold, right? If the three technique guy squeezed the block, right? If it was block, if it was, you know, we're coming out of our hips and hands, and the block of the guard is down, and the in flights adjust to that inside step, and you squeeze in the guard, then we don't want the fill anymore. At least we've not talked about the fill. It's because of the, the porch is sh so short, and we're really kind of giving the middle finger to that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so this guy now becomes more of a rope-a-dope, <coughs> rope-a-dope player than he is too. These guys are more this way. And he's squeezing, right, on this play. Because he's saying, you know, I want to show color on this to get this guy to come off, right? But then, you know, the tackle's chasing, and then um, I want to go play the back. If that back continues on the path, I'm A and B. If that back bends, then I push and I'm in the crease. And this the big gap player will work the full back in the end, depending on the back shoulders and all that. But how we play that three, that is how that rope a dope is what how these teams are playing, but it's just with movement. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and so we're slanting a guy now, right? And so now we're, we're talking about you know this type of thing, right? And then we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. And so you know, if he's an A gap player, he's gonna work this way. If the block's out in front and the ball's <coughs> cut back. And they've effectively cut the playoff and it's on rope and open back. It'd be the same if we're in the tight front of the you know, close to yeah. Right? And we're getting this action, right? And so we're getting, we're getting all this, right? He's we're thinking A, right? This block comes up, he we see as a nest, he's playing the, behind that guard, he's playing uh, behind that guard because he we're seeing A, B gap, lag, back door A. B gap, right? But it's all dependent upon the back. If he's in here, we're this way, right? If he starts to bend it, there's your cutback, there's your fill and your A. If he bounces it, there's your C, there's your A. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, Dave. Keith Jordan, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So, how we play that tight front, how we play movement, how we play the three technique and base, it's all the same. Okay. You see what I mean? And so, it all ties in with all that. So the fits, um, 
they're not, I guess what I'm trying to say is they're not, hey, there's a fit for this, there's a fit for that. You know, I mean, that style is all yeah. the same, it's pacing for all, you know. Um, okay. So, peso then would be the, uh, the idea behind peso came because we used to play nickel. And so, um, I guess let's start there and I'll show you the reason why I think peso is good. If you've got a B that can do what we ask them to do in some of the three man okay, so if we're to be a nickel, nickel would be three down linemen for us. This is our term, the nickel. Mm -hmm. Three down linemen, and then the, the out, an outside linebacker would come out. The nickel would come in, and you'd keep your other outside linebacker, and you'd have your two inside linebackers. And so you could play all of the odd stuff you wanted to. Now, uh, if you would do this, in my mind, if these three were three of your better players, and you keep them on the field with the thought that you want to rush them, you know, and find ways that they can stunt, they can twist, they can, you know, you can line up and bear, do different things. The weaknesses of this, for me, is that um, those three guys are rushing all the time if they're not good players. Because you can't drop them, or you, you wouldn't be as feasible to drop them. Right? And so there's things like, you know, we could do like Orton right here and bring an A gap guy and slant these guys out. We could run uh, Tolzine to the tight end, right, and do that. We could run, um, you know, uh, field slant slant these guys and do that. And, and that's a great package and you can do all that stuff, but you're limited to, like there's a limitation, you know. Now, you can, um, um, you can get to some of the odd things like that, but it's one linebacker stuff. There's not a bunch of two linebacker ads because of the three down, okay. Now, and from that, you could very easily, when we're in nickel, the bench was always to the boundary and in the lower two field. So they got lined up that way no matter what, no matter where the tight end was, anything. So we could easily get down to that and get two four down looks. Yeah. Okay. And then we would stem, you know, we have a move call and we stem and then we're right back to on, back and forth, right? So there's flexibility there. Now, the weakness with that. The, four, the, the biggest weakness to me in nickel, <clears throat> and all of this is if your D-line are not, are not, um, you know, the fierce enforcement, right? mm -hmm. um, is that um, there's less flexibility. And so if you are rushing, if you're rushing and similar to pressure or creeper, the B more or less has to be away. And usually in nickel, my experience with nickel when we've been in this, the best player in that group was the B. And he was the guy you wanted rushing, mm -hmm. not the yeah. three other down guys. Right. You see what I mean? Yeah. So now we're getting into some of the pressures where we're rushing and the B's always dropping. You know, we're rushing the three guys that we really don't want rushing anyways. Yeah. And so it never it was conflicting. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and yeah, the other part would be too, is that, and it's played a lot of, so I, I'm talking like, say we wanted to do something like, um, like say we wanted to run far and we want to bring the nickel from the field. And so he would be on a bullet track. Uh, this would be a track. This was a track, right? Or uh, uh, a slant, right? Three eye to a four, to a four eye. This B would have a gone on the tight end. The safety would come down, play gone. Gone was like, what was the term in 3J for these guys? Out and up. Yep. So whatever term that was, they, our term is gone. Gone, yeah, that's what they use. Okay, yeah, same thing. They term. use gone and in. That's it. So this would be gone, two out, two up. And yep. if two's past the linebackers, you're man to man. Two goes out, in form fashion, you have them. Two goes in, inside the linebacker, it'd be in and in. You know, it'd be curl flat defenders. So we say you could hook flat. All that, this is far. That's the field over there. Okay. Now, if we wanted, if you wanted to run, so let's so. Right or something of that of that sort. Say the same look, and your bees over there. Track, right? This is 
be a cheap face. How to be a face to contain, right? Because again, you're bees dropping, you know. And so that was nickel. So there's some limitations. I think nickel kind of suits itself more to traditional, you know, the guys that are on the line of scrimmage, are rushing, and that, right? And so, you know, there'll be times when that setup where if you wanted to, let's say the nickel's coming and the Q sees it, and then he looks to the sideline and they're changing their thing. In peso, you could flip it. Yeah, because yeah. it's balanced. Here, yeah. you really couldn't. Or you could get out of it, I guess. Right? Yeah. But you couldn't flip it. You couldn't go from far to blitz. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is what we did a lot. So, um, you know, nickel is good, I think, versus some of the. When nickel has its benefits, is the downhill power 11 personnel teams. You know, because of the bigger guys you got in there. Right? So there is, if they, if they want to uh, run the old play and they're moving people off the ball, I think Nichols got better because you got three big guys in there they can hold the point. If you got Pacer, you're counting on your movement. Mm -hmm. That's what you're defending yeah. with movement. You know? I mean, we're, you're going to teach double team, you're going to teach technique, but it's movement yeah, mm -hmm. that you're defending with. Um, okay. Uh, so anyways, we used to be in that. Utah State, how many years ago? That was the main piece right here. Was nickel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went back and watched a Utah State game from yeah. a few years ago. I watched the Santa Fe game. Yeah. There's a lot of nickel. Yeah. There's a lot of three down. Yeah. And so then from there, the need for peso. Now, we ran peso at Utah State. But it was two, and we had two nickels. Or we had one nickel and one peso. Well, so nickel more or less was that three man book, and then we come on and then we play peso. And now we look like this. Uh, this was the field, and so this was our B. This was the nose came out now, all right? So the uh, nickel came in, and uh, the nose came out. Okay, and then we had our other DN. Okay, and you know it could be that could be your nose. To be honest, right? It's yep. your two best guys, I guess, yep. really. And then the F went to the to um, to the boundary, and the B went to the field. And we look like that. Okay, and the reason for that was that some of the drops we were talking about just a minute ago was that some of the drops. The drop to the feet, to you know, the guy into the boundary is going to have two removed like that. The way we're set up, I guess, it all matters how you set up. You know, so but how you guys are set up, it may not matter. You know, but the way we were set up, the nickel was always to the field, and so the B is always inside the nickel, so the B is never running the two vertical, or that the guy to the field is. Yeah, because the nickel is always to the field. Right, and since the nickel is always to the field, the guy that's always in the boundary is the F. So that guy, like in this picture right here, that's a gone. So you wanted the F, who was a better agile guy, to be in that spot. He'd be the guy carrying Right, he's the guy carrying the vertical and the gone. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right? And so, and the other part really, if it's three by one, the F's the guy that's getting the wheels, you know what I mean? Yeah. And getting all those. Yeah. Right? And so you, you do your best to try not to put a guy in a spot, but you can control that, I think, only so much, really. Yeah. The B, his drop on his trips, is um, right outside of three, and it's more of that that we call a strong hook. And it's a it's a it's a five five yard by twelve yard box. You see what I mean? And so he's less, even though that's to the field, he's contained, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And so his drop isn't as uh, adventurous as the boundary drops are. And so we flipped. Um, Peso in the beginning was this. And we would do, you know, like spike one rat. We'd go with a tight end. Right? This guy was called it scat control on him. Two face, face. We rush this. He would hug rush on the back. And so these were your four rushers. And these two guys were like your say if you just got lined up and pace old man. I'll explain all these as we go. These are just this is just some some BS really. But say if you just lined up and look like that, here's your four rusher, you know, 
things like that. Mm-hmm. That's what those two are really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> the only difference was, you know, we aligned this guy outside and said, hey, if that back crossed your face, you would be beautiful. But that's the only difference here. And so, you know, um, say the tight end releases, the safety's playing the tight end, tackles out, they slide, he blocks, you want to spill him, he hug rushes, and you still have to hold that. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, we're running spike one rat out of it, we're running all the, all the stuff out of it. But the problem was, is that when that came out on the field, I looked at the first year, the first year in Wisconsin we played Northwestern, we played this, you know, like seven or eight, eight sacks, something like that, and it was all this. And then the next game we played Illinois, and this came in, and all of a sudden now they're running the ball on third and 12, you know, third and 10, right, checking the runs, because this group came on. And so it was very much an attack dog group, which was great, but the structure there wasn't a, a lot of flexibility, which, you know, there can be, I guess, just in terms of how you play it. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't call the movement, you know, and call the base, I guess, right? But the, the, the year after that, so I'm talking about we were having both nickel and base. We eliminated that, and we wanted to get the four-man and three-man looks for base. And how we did that was with the B. That was the field, and so say we, you know, we look like that again, right? And then we would stem, right? So he would stem here to a four eye, he would stem to a zero, he would stem to a four eye. And that allowed us to play, oh, these are odd looks in peso. And these are all four down looks. So that enabled us to play that. And I thought, you know, um, it was a, two years ago, it was a plus. And two years ago, the mistake that I made, or it was, you know, you're kind of building and you're figuring it out. Um, I won't, I was going to say you're figuring it out as you go, which I really, I guess, is true. You figure out what your guys can do as you go. The mistake I made two years ago was we got into this and played too static, played too much of the type four, which I'll talk about if you guys want. Um, and that's kind of forcing that guy to be a fucking guy, right? And then this last year, we did more movement, and it was a lot better, which makes sense to have a little guy in here. Or, you know, that's Vince Beagle. Vince is maybe 240, maybe 245, you know? Um, the guy at LSU is about that size, too. And you have him in there, and if he is a four-eye, he's moving, he's sliding, he's yeah. moving. You know? mm-hmm. But you have the ability to show that look and stem. That's pace right now. And so what that did, as far as passing situation goes, that eliminated nickel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what nickel would only be is, hey, the, the odd structure is best. And um, you know, I'll say this. The thing about odd is when people play odd, this is my opinion, just to look at and being around it a little bit now is that they're not going to block you like an old front. They, they're going to block you. You're going to see different plays. They're going to block you different. Pass protect, they're going to pass protect against you different. You know? mm-hmm. And so it's very much along the same lines in a lot of ways as like a, a bear. Or, you know, when you should be four down, they always look at how do they protect against a bear? Mm-hmm. Can we dictate a protection? You know? When you should be four down, teams, how do they protect against double mark? Can we, can we dictate a protection? Yeah. Odd is also that way. There's a fair amount of people in this league. They see odd, they go big on big immediately. Yeah. You just rush rush someone in the A gap. One on one on the back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so odd gives you that ability right away. And then there's other people that you when know, you go odd, they'll continue to slide. I kind of like Minnesota used to do that. Uh, who was the other one? Illinois used to do that too. Mm-hmm. Right. So like like juice. So that would be say we're odd this way. Right? And it's slide, so they're going like that. And you play our man when the guy's inside leverage. Mm-hmm. You know, so then we would say deuce, and we would just create a three technique like that. So we have him one on one. Look out. Like that. Yeah. So now you've got perceived pressure, and you're not, that, it's two bucks to do that. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the, right? And so that's what you didn't want in 
much as peso to four down is good, there's advantages to being in the three down schematically, as long as you're not cutting the nuts off of your bee. You know, yeah. If your bee can handle it, there's advantages because you're getting protections, you're getting, you know, the blocking schemes. Right? This right here is the big thing, right? All of these, it's like that. All of these guys for those guys, and that right there, right? Yeah. And then this guy over here, over here. But like, say, even if it was this, the blocks, <coughs> Because this says it's zone read, same thing. So let's say I'm going to zone read it, and they're going to slam that down, right? And all this is going to come, and they got some bubble, something over here. Yep. Or that way, right? And then we used to slant him, we didn't slant him anymore. We used to hop in Arizona State, lose the game that um, we should have won, right? We're, we're driving to win the game, yep. and we're in field goal range. And the guy stopped a needles, and the guy didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And then the time goes, and they fucking lost the game. But in that game, we did a lot of this in that game. And but the thing was, we slanted. So when they ran zone read, the guard going, "Hey, thanks, Buster." <coughs> and the rover's right in. So that was a bad angle to him. It was after that game. It finally kind of dawned that it's better just to play that guy head up or lag it like normal, you know, mm -hmm. that protects it. So then. And we add the guy to the back. So the biggest thing here is play pass. Mm -hmm. That's the, the play actions. Yeah, USC then, with a couple. Of right, to the play right. actions when they're like that. And the O-line are blocking, right? So they're looking to, the coach saying, hey, slam on that nose, sell it to these guys that it's run, fan out, fan out, fan out, all that. And he loops out. The guy that's responsible for him is the back, and he's taking a run fake. Mm -hmm. All that. Now, like you said, the USC one was even better because he was going this way. So there's no one to get out there. And so, but, but you know, the, um, that's real simple. But the blocking scheme of the 3 4 gives you that. You know what I mean? And then the other, the other thing would be say, there's not so many teams that would be even with their backs anymore when they run the power read, but there's some, there's some that are. Um, we adjusted at halftime with one of the teams, so who did we play? The uh, Alabama Troy. And so we were going to the back, all they had shown was zone read. We were trying to do that. But the they were running was away from the back. And so at halftime, they switched it because they were doing this. So you get that same. So whether it's passing, right? I guess what I'm trying to say. Whether it's passing, protection, or run, blocking, right? You're attacking the one on ones, right? That's what you got. And so then it's this, right? Quarters off that, and that's just how it be. That's wizard. What we're I don't know what we're talking about right there. Mm -hmm. And so the odd gives you advantages to play around with if we can, if you can get to it. You know? And then the ability to stem from even to odd to how that stem, I think is 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 a positive. Right? So our stems would be that. The other thing to do with stems would be in, in even uh, or even to be a four down look like this. We used to show one shade to the other shade. You know, we call that a deal. And so we, this would be a, this look four to three down was a stem, this was deal. And so, um, you know, any of these right here were all shade one way or the other. And so we deal it, show it one way, get laid. And all that was off of the study of the, of, you know, when is the most inopportune time for them? You know what I mean? Is it, does the, the we played USC. And USC, um, they called us like one of them. So obviously everyone was all schooled up on it. That's the only time I've ever talked to a ref on that, was that game. And I felt, I felt bad doing it. I felt like I was, like, it was just not supposed to be done. I had never talked to a ref before in a game. So I remember I'm talking to him and kind of looking at Paul because <laughs> my mom shouldn't be talking to this dude, you know. I mean, I had to say, like, more or less, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, because yeah. the, we got him to jump, and, um, you know, they said, the guy that told was telling me was saying, you know, what the, the, nose, the nose guard, when he moved, his head bot. And I go, okay, so we move, so, so I'm sure what we're doing is we're moving from an over to an under front, and everyone needs to know to move, which is why we say move. 
and I try to say that in a non dick way, and, and that's a lie, but I mean, that's what I told him. And so he's all, I understand. So I go, okay, so if we do that and we don't nod our, don't move our head, we're good. And he said, yeah. And so we got him again. You know, we got, we got a call. But the, the, I guess the quarterback at, um, at um, USC, when he was under center, He's, his hand would be, when he was under center, he'd come this way. This is the center right here. His hand would be right by the center's hip like this, right? And he'd kind of uh, survey like that. And then his hand would come under, and the ball was coming out right after that. And so we moved. It was when that hand came under, right? So he'd be, you know, all this, red, 33, red, 33, move! I mean, that was it. Yeah. And then and in the gun, it could be whatever it is. You know what I mean? It could be... You know, the tap of the guard, it could be the head of the center, it could be the, um, the quarterback settling in, right? You know, what are the top pass concepts? Um, what are the top runs? What are the indicators for the sack? Those are the things on Monday that are the biggest things. You know what I mean? Or Sunday, rather. You know, those are the Sunday things. Top pass kinds, of pass concepts, the top runs. When is the when is the snap coming? Because all of our stuff, so much of it's built on someone's coming off the ball rushing. He cannot afford to be late. You know, he, he can't be rushing when the ball is in the quarterback's hands. So there's a lot of time spent uh, studying what it is and making a teach tape of it. You know, mm -hmm. and so you're trying to cover all the bases of. of um, under center, in the gun, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then your, your scout, your look unit has to be right on, right on the money with it, because you, you put money in the bank in terms of the reps. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the deal on the stand are big, are big pieces. Okay. Um, all right, so pay some. So, So the, if we were if we were to say I'll do this last thing and then get in get into like type four and wizard and all that, and some of that stuff if you want I can skim it or I can get in deep depending on how interested you guys are, or if you want if you're interested in all of it that's good too. But this would be base. Okay. So if we're in base, the field this was the F and this was the B, right? And then we call it, this guy was the Mac and this guy was the logo. Right, and so the, the field was kind of what would be like a cross between an outside backer and a strong safety. I mean, if you're, you know, I'm trying to look at it like 6'2", 6'3", 6'3", you know, the more length with the F and B, the better, right? And I'd probably say 220, 230. He doesn't need to really be any bigger than that. If he is, that's great. And then the B, you know, 6'3", 6'4", right, 240. Around there would be great. And the Mac and Roll room, <coughs> a lot of that's, we're kind of having that discussion now at LSU, because LSU's, there's, there's a fair amount of like, um, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not going to say that it's like star driven and everything, but there's a fair amount of like how fast he runs and how high is he jumping and all that. And there's merit to all that. And there's been a lot of guys that have gone pro, so <coughs> I know for, far more than I do as far as. Evaluation and all that. My only concern with you know, that importance at the linebacker position is that nowhere in there is there um, instincts, right? Feel for the ball, right? Feel when you shoot your gun, feel for when you rock back, and that. You know what I mean? And I would say that is um, just as, if not more important than those other things you know, for that position. Um, and so the Mac, I mean, the best Macs, you know, the Chris Williams out of Hawaii, we got Corey Paredes um, at, uh, at Utah State, and Jake Dowdy, all those guys are six foot tall, you know, uh, and they've got a lot of instincts. And the thing with the linebackers, when we tried to recruit them, we wanted guys who we look at running backs. Hmm. You wanted yeah. running backs. Yeah. You know, with, guys with vision. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Guys with some wiggle. Yep. You know, you know, the, 
when we rush you. Know, we had a guy, Derek Landis, two years ago. Derek's one of yeah. my all time favorite guys. And so Derek was a white guy with some wiggle in that. So, like, you know, we same had a camp at Northern Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Derek's. Yeah. He's a cool dude, bro. He'll be one of those old guys at the airport wearing the sweaters and stuff. He's a badass, though. Yeah. But so, okay. So, say I'm a linebacker and I'm covering a back out of the backfield. You know, so who's the guy in Nebraska? Um, he has a pain to cover. What's his name? What's that name? No, the, oh, uh, Abdul Amir. Abdullah. Amir Abdullah. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so the, the concept goes you'd much rather make Amir Abdullah cover you than you cover Right? And that's what all these four man rushers and line do. Yeah. And so then the, the thought would be, like if I'm a running back and you're a linebacker, right? And I'm coming and I'm in the backfield and I'm gonna work uh, 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 what do you call an option round on you, mm -hmm. right? So I'm bursting out and I'm giving you all of this right now and there's this distance. As a linebacker, you're going, well, thank God, you know what I mean? Because the time is going, the quarterback's doing this and the air is, is um, closing up to your advantage. Yeah. But if I was a running back and I went straight at you, full speed, and then stick you one way, head nod, and get you to tilt your weight and go the other way, opposite your, you know, like what an option is supposed to be. Yep. And that's a pain in the ass. And then they should start going, like, why don't people do this more? I think it's one of the best things that Wisconsin does. Right? Yeah. Get the backside yeah. to work those options. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. And so, that is flipped now from what you're asking these guys to do. So we call that a, I use the term a freeze rush. And so we're trying to do is run right at you, okay, and get on your toes and then head nod it. Now the thought would be, I know we had this discussion where, um, you know, our guy does a great job in terms of coaching the front, but he has different terms for everything. I mean, he's very much in the D-line world, which I appreciate. Um, so, you know, I, I forget. He calls it, you know, just a head nod like that, calls it one thing, and then he calls it just a step and a head nod, and calls it another thing. And I just called it a freeze rush. Now, the, the idea would be we wanted to be like on it. If I were to work on a line with you, mm -hmm. I would st st stick my foot in that line and then head nod that way. Mm -hmm. Right? So, what I didn't want to do was go all the way this way and get right. you tilted to have to come back all the way that way. I wanted to head nod it right down your crotch this way to get you tilted. And then I wanted to push off this foot and get vertical. So the freeze would be like an Allen I Al Iverson crossword dribble. Right? So we wanted you to wanted the foot to go here where, you, where you, he had to deaden that weight right, to have to start again. Right? And by that time, we're saying we're gone. And we wanted him to feel the space right. of a three way go. Mm -hmm. right? I could freeze and go out, I could freeze and go in. If I froze you and you light like this and go right through you. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? So like, you could bring like say like, say there was this and you could bring the corner. And if that corner would speed rush that that I think the speed rush with the the blitzers is uh, overrated excellent or of no use really be because be. the speed rush to me is about the get off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so it's the yeah. D-line get off. Yeah. When yeah. you're rushing from, um, you know, when you're rushing from distance, yeah. that get off's not a factor. But what is a factor is the fact that a lot of times that fucker sees you, mm -hmm. right? And there's an awareness that here comes this dude coming right at me, mm -hmm. right? And he's kind of getting his cleats in the ground. And if you just take an edge and run around him, then you're effectively helping him. Yeah. Yeah. So we want him to feel it go right at him, you know? And then right. stick it, head nod, and go the other way. So if we go like one, two, three, so if I was rushing this, right, if I was rushing this guy, right, I wanted to stick it right here, head nod, and we tied it to where we flash his hands, so stick it, head nod here, to get him everything we could do to get that weight shifted. Right. Right. So if I was rushing here, one, then off that one, I push off this, this two, right, and then I finish with a rip. Okay. Three. So one, two, three. You know, and, and get vertical. But Whole, like when we first started to teach that, it was all like um, initially be on the line, so we'd all be in the line. There'd be a bunch of guys like this, I'd, and I'd be over here, and they would just jog and head nod and stick. 
So they're going to jog this way, head nod, head nod, right? And, um, and head nod and be on that line, head nod on the line, head nod on the line, head nod on the line. Then they come back, go the other way, right? And then, then after that, then there was that you know, pop up with the arms, and they would have, have that approach, head nod, and then flip their hips, no hands. And then I'd be behind, making sure that they weren't over there. You know? And all that's to say is the best guys that were at that were guys that played right back. Yeah. You know, I mean, the guys with the, the neck rolls and all that, they show you know, yeah. 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 Okay. And so when we were in base, we would flip these. So if we went to um, peso, the F went here and the B went there just for the space issues. The Mac and Rovers, the Mac would play in the field. And in um, the majority of these four down looks, the field defenses, all of these are field defense. Two kick, two packer, field defense. Favre, Brady, Bledsoe. So Favre's field, Brady, Bird, Bledsoe, boundary, Fox, field, Montana, middle, Marino, middle, Breeze, boundary. Right? Namath was the nickel. Rogers was the running back. Um, all field based. And so back to the field, over to the boundary. What, uh, how far do you ever, like, in defining Field, your ball gets X number of yards off a of hash. How'd yeah, you, how'd you be do an that? offensive tackle? If the offensive tackle is on a hash, then the opposite, opposite uh, uh, field was the field. Okay. And then if the ball was ever in the middle of the field, you called field left, field right to passing string. Okay. So they would flip based mm -hmm. on passing string? Correct. If the ball was just directly in the middle, the nickel would go field left, field right to wherever passing strength was. And we play it from there. But that's a good question. So if any, if the O line was anywhere, it was on that hash. That was the uh, the other way it was the field. All right. Okay. So if we're in, if we're in type four, I think type four is got merit um, versus spread teams. Type four is kind of a basis for being for teaching. We're using it right now. I think there's things you can do to. Uh, we ran a lot of type four, I guess. So, um, you know, it's hard for me. I mean, I don't want to be like like you know, I was at Utah State and we had a guy. We used to film like this all the installs. You know, like all my installs at LSU were filmed, so the players have them on their thing. You know, and the coaches. They want to watch mine, they can do it. I give it up. I hope the coaches say, if you want to film it, you can. I'm going to ask that they film it in fall camp. You know, and all that. But, um, right now, it's if they wanted to. I, I imagine there's some hesitations with being new and all that. So, um, but we had a guy at Utah State, we talked about drop, and uh, it was always kind of negative with drop, but it had its place, this eight, you know, max drop. But, anyways, it was summertime, and I'm watching his install of it. And he goes, so it goes on, he goes, guys, this is a hard deal. It's difficult. It's not the best call. <laughs> That's <okay. laughs> so I'm trying not to be like that with type four. Yeah. I mean, but type four is like one of our base things. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's merit, there's there's a lot of merit to it. I like it in the run game and I like it in the sideways throw game. It is not great vertical for it. Mm -hmm. uh, because the pass rush. See. Yeah. So tight would be the B is a four eye. The end over here is that zero nose. Mm -hmm. and the end's a four eye. The nickel um, is going to play uh, the overhang here. He's got an apex align. Yep. Uh, uh, the Mac over here is to the field. He's a thirty. The rover over here to the boundary. He's a thirty. And then we've got our F outside backer using the boundary. We've got corner, corner, safety, and safety now. And the, the way that we play quarters, we play, um, um, we've had three ways. We had hammer, we had nail, and we had red hand. Okay, so hammer would be to any um, one receiver side, like a pro or a split. So this would be a pro side. Mm -hmm. 
single receiver would be a split. Yep. So that would be hammer would be your two quarters, would be your um, outside backer responsible for two to five, and uh, your corner um, playing loose man on number one. What's up? You doing good? How's it going? Good. good. So uh, loose man. So if one went up, man to man. If one went under immediately, yep. he would fall off. Would be loose man. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so hammer was outside back or taking two to five. Mm -hmm. Um, safety on top of two, if two was in or out, you'd zone the quarter. Yeah. You didn't have him aggressively cut one that could be a piece. There was times where you would fox the post, times you'd see the quarterback. Um, the base way was zone, zone off, which would see the quarterback. Um, nail, like if we play nail over here, nail was your read, mm -hmm. your um, corner and safety both reading two. So if two were to go out, um, and we said within six yards, then that corner would harden his feet and the safety would get over one. Yeah. If two was vertical or an in, the corner eyes went two to one, and you go man eyes on two, and this, you, know, you play quarters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nail. You know, I think nail, at least the way we played it, it has had its place. It hasn't been a big piece. Um, I think the the constraint throws, the, the run pass option throws have stretched that some and the ability of the guys that we've had to win one-on-ones and the run, run blocking has been, has been a bit of an issue. So nail has been, hasn't been a big piece. Red hammer has been more, right? So red hammer, so nail is like, you know, palms, I guess, right? Yeah. And red hammer is, is I don't know, another way of saying zero. So the safety has two out and two up. Yeah. The corner's locked, the loose man on one. So the corner, any time the corner hears hammer, I've got one. You know, I have one comes under immediately, I zoned up, yep. one pushes up, I'm locked. Right? And red hammer, two out and two up. And so this dude plays, we call this a nail hook. Because whether it's nail or it's red hammer, he takes three to slap, it's yep. the same. And so like I say, if it was something like this, say we get a bubble, that safety triggers now. Yep. When we go red hammer, a lot, a lot of the, the, the teaching way is for him to be outside leverage of that number two, which is always a, you know, I think this is like a one, two, three, four, this is the fourth DB coach now. I've been around and that's always the, so we talk about this and then like, the, it hasn't failed like the next day. So coach, it's a, he's outside leverage of two. <laughs> yeah. So, that's a, um, but yeah, he is, you know, and it's for the seven cut, yeah. and it's for everything else, and we squeeze it. Uh, so we've, I've looked at moving that guy wider. We've always been, well, we're going to play him inside, right. be a, you know, post protect yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. But, you know, really when you do that, a lot of times you're going to be pressed with your corner anyway. Right. That's right. You know, that's and, right. and that's. Yeah. It's either, it's a, it's a disadvantage wherever you put them big disadvantage the other way, and that's where they're going to be thrown. Exactly. You know, I mean, wherever, whatever it is. Yeah. And, then, you know, and I think there's always the ability to think, well, the other coverages that I got, I can change the leverage on that on that slot. Yeah. Try to make it look the same. You can kind of play that game. And um, there's probably some merit to that. But when <clears throat> when we played when we played Red Hammer, we initially, the thought has been, if they are not, if they are not a huge four vertical team, then we're playing outside leverage. Yeah. Right? We're playing the seven cuts and everything else. Now, if it's not, it's so like even in this, we'll fox off of this guy. So I say, say if it's if it's something like that, right? He's loose man. We would fox him. So he would go to the post off of that book. Correct. And, and so then that then way. Right. So it plays in that way. Get, so yeah. two by two is the most threatened you get with outside leverage. But yes. if we get a block, we'll get some help. Now Three by no, not uh, but two by one, right? Yeah, we'll get a fox post all the time. And okay. so, you know, we're we're heavy on those seven. So, like, say if it's something like this, we're squeezing, and then we get that. Yeah. We've got that ability. Or if we're here, we should win that, right? Which is always the best, the seven. Cut. And so, the um, the nail hook player though, right, is responsible to pack in on the vertical. So if I get a vertical round, right, you know, he's not. That's part of the difference from going from. From four three to three four is it? In four three, there's a, a five technique there, 
you know, outside the tackle, and then that out and that outside backer maybe one by five inside of number two and doing all that. Well, for the outside backer is the five technique. You know okay. Right? Yeah. And so he's in the run fit, right? And so some form or fashion is two over two over there. Yeah. Right. At least how we play it. Whether it's this or it's that. Yeah. Okay. Right? And so he's got to keep. So. This cat is seeing in man line of scrimmage to the ball. Uh, so he's getting his run pass through from here to there. And <coughs> so his his footwork is um, pat your feet. So he's going to pat his feet, get his run pass through. If it is pass, he's going to be uh, uh, shuffle footwork or shuffle eye and, he, and work to try to get a stab on um, number two. I thought last year the guys did a great job of that. But then if he feels vertical, he wants to be able to pack it back in. And so again, that's the reason why we press this, because all this he's buying. Yeah. And he's hard on the seven cut. All that's cool, that's cool. What about that? That's where he packs it in. You know what I mean? So if we fail this, if we if we um, um, played off with this guy in China rules, he was inside, obviously he's pushing to that. You know. So he's squeezing back in with that. The pack in is a big part. Um, I guess the way that I, I've gone now off of, let me just keep going and coach it, coach it, coach it. You put the guy inside, you, you have the seven cut problem. Mm -hmm. You put the guy inside, you have the seven cut problem. You put the guy inside, and then now you got to deal with the corner post. Right. So the guy's overreacting to a route that he's out leveraged on, and now he's got to whip back on a post. And a lot of times that's, so sometimes you just look at it and go, hey, if we just put the guy outside. Right. I'm not going to deal with the corner post right. as much as I'm just going to deal with a straight post cut. And that's an easier route to work. Right. Like, you know. I agree with that. So, and, and with that being said, though, we still have the, the there have been times where I'd hammer him. I think it's like three games where we put him inside. Yeah. And there's been heavy play action. So the, the thing is, as all this is cool to pack in, there's all merit to that. But hard play action fake. Yeah. Test going to use him up. And yep. so then the hard vertical throw teams will, will be inside. Iowa's yeah. one. That right. Hard so, play action, throw yep. slant behind right. it. So we'll be inside versus those teams. Yeah. But I can only think of three times we did it. The rest of the time we just played out our rules. Okay. Uh, okay. And then you know the you know uh, this is a free hook, which I imagine about about the same as you guys have played it. This is hammer over here. Yep. So two was a flat will play. Yep. The rover is the fourth rusher here. And so this is where it gets to be. You know, I think it's, you know, like I said, is the ball coming out quick? If so, advantage, tight four. Is the ball, you know, is it a quick rhythm throw team? Are they reading one guy? If he's up, they're down. If he's left, they're right, all that. Advantage, tight four, I think. Are they a team that's a progression, like a progression read team? Here, you know, one to two to three, out. Yeah. Type four is not as great. Yeah. Except so the rover on this, it is a three man rush versus run. And so we're a four, uh, this four eye is played like a, this right four eye is played like a left three technique. Um, or like a three technique. So I say, let me see, what's the best way to do that? Uh, yeah, like that. That's what he's doing. Okay. All right, so a three technique to left. That's how he's playing that. Right, so how were you? How were we taught our three? So this would be a base. This would be a reach, right? If we got that, that's a scoop. Scoop, mm -hmm. base, reach. You play like a three. Right? And this was a. Um, we we play this. Um, you could play this uh, react attack, where I see the you know if this is the center, right? If the center reaches here, right? I would react, meaning. I'm gonna, leap, I'm gonna start with my feet. So I'm gonna pick my feet up, reach, gather, strike, right? So if he works this way, reach, gather, strike, okay? That would be react attack. And that's been the base way we played it. Now, at LSU, we're playing it more attack, react, and just go vertical and fall off in the back. Yes. Yeah. Right, so we're gonna be more now vertical this way, but now fighting that hard shoulder. Now the danger with attack, react, is getting a shorter base, right, and getting um, our shoulders turned, you know, because he needs to be occupying too on mm -hmm. suits. Yeah. Okay. But we played it attack, attack.
attack react. We're playing attack react right now, and it's been, you know, uh, Ed's done a great job of that, and I think that was a piece that the guys wanted to look at, and you know, spring's the time to look at that. Okay, mm -hmm. but prior to that, we played it react attack. Yeah. He's playing in one with four eye. Uh, he's playing like a three technical here. So the roller, if he gets dropped back pass, so if he gets pass, he's going to contain into the boundary, and then this four eye has a two way go in the guard. He bec we become like an underfield defense. Right? And then he, he works for the field, and he's contained. Now, uh, this is called a Z rush. This is a two way go. And if he gets slammed down, he'll pop the guard, come on back, get in the A gap rush lane. Right? Here's your contained player. Now, if it's any form of like sprint out, right, or any form of boot, the rover pulls up. So he is your pull up guy. Go ahead. Any, any QB, um, you know, sprint out or boot, the roller pulls it up. And so, what's great about Type 4, one of the advantages of Type 4 is the spacing that you got the, the zero nose and the four eyes. And so, what you want is you want this and that. You want those three guys occupying those five. Or say if you get zone read this way, this rover will be working to an A, this Mac will be working to this nest or this C. The nickel would be a quarterback player, mm -hmm. this would be the bend player. Right? B gap, you know, A gap, B gap. Right? Now, you know, we did this versus Auburn. Um, I don't know, maybe we did too much, you know. Auburn had big guys and stuff, but they were not. They were not a, they were more position block team than anything. That's the reason why we felt comfortable doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes that work right there is big boy work and all that. But we did it versus them. You know, I think that um, to be honest though, this last year we had more success doing it with movement. I mean, as opposed to just lining up and hitting yeah. things. So tell tell me on the V one more time. Yeah. As far as he gets past. And what it's, it's like a cop contain. It's like if you had like a fire zone, it was a B gap rusher. Yep. So when she gets fire zone, he's going to contain on pass. Okay. And so he would be. So he's so he's going to come off B gap attack. Right. Pass then contain the field. Bounce it out. Correct. Okay. And so I'm going to be striking. I'm going to come out of my hips and my legs, strike with my hands. Yep. And then if it's any, it's any form of a drop back pass, if I get that action, yep. right, then I'm going to um, work up the field. If, the, if that, that tackle sets off, I'm going to stick my foot in the ground, and I'm going to work to contain. Okay. I'm going to cough late. Now, the hardest ones are the play passes, are the, the, you know, the run actions where the quarterback's break to contain, and that's where we ask for him to okay. go up. Um, The, let's see. If we were to be in three by one, Over here, this is red hammer, or this is nail, and then we just said gold, and so we're right there over mm -hmm. here. So you, we want to take a quarter track, not to push out there. We we're, we were probably the best we were this year at that. You know, I think the um, I don't know. This would be a philosophy thing, I guess, because I always you always kind of come up with this, and I don't know the the. I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I think if there's a time where maybe it's better the other way, it might be the school I'm at now, it might be LSU. A lot of these things are the same. There's a lot of words on there, you know. And a lot of them, the concepts are very, very similar. And I think that concept's kind of a, a coach talk kind of cop out thing. I, I mean, I don't know. But, you know, I 
start to say to coaches and, and the, the, um, hey, the, the ways you're bracketing this guy, you chop it up. You know, I mean, that's all where I'm always interested in you know, gleaning this stuff and it's kind of, you know, you cut that in half and we're going to do this there, we're going to do that there and all that. And this was all the stuff with Paul too, you know, mm -hmm. Paul Chris. And um, my answer always was, well, we didn't do it. We just put the safety on three. And my answer always was, well, because if we do it, then we got to call it more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then we got to call it more. And I don't want to really call it more. I want to call all that other stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's other calls with, like, other guys rushing when we're doubling that guy. Right. I'd rather call that than that. You know what I mean? And then if we have a defense where we have all these checks in the back end, then we're going to have to rep it more. We're going to have to call it more. Pretty soon, that's what we're going to be doing. Exactly. And I want to be doing all this other shit. And so, you know, I don't know. I now, when I think of that now, I don't know if that's. I think maybe your the type of kid fits that. Because I, I don't know. I look at all this. I don't know if like the LSU kid can do all that. I don't think they can. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I don't think they can. Yeah. That it probably fits them more to. They may not need to. Right. right. That's, what, that, that's, what, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. For them to just do some of this other stuff and then have your change up, not with another rush pattern, but you cut it up in the back end. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it flips. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, we just always play goal, and then the corner was loose man over here. Yep. Okay. And so um, nothing. Not, so the linebackers and linemen in type four, if it was two backs. <laughs> We were thirties, the inside guys. If it was two by two, we were thirties. If it was three by one, like Trey, like this, we were at fifty and a zero. If it was three by one, like Trips, we were at apex and a zero. So, like, say that's a fifty zero. So, this would be B, lag back door A, B, C, A to the ball, right? Anytime we're zero, we play A to ball. So like, say if it was on, um, right, like that. And he would play A if that ball bent, because this guy was always Q, he played A to ball. Okay. That's how we played it. Mm -hmm. And then he's hold, 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 and you can see that. Okay, then if this guy were to be bumped out, then we'd be apex zero. So he'd still stay at zero. The nickel on that, we played him in a screw. So we didn't play red hammer anymore here. We played hammer. Right, so the nickel would be outside oh, of two. Okay. So he was loose man, loose hammer on two. Safety still played gold, but the mat was an apex zero. Okay. So we played that one. That was type four. Now, in terms of like the front, we had uh, lion and ram. So we would lion and ram like four by ones. So let's say if it was like this. I just have to do it this way. I finally just screwed up. It's been a minute since I've gotten the pace up. So I say um, you would slam it this way. Ram, ram, ram. So one, two, three, four. Mac would line at 40, the rover would be over here, and he would line at 20. So the ram only talked to the nose and end of that side. Okay. Uh, another 4x1 could be. advantages and disadvantages to ram. So what people will do is they'll go four by one. If you stay quarters, you stay too high, right? The angles are there for that we call it a down play. Right? The tight end is just gonna block down and then get the back of the ball and it's gonna come right off the tight end's ass. So if you don't make a ram or line call, that Mac who's in a C gap, he's more or less gotta be a seven technique on the run. He's gotta put his face in it. Now he can do that. So I'm saying the tight end's back down. The tight end's here. You know, he's in he's in location. Now he can do that because we're not in screw. 
This is um, you know red hem, mm -hmm. and three on the out is taken up by him. Yes, and three on the up is taken up by right. him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he can do that. So be yeah. aggressive. He's in a spot to do it, but he has to be alerted to that. Yeah. Now, the, the reason why you wouldn't go ram and lion is they run other stuff besides the downplay because once you do that, you're gapped out. So it's it's okay, like right right now like at LSU, if we were to play tight and have tight fits where we're kind of stacking and falling back, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden go ram, that would screw our kids up because the fits are different now because now there's a B-gap player and there's an A-gap player. You see what I mean? Yes. There's not a guy that's kind of stacking the C. There's not a guy that's stacking A to ball anymore because mm -hmm. there's gaps now, and those gaps have got to be filled. Mm -hmm. Right is how we've looked at it now. I don't know, maybe you don't need to play it that way, but that's how we played it when there was gaps. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when we slide into those guys. Especially when one guy was like this, one guy was straight ahead to four right over there, and the other guy slanted. I didn't get that big. Okay, so, um, like here, like they're like power and stuff over here. We ran and lined these guys all day. If they run split zone, that's a different animal now. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Right? And so there's advantages to playing the three guys on where they can attract the five. Yeah. So these guys can do this. Yeah. Once you create gaps, then the problem is you gotta play the gaps. Yeah. You're hoping that's where they run. Right? Yeah. So ram to the right, line to the left. The other thing that we had line movement wise was um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Lou and Ray, right? So Lou and Ray would be let's say it's this. You know one of the best time things about talking to somebody else as you get terms. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we, we sit there sometimes about all these different it's like a whole science trying to figure out a, a, something else to name something. So uh Lou and Ray actually don't call more. Lou and Ray we're calling like Orton right now. Orton's a, a whole other defense, but you can go Lou Ray. You know, Lou Ray would be something we do in spring. You know what I mean? Like we're doing it right now in spring. Because it, it's it's so you're trying to get tight four in, you try to teach it you don't have a whole lot of stuff in it, and it's third and eight, and they want to drop back pass, and you really don't want to just be rushing and tight forward rush, and so we would Lou and Ray. And so Lou and Ray is just bringing their nose, you know what I mean? So nose to the right, and um, there's Ray, nose to the left is Lou, so we go Ray right here, and then we add the rope. And then when the, when the D-line heard Lou or Ray, that meant four eyes were both cop players to their side. And so the advantage here is you're going to get that protection. Or when you get that protection, that's yeah. what you want. Yeah. Now, what we're doing with Lou and Ray is we're making it a reader call. So uh, we ran this versus Hawaii versus um, so we had some other team. So he's rushing, so he's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing that. So then this guy reads the door. Because we're going to talk about wizard in a second. And when we would go wizard, you know, we would rush this guy. And the whole thing was kind of the same. Would be if, they, if they're going to fan him, you want him to do this, you want him to do that. If they, if they, those are the two main things and again that's what you're going to get in the odd mm -hmm. you know you can either keep the slide on which if they slide it and you bring your outside backer it's one on one if they fan it then you get the one on one with your inside backer so that's a big I mean towards the end of the year that was the game we played versus USC so you have, say you have the same coverage, same coverage, same alignments, and you just switch those two guys out, the B and the rover. You bring the B, and then you have the same defense, but now the B drops and the rover rushes. And then how do they block it? Do they fan it, bring the rover? Do they turn it, bring the B? I mean, you just play that game. But that's bargain shopping right there. You know? But if this was a read it, um, if you fan it out, he's in here. 
can we do that? Okay. He reads it. He reads the guard. So the read it and the move rate, I guess, is the same thing now. So if he's here and say they turn it down like that, he's here. So it's like that. So he's he's gonna read the guard. Read the guard. Now you you can do it without sliding the nose. I mean, you can do it with the nose. Just go straight ahead. I guess too. You just built it in. So you tell the end, tell the end then you get blocked down on. Correct. Hold it. Correct. Yeah, he's working through the tip of the pad of the, of the tackle. So if he gets a fan. He's going he's going to cop. Yeah. Right. If he gets um, the tackle blocked down, yeah. he's going to dip. Uh, dip rip in a BF. Yeah. Lou Ray is that rover trying to hit it as soon as? Yes. Whereas the read it is a little bit slower. Yeah, he's he still hitting it, but he's reading it on the run. He's reading it on the reading run. Reading on the run. Okay. Yeah. Would it, I mean, do your guys ever just convert the two, convert one into the other? Right now they are. They're they the are. same. Okay. Yeah, they're the okay. same right now. Yeah. Which I'm saying, you, that's just how we're doing it. You yeah. don't need, there's not a reason. The read it could be the nose just pushing straight ahead. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yep. And that, that other backer's just reading that guard, what he's doing. He steps out of state and he steps down. Now I loop. The B. The, um, the, the rover. The rover coming Yes, up. yeah, yeah. So, so he's, he's just reading the guard. Correct. Yeah, so the read it is, as he's working, he's going to be blitzing the guard. The guard fans. He's in. He's yep. in the end. Guard steps down. Yeah, if the guard steps down. He sticks his foot around now. This is going to be reduced down. Right, right, right. Anyway, yep. so yeah. he's not going to be really going to see. He's going to be going mm -hmm. right about over the B area. Yep. He's okay. yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is, we've added, we've built that in the blue and red, which I'm saying you really don't need to. Right? You could just, you could call that. Yep. You play the nose. Yeah. Just do it that way. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So Lou Ray, uh, Lion Ram, those would be adjustments. Now, if we got Bunch in Type 4, Bunch went to uh, a max drop. That was camp rule. It didn't have to be. And if, if the team was throwing vertical, then we would think twice about it. But not a lot of teams do. And so we would uh, max drop there. Right, so if we have a bunch here, we use the term box, but box didn't mean the same as whatever is what it probably means with other things. So if we'd be this way, the F would be inside leverage of this guy. So he'd be he'd still treat that as a two and not as a one, but he would widen to the inside of, of number one. He'd be a corner, this would be a zero, this would be a fifty, right? And the safety here, and the safety here. And so box would be you know, he's working here with one, he's working the two, he's working the three, he's working the two. Okay, and then this this safety over here, um, we said it's slant help to this side. So he would look for anything coming inside first by by the X. If he had a quick end by the X, he'd look for it, otherwise he'd go to his own quarter. And these guys still play the quarters. Now the difference was when we didn't have a, an eight man drop, the safety to the quarter side, he's thinking you know, he's the aggressor and the corner is the protector and that. And it's not that way. The, those that corner and safety are almost playing. I didn't talk about so there's red hammer, there's nail, there's hammer, then there's switch look. Which if one and two are close, yeah. It's like true yeah. zone. Yeah. That's basically what they're playing. They're playing a switch look. Okay. So it's true zone, so there's not a Aggressor protector. There's not even because you know we've got a linebacker in that space. Yeah. So I can say if it was um, um, yep. You can see the fits there, right? And then if it was um, what would another one be? Um, out there, right? Same thing. Yeah, you should have the mm -hmm. all those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not worried about getting out leverage quick to the flat because that's what the F mm -hmm. has got. Yeah, and then you know just the. Would you key the F on out there? 
uh, on on this? Yes. Yeah, he keyed through number one. That was his original key. So I mean, if he was seeing something like that, he wanted to hit that. Okay. And so he would see one here, and then his eyes went inside. So a lot of times it was that is what he what he saw. Okay. Um, if if. Uh, Yeah, because generally, right, if you played a box, the weakness of that box was always that that area, right? You felt good about these areas. You know? And so just having that guy in that two that two area was good. You know, the other yeah. thing that we get a fair amount of is um, the meshes and stuff out of it. So, you know, this guy would cut down. He yeah. would give you something like this, and he gave you something like that. And then let's say it was something this, something like that, right? Whatever it was, and say, all this shit. Like that's what Scott said right there. Yes, mm -hmm. so box was great for Scott. So on that corner zone off, now with the backer. Yeah, that's the other thing, yeah. Over up to this side over here, with the if, if this split, this would be more of a nasty split. Yep. And so he said two. So it's always one of those things is do you want to go there? And versus Wisconsin, we had to. In the spring, we had to do it. Yeah. You know, so both our quarters and our three, we call it tube alert. And so what that meant was if the corner, if the, say if number one, the X had to be, because it is one of those things where you talk it out, it's like, what the fuck, can we do this? And we're doing it now. We actually, I could actually show you tape of us doing it at LSU, which, to be honest, I was nervous about it. I didn't think we could do it. We're doing it. You know, the communication is good. So the X is a nasty split. The back doesn't have to be offset. Right. Yeah, the back can be near. If the back is far, it alerts the bead. Right? Okay. The bead's in play now. The back is near, right? The corner is just really alerting the, the Mac, the guy dropping on three, be alert for the X coming over the cross. Okay. Yep. Two, if the back is far, you know, we're saying if the X is under, immediately turns his pads, comes under, and the back gets out, we're treating the back now as number one. Yep. And, um, Right, the receiver is number two, and so they're passing that off now. You know, so the, so, I'm saying, so we're saying that though. Once you do that, then then you're like down the rabbit hole. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now, because now you're saying um, that is not. Yeah. Right. And then you're saying even scarier. That is not. Right. Yeah. And so you're saying you're passing that off. Nope. Nope. Yeah. So that's that's what we're playing. But as a base, then if it, if it doesn't cut down, then correct. Your B is taking the back correct. on those correct. all those routes. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, and so the two below would be in the word for him, and then this would be in 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 in. So that would alert him to fall off on this. Sure. So it's two alert. He comes in 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 in, and he falls off. Uh, we didn't used to do that before. Uh, this last year at Wisconsin was the first year we did it. When we didn't do it before, the B played and B ran with this. And the corner didn't have no work, so he just zoned up. Yeah. And it took two years of saying, that is fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said, That's fucked up. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So, finally changed it. Uh, okay. But anyways. That's box. And then, you know, if you don't, if you do not, if you don't rush just three guys and you're rushing four, right? And then you're back to your aggressive, right? Once he gets in that vertical, he's in here and your corner's protected. This, this is more like birds, more than anything. When, when um, you don't get a vertical there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you, that safety's going to happen. So, like, say, for example, like, uh, what route am I trying to think of? Like the, um, uh, say something like that. Yep. You know what I mean? You're, you're getting out of guys now, right? Yeah. So, you know, the Mac is here, yeah, the effort's here. We played the safety there in the corner protected. Yeah. That was a like, that was a four man last year. Right? Yeah. Okay. It, it makes a lot of sense, though, so sometimes to play some of that three just because. Right. You're not getting sophisticated drop back. You're Correct. getting a bunch of routes, and Correct. you get two or three things. And yeah, yeah, three, the, yeah. Three. There's a lot of merit to three. Yeah, two. 
Okay. Uh, so that's tight. Oh, did I not hit? Did I hit? Um, oh, spy. This is, uh, we played three man rush and spy for the empty. Okay, so over here, this was a switch alert. And so um, we play switch alert even to the two receiver side in, in this is type four. And we said check spy. So the switch alert. I didn't talk about that before. Switch row, I imagine, is similar. Maybe it's similar to what you guys do. The one or two are tied together. I say switch row, and that means you know they could switch right now. They could go up field, switch late. You know, no matter when they switch, they're switching them off. And the outside backer to that side no longer is a nail hook player. He's now a curl flat player. Is the way we play. Yeah. So you don't bang the curl, you expand the flat. If it's any form of a sprint out to a switch row, he's buzzing in the flat. Okay. And so like you know. Like say say you get something like this when one sits down and two runs a seven, that's where you need that curl flat player because yeah, we don't want our corner jumping that and the safety being undressed. Right? Yeah. So the corner kind of holds, right? The safety the safety pushes over the top, well it makes all that work out. Everyone gets along because the curl flat player gets under. Yeah. And so that is switch to that side. And the you know, over here. This way, right? And I'll talk about a game real quick. And then we had nickel, and so this would be a screw over here. This is an apex over here, and a row over here. And to this side, we played this, we called this stress. The term at LSU now is top, but that's another way of saying two over three. Now, the math, yeah. we did run the math though with this, even though we played stress. And, um, I think it's because we have the ability to drop eight, you know what I mean? So the rover over here, he was a vision player, but he would start shuffling to the trips. If the quarterback looked that way, he'd continue to push. If the quarterback was looking this way on his shuffle, he'd stick his foot in the ground and come back. And he's gonna start his push here to trips. If the Mac is seeing three, if he got three verts, meaning he got three with nothing coming underneath, he would be uh, play he'd play like a man under. Because we wanted that safety. We don't the thing is, like all this is cool, like the stress and everything. Yeah. The problem with us is that's the only time we play stress. So that always scares the fuck out of me. Because you don't do it enough. We don't do it all of a sudden. That's why the Mac runs with them, to be honest. Because yeah. we could say, hey, you're splitting those guys, and the Mac mm -hmm. is thinking, hey, man, it's cool. And the safety's going, what the fuck? fuck? You know what I mean? So the Mac runs with him. I know, and then, and then the thing is, you spend an inordinate amount of time working on right. something that you right. play. So we have eight times the, a season. The advantage is that they're dropping, but I mean that could be depending on. A lot of times the ball's coming out, which you hold. I think if empty, I look at you know max rush. The creepers are really good versus this. So all these other creepers play tight four goes to spy. But anyways, if two were to come under, then the mac comes off, right? Because then the safety's going to screen on top. But if it if it's right, you know, if two was under three, uh, yeah. he'll come off of it. But if he's not feeling anything, he's going to run with it because the safety over here, he's really playing a third, right? He's playing a third to that side. And this is screw, two of those flags in play. That's why. Um, and we still, you know, we still are gapped out in terms of what you're, what you're asking these guys to do. Okay. Yep. Um, so that's type four. Now, type four has been um, the base. So, like, if we want, if, like, a team was, like, a, like LSU, you know, run a play and then hustle up and run another play. They call that hurry, hurry, hurry. So that's tight four. Okay. You know what I mean? And so, um, like if we're, we just, we just got, we just got done with play. So guys are starting to get up off the ground and all that, and the team is running on the ball. Yep. So it's not like it's a pace team. It's a, they're a tempo team. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to dick you this particular time. <coughs> then the guys would say, hurry, 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 and. Uh, on the sideline, we go like this, hurry, 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 and that means type four. And then we get lined up and we play. Type four is the base, really. Uh, wizard. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. We're going to pause the uh, record for just a second here. Second here. Wizard has been. Um, we know Wizard from. 
New England Patriots, the Houston Texans right now, around the Wizard. I didn't bring all those. I have cuts of the last two years of the Patriots and the Texans running the Wizard, which when I get back, I can share it to you real easy. I've already made the cuts. Um, but, you know, the, the Wizards, stand, we get a line field boundary. Wizard stands for weak. So, what we're saying is, um, if it's two by one or three by one, the weak side, outside backer rushes. If it's two by two, right, the inside backer rushes. We ran this quite a bit in our game here. And so, what it, what it amounted to was if it was 11 personnel, 10 personnel, and we wanted to play quarters in passing situations, second and long, second and medium, third down, even. Mm -hmm. This is what we play. Okay. You know? And the thing that is good in that scenario, that's how we do it now here, too. That's all part of, you know, I see these things, I see the patterns, I'm like, and how are they tying the coverage, yeah. and how are they mm -hmm. tying that rusher in doing that? And that's... Yeah. Uh, would it still be the weak inside backer there? No. Two by two? No, yeah. Now, this could be... This could, this is, the, the true answer is, is game plan. The, okay. The camp rule, yeah, that's fine. The camp rule is to a tight end, and if no tight end, to the running back. Okay. So that's what we're starting with. We're yep. running this now, and again, this is kind of second, second down. You know, the, the weakness with Wizard is quarters of quarters. The coverage stays the same, but the front adjusts. Mm -hmm. So that's the weakness. Okay. You know, if there's motion, right? Outside backer could be rushing, now it's an inside backer. Right. Right? And then, so if you face a team like a Minnesota or Wisconsin and they're doing this and that, that's not ideal. And that's where, like, a tight four is great. Yeah. You got edges and everything else. Right. What's Dude. the communication like? Like, say say the motion did come. What's, what's Just give me an example of what yeah. your communication would be the, to, to let them know we're outside and inside. Is the outside guys. And okay. Deuce left, deuce right's the inside guys. So if we were to get lined up, so this would be the B, the E, the F, the N, and then, um, you know, the Mac and the Rover, like that. Okay. And then let's go same thing over the field this way again. Okay, so this is still, this is still a hammer. That's red hammer. And then over here to this side, and I said, you know, it's two by two, the tight end attached, so we're going to say, do slide. Right? right, so he's going to be pushing up and then working to the right. Right. He needs to push up. Now, the push up and work to the right is important on pass, because they're not going to want to do that, and that's part of the, what they're going to want to do is, bro, it's pass, let me work a one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And once they do that, that's when the note, the center comes off. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say, it's kind of like, you love all your kids and stuff, and you can't say, like, Susie, I love you more than I like Billy, you know what I mean? But it's like, <clears throat> he has to, for it to get, for us to get what we want, he's got to push up and work out, mm -hmm. right? Because we're going to say, if they're going to slide, let's say he releases, right? And let's say, you know, it's it's slide pro, so they, this is what they want, they got that. He's going to, he's going to uh, slide out. Okay, and then when he rushes, he is like a three technique. That's what he is. Right. And so if for any reason you get to slide to him, then he has a two way go. Oh, so okay. B to A. If it's a run, he's a B gap player. So he's a three technique. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. um, the S on two, max on three, nickels on two. And so, you know, say the tight end's not there. And Let's say you get big on big, let's say. Right, so he's here. This is the one where you don't know what's saying. Right, and he's out. And now he's rushing against B gap. And now he's got two way up. On the guard. Right? Um, so that's deuce left. And over here, this is Lee. And then if it were to be the other way, let's say it was this. Field there. And then this would be Roy. And so this would be the nickel Russian Roy. And quarter there. Right? And so um, Lee, you could do it. And Lee and Roy, you could do it two ways. You could do it where the, the 
linebacker rushes and the four eye has a two way go. I mean, you could do it in a read a call. Yeah. Right. And so with mm -hmm. this where he rushes and then, you know, he has your two way. And it, they all work. Because there's still four eyes. So mm -hmm. it's the run, it's still tight four fits. Mm -hmm. If there's any run coming to him, he leverages it. Because you want the run to be the same as tight four. I didn't really get that the run fits, I guess, really, but the tight four, they, they leverage everything you have to use. They don't spill it, they leverage it. And then, you know, in tight four, they got two to the flat, or three to the flat, or someone to the flat. So yep. they leverage all those guys. So here, to keep it the same, they leverage you know, them. And so, you know, to, it's all this is the same, right? Red hammer, gold. Now, the only difference here is that this guy can't be, normally his alignment was a zero, and mm -hmm. we would, He's got to be able to leverage the back. Right, he's got to leverage the back. And that's why I like it in passing situations. You know what I mean? Because you get less motions mm -hmm. and you get less of those conflicts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you play tight four, the linebackers, it's like heaven, bro, because those five guys are occupied with those three. Yeah. And you just sit in there and fill, rock back, do what you need to do. And Wizard, you're getting a better rush, but now you're more of a four man front. You know what I mean? And now you get four man front conflicts. You know? And so, I like it, like I say, second, six, you know, say a team on first and ten, three yards or less, the one, that was like the, the guy that was in Illinois, that was his one deal would be, at the end of the day, he wanted to throw it. You know what I mean? Yes. So, That's a little question. Right. <laughs> so that would be, like, that was his weakness, you know? Yes. And so, that's where, like, this stuff came in big. Like, we ran Wizard a ton in that. Yeah. Which is him. Um, and then. So it would be. The wizard, like the call, you could run it out of your nickel package, you could run it out of your base Correct. people. Correct. Yeah. It's just the same concept. Correct. Yeah. And we treated everything else the same. So if it was bunch, we played um, box, which is three man rush, and it's empty, you played spy. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but we just kept it but just kept it up, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's wizard. And so you know, the motion would be like, say if we had something like this, this would be a Roy. So let's say he motioned across, he'd go Roy uh, to the, right? Oh, okay. Yep. 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 Two. So when it changes, yeah. Yep. yeah. That'd be on the same page. And there was a time, too, where we said, you know what, let's just play it. You know, let's just, let's just, you know, that's going to be Red Hammer over there anyways. Let's just play it, bump them out. And our kids... And you know, maybe this is Wisconsin slash Minnesota kids. They were calling it out anyways. Right. Yep. Right. Maybe the LSU would just play it. You know. Mm -hmm. But they were calling it out. So we would we called it. We would uh, go from Roy to Lee, or you could go from what's another one? Right. There's a deuce left. Motions across. Deuce left. <laughs> Second down, third down, you don't get a ton of those. You can rush, play your quarters, and it was a good call for it. So this was always a supplemental call. This was never a lead call, it was a supplemental one, right? And it was always good. All right, so, so, we're, so we're just playing just tight four, and you got that that same motion there, that uh, two Every, by two to three by everyone one. Everyone would just bump. Everybody would bump, you yeah. wouldn't run the nickel. Okay. Nickel always played in the field, which is the reason why these next couple of ones, and I'll say Boomer right here, forgot about Boomer. So I will say this though. So when you play out of base, the end is just this, an outside backer that foot. When you do it with the. Uh, like if you did it with four linebacker people. Yeah, yeah. So then this was your F, uh -huh. this was your B, and then that was your N nose N. N nose N. So it's just then you then you're in your same stuff, wizard, you guys run the same correct all the same stuff. And I will say this, I think the a couple big differences from last year to this year. One was the ability to um, to play peso more and odd. And it was these calls. Not so much tight yeah. with that on passing situations. Those those things in running situations. Yeah, run that against the Maryland uh -huh. quite a bit. 
it may. Because I didn't know if you had an injury or something, but all of a sudden, yeah, I mean, but yeah. your beagle was in right. side quite a bit right. in those. Yeah, Wizard, Tulsi, and Orton, and Boom. Because to be honest, versus spread teams in this pack in this package, we would play type four. Spread run, I'm talking. We used to play type four. We play man. We would play Favre and Bledsoe, and then we'd probably play Spike. And those were the lead calls. And, uh, and all that's great. The only problem with that is that only one of those was an odd look. All the rest were four down looks. Mm -hmm. Type four. Type four, man, Favre, Bledsoe, and Spike. Those would be, if you play any team that's a spread run team, those would be automatics. And the players already knew mm -hmm. you know, when we would get together on Tuesday you know, or whatever day, they would already knew. But having the ability to run wizard and passing situations as a supplemental call is inexpensive, you know? Yeah. And um, because the not a lot of motions, that down distance, all You're that. not dealing, nothing happens with the front people. Correct. But, and then running Tulsi, Orton, and Boomer on mixed downs. And so we were kind of cutting into the time that we'd be in man, cutting into the time they were running far and Bledsoe all the time with Tolsey and Orton and Boomer. And that allowed us to be more multiple, and I think it gave us it gave us more options. You know what I mean? People weren't just sitting on, for as much as we did stuff, or I like to think we did, we did a whole bunch of, two years ago, four-man fronts. And we did more three-man fronts this past year. And it, it was effective. <coughs> right, so that's Wizard. So Wizard and Type 4 are two ways we can play quarters. Now, yep. there's a lot of people that are in odd front and they just run that that B and rush him all the time. You know what I mean? And so they'll rush him two by two, they'll rush him all the time. And they make they make strength calls. You know what I mean? So they'll go, you know, strong right, strong left, and they're always gonna rush the B. That's it, you know, and never really done that. It's always been more of a more of a, a group of calls than just kind of sitting in one call. In a wizard, you two by two, you're deuce right or left. Right. And then if they motioned into three by one, it would go to a Lee or a Roy right. off of the mm -hmm. rules. That's right. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Tolzien, Orton, and Boom. So Tolzien's the, the guy that played at Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Orton, who's Orton? He's a quarterback named Orton. Purdue, Kyle Orton. Yeah, yeah Kyle so, Orton. Yeah. Purdue played with the Bears for a while. Boomer was Boomer and Sison. So Tolzien was tight end. Orton was open side. And then Boomer was boundary. Okay? And then all of these were, if it's two by two, we're playing quarters. If it's anything else, we're fine three deep. Now I think in, he cheated that some certain weeks, maybe one week. Anything else. Yeah. Period. Right. I think we cheated that some versus two backs a week or two. We played quarters versus two backs. But it wasn't it was a those would be versus teams that their their two backs were like split backs mm -hmm. and it played out like two by two. So it just made sense to do that. It was like why would we do the other thing? It was the same route, same error. That happened twice, I can't remember who. But the general rule was that. Yeah. So if it was empty, three deep. And we played it. So these things played. Told Ian Orton Gore. And so these played versus bunch, these played versus empty. Strong right, strong left call. So the B and we always go to the field. The E is always to the boundary. The other E is always in the middle. Nickel's always to the field. F's always to the boundary. So we're declaring where the strength is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this is strong left. So we're 
getting aligned, I guess. We feel boundary, but we are on us. Declare, I think that's how you spell it. Declare the strength. Okay, so that's strong life. This is where you're strong life. There wasn't a tight end of strength to be the running back. So no tight end would declare strength to where the running back was. So all this is, all tools in is we're running deuce now all the time. That's all it is. And so he's going to move out. He's going to be straight ahead, straight ahead. And he hits the, uh, so that's, this is going to look like, you, like Wizards right here. It's mm -hmm. not going to be any different. Two, three. That's Wizard. The difference is, like say it's here. Let's do this one. You know that one, that down play we talked about? Yeah. Told Zane would be the call. You want to call again. Call again, please. <coughs> so we're going to go here. Dukes again. We, we didn't call for that. We called it full team. And he's here. He's here. He's, here. he's going A. He was zero playing A ball. And then Nickel over here, he's playing a strong hook. This is a weak hook. So close by. So Tolzin was a good beater versus a uh, spread run. And then. Uh, you know, it was a if a team was a detach if a team was a attached eleven team and they'd run to the tight end, then Tulsin was the we got a lot out of Tulsin. So the backer becomes the three technique, Correct. all those same reads. Right. The B is slanting out. Yeah, so he's gonna slant to the rib cage of the next guy. So if it's a tight end over there, he's gonna slant to the tight end. So he goes from like a four eye to a seven. Time blocks out, you know, stick his foot in the ground and get his eyes back in. Okay, and then the you're just playing the, your zero, zero on the nose, just Correct. straight up. Correct. Yeah. The more you move those guys, the more I like, see that angle right there in the down play. Yeah. That guard come right on that rover. Correct. Them now. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I'll say this: the other way you could play this, if you wanted to. I like doing that because I do think we've got a couple guys that can that can be hard on centers. Yeah, the other uh, way I think we got a couple guys that can do that. The other way you could do it, and this is how I like. Um, yeah. You know, it would be good to talk to you if you guys haven't talked to you already. These guys were going to come down. They were all set to come down at the vehicle. They were all because of a storm or something, and they said they couldn't come under the storm. So I don't know. I hope they come down. It's all the the BYU guys, they're over in Virginia now. They'd be okay. great to talk to you, like Bronco and them. Be interested in some of this stuff, because they do a lot of it. They have a different spin on it. They play more quarter, quarter, half, and all that. Yeah. They, they're not as, we like OD on creepers, you know what I mean, I think. And so they're, they do a fair amount, but not as much. And so they play more traditional, like five man rush, fire zones, and all that. Uh -huh. But yeah, he, so he's, I mean, they're really good. But the way they run, like they're toes in is they slam both guys and they read it with the map which you merit to do it. So they go like that. And they, so that it was that lion ramp, right? Mm -hmm. And then the map, he'll hit the B, but now <coughs> the thing's gonna have to be um, like if it's passed, if it's drop back pass, right? And they if the slide goes away, all good. If the slide comes to the wrap is coming back around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how they play it. So it's merit to doing that, like you know, whether it's right here, right? You merit to do it right here. You know, so mm -hmm. that's another way to do it, right? Now, um, their way and our way, if, if the guard pulls, we have to read out. We got to read out if the guard pulls. So if the guard pulls away, we read out. Okay. Um, but what, um, yeah, so I guess, I guess Tolzien's a good one, though. Right, because if yeah. the tight end's attached, 
in 11 personnel and they run the O play to the tight end, the one back power, right. or they run the down play of the tight end, which that's about, what, 50% of 11 personnel run when the tight end is attached. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else do they do? They run zone, right? All of it is good that they're doing that, right? Um, and then if the tight end's detached, now what you're doing is you're blitzing the back. So that's where it becomes is that the best thing, yeah. right? Is, are, is the back, is it more of a veer re? Right. Then told him, great. Is it more of a zeer, or I'm sorry, is it a zeer re going straight downhill? Yeah. Told him, great. Is it more of a zone re and the back's going across? And it's okay. Yeah. You know I mean, it's still, it's, it's still good. You, you have to get, I might, I might think twice about where, what are the back's rules and all that. You guys considering this attached tight end? Detached. He's detached, mm -hmm. so now you go. If it's well, if it's pistol, that's a good picture. If it's we would go. This to, is what we're seeing all yeah, the spring. Yeah. Then we would go to the back, go to the tight end. Then you'd if it's go pistol, to the tight end. yeah. Now if the back was offset. Right now you'd go to the back. Go to the back. Go to the back. Yep. So if it's there, so we're the second. Same thing as if we got, we got that. That's the tight end. You still go to the tight end side. Pistol, Correct. There's nothing Correct. else in the box. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. What the if the tight end was detached here and the back was offset here, we call that a diagonal. Mm -hmm. And so we're saying all the majority of those plays are coming back to the back. Right. You know, the away yep. zone, you know, the yep. horn play, yep. whatever else. If the back and tight are on the same side, right, the majority of it, you know, you can, you can get counter, yep. right, and that, but the majority of the down play, mm -hmm. you know, on side, the same side power or right. play. And so, um, you know, What's great about this too is that it's immediate and it's downhill, it's more straight line. Because all of these are good, especially if you haven't done them before, they're all good. And the movement's good, but it's good to have stuff that's that way too. I mean, yeah. Because some of this stuff is this way, and there's a lot of merit to it. And we've, we've done good things off of that. And to go like that is positive. So that's Tolzien. Yeah. Um, now, okay, well, here, let's say, so, yeah, so this guy would be A to ball. So, like, if that Mac could cut the playoff, then he would play A to ball. I mean, if the Mac cut it off, then I'm not going to this A anymore. I'm going where the ball is, yeah. right? And so, let's say it was something like this. Say it was, um, well, let's go to down play here. So, let's say they're going to go this way to this way. So, they're going to block down, right, and then forward, and then come across like this, right? And so, we're going to try to get him through. Now, if we can't get him through, he's going to take a block. So now there's no one coming up to this guy, right? Yeah. So the F comes, he leverages it. Yeah. He right? should have a free guy. Yeah. Right. So all the tight end runs. Really good. Yeah. And then if they don't go to the tight end, we're all gapped out, right? So like, say they run the zone this way. And so it's here, here, here. Remember, we're using him now. He's lagging. So he's in this A, he's in this B, he's in this C. Is that is that what you really want the nose to do is to play backdoor? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Now I think the, um, that's a good question though too. That's a good point because I think if you you know well here I'll say this I'll show you what happened. This is LSU. This was so the very first day we're out there. Um, they're they're running their, uh, their deal like this. Zones, all their zones go here, and it's like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we get the majority of the time. And that was right up until about the scrimmage. And you know, we're trying, we're getting stuff in, and all of a sudden, the scrimmage, you get this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the way that it works. Yep. And now we get this, we get this, uh, right this right here. This guy is now going right here. So we went from that to that. Yeah. Now, that was because we all we had was tight for him. That's all we're running. Was, you know, there's all those calls, but we were like at the early stages of the first one. You know. And so I mean that makes sense. I, and, and I think that's kind of a character character of if you just play that tight front and don't do anything off of it. That's what you'll end up getting. 
Now, you know, in in the most uh, politically, in the most, um, you know, I, I don't know the political right way to say it. But you would like to not see that on like the third day of putting in a new defense, right? That yeah. right there. Yeah. You'd maybe like to see that at the end of some other thing, but that's part of it. And so <clears throat> we never saw that throughout throughout um, the, the four years, five years, whatever it, whatever it's been because of all the movement. Yeah. I mean, you do movement versus that. <laughs> they, can, they can't block no. that. Now that you sit in it, you do it. Now, yeah. so that... That brings me back to the nose and how the nose plays, right? Because, like, say, if it's a defense where you're going to play the tight front or you're going to play whatever that front's called, and maybe you bring the, the bench outside backer, and maybe you've got this check, that check, and you're kind of cutting two by two and a half, and you're cutting three by one and a half, and you're doing all that, and you're always lagging, that's what you'll get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and there's merit at that point now. We call it lead, where the nose leads on this reach. Okay. So he beats the reach. There's merit now to lag and lead. You know what I mean? To do both. Yeah. But if it's a, to me, and this is my opinion, I guess, if if type four is kind of a starting point, and it is home base, but, you know, we want to do this, we want to play three, we want to play two, and all those are different movements and patterns and we're going to count on that for the movement, for the nose, and not have to teach the lead. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Right? But yeah, that's what, if you sit there, that's what you'll get. Okay, so that's, that's Tolzien. And Orton is going to be the open side. The, the Jets, the Rex Ryan system, Mike Petty, and the guy that was just at the Browns. Mm -hmm. um, their terms for Tolzien and Orton are B and Wasp. B to the strong side B gap, Wasp to the weak side A gap. And then they, pl they play steam coverage, which is not this coverage. They play 3D ball all across. So they play like zone steam cut. So B and Wasp. Sting, which Sting is zone to set, right? So if it was two by two, there'd be an F here and a safety here. It would look like that. And then if this came over and was three by one, then it'd be buzz. You know what I mean? Yep. So that was Sting. So that's how they run these. For we run one and a quarter is two by two. So if it was, so then if it was Orton. this uh, alignment wise should all look the same. Okay, so this is red hammer. This is hammer right here. <coughs> and this is strong back right here. Now we're going to bring the rover out. He should be a 20. And he wants to hit the A gap. Now he's, his read is the tip of the pad of the center. That's his A. So he plays off of him. And then this would be 4i. This nose is going to slant. These guys are working like a lion. They're going to slant to the strong left call. So okay. it goes Wharton, the D line to the strong left slant. The D, the D end away goes vertical. And Wharton's going to, the rover's going to hit that A gap. And the max playing B. And then he's on two, he's on three, he's on two. And so you like Wharton again versus no way to play the tight end run game. Yeah. Right? Tight end side run game is good. Uh, Northwestern and their pullers, you know, Northwestern with pin and pull, I like it versus that because of the movement. Um, then you like it versus pass for the A-gap run through, you know. 
Yeah. And so, like, um, you know, there's, uh, there's advantages to working. Um, if you know, it was three by one, especially, right? So this would be short, right? So is this? Slide out. Gap. Just go flat. He was a uh, weak hook. He was strong hook. He was cool flat. Now, the reason, now, you know, the thing is, this was a gong. Yep. You could say, you could say, uh, hey, the nickel be outside of two, and the safety come inside of three and play buzz. The only reason why we didn't want to do that is we wanted to look at quarters. Yeah, I, I like try to hold. I like yeah. the way you did that. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. when that I, when was I the only, that on, yeah. on video. That was the only reason why. I mean, you could put the nickel outside on two, which is what probably, a lot of teams. Right, it's probably a better matchup. That's what the Vikings do a lot. Mm -hmm. of, but then play. it just doesn't look mm -hmm. same. Yeah, <coughs> it does. It's not gonna look the same. Um, so. You know, where Orton comes in, I think Orton is important to have. So what Boomer is, Boomer is all of this. Boomer is basically Orton, but now all you're doing is you bring in the boundary outside backer. You bring in the F, so he's rushing. So like say in this picture, Boomer, he's rushing. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's like a read it again and all that. You know, then there's some crossover. The difference is we're playing three over here. Right, so you're rushing him and then he's playing curl flat. Right? And so the thing is, you would carry, every time we carry Orton, we carry Boomer, right? Because it was sim similar. And then when he rushed, um, you know, how are they blocking it? So if they're blocking it in their fan this way, big on big, then you want to do that as much as you could. If they weren't, if they, uh, well, I said, you know, Hawaii is not a really good example because they were so shitty, but, you know, you play Hawaii and, and prior to that game, we had so much inside linebacker pressure that they, everything for them was uh, turn and slide. But, you know, they, they slid all this, and he was off the edge, so then that's what you want, right? You want to switch this guy. Whoa, whoa, oh, I'm sorry. Boomer, you're going to bring the... Uh, boundary, outside outside boundary outside. Boundary outside. Boundary outside. Yeah. Okay. And so Boomer and Orton. So Boomer for boundary. Boomer and Orton play off each other. Yeah. Now you don't slant. You always draw Boomer. But anyways, that's Orton. Okay. Now uh, with Orton, we said that we wanted the the, the rover when he rushed. He had a freeze rush on the back, so he had a two way go. Um, Wanted to do something about about that. Um, you know, here I'll send this to us. I may forget. I don't think I sent it either. So I could send it. We started doing this at LSU. This drill. So. Skill rush. And so we go down that way, and then we get new guys to come back down this way. So the corner would rush, maybe a, a, um, a cadence, and you know, like a um, center would snap the ball. These all be O linemen, that's a pop up. And the corner would rush it back one on one, and then the safety would rush the tight end one on one, outside backer would rush a tackle. Inside linebacker, rush a guard. Inside linebacker, rush a center. Inside backer, rush a guard. Right, rush a tackle. Rush a tight end. Rush a back. Right, back to the back. And then get you guys and go again. Put them down the line. So we give all your, um, you know, there's linebackers rushing all these, linebackers rushing here, DBs rushing here. Right, DB's rushing here, there's all those guys an opportunity to work on the rush, you know, so it's five minutes. And so here and then back, which is five. And so it gave guys a shot, you know, to work on pass rush. And 
so it was um, it'd be liable to have an individual wear that. But I thought it was a, it was a good uh, it's a good opportunity for those guys to get work. And a lot of times you don't do that. You, you know, you work on pass rush and then, or you, and then you end up saying, hey, what what can that guy beat him in a one on one? You don't work it enough, right? Um, okay, Goomer. And this is going to be the two by two. This is going to be the and so when we ran Boomer, it had to be. Um, let's see. Okay, so when we ran Boomer, see the F still rush. Okay, and so this side now, so this was Red Hammer, this was Red Hammer. We were rushing him, we didn't take him off. It was the only time in two by two that the outside back was still rushed. And yep. then this was a nail hook drop. This was three, this was a nail hook drop here. And then you had EG line in here. And then this could be a read it, or it could be a two way go by him. Right? It could be one of those. But this was red hand to the side, to the tight inside, which was not a normal rule for us. That's how we played it. Okay, you're, you're kind of into your 4-3 stuff now, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're in the 4-3 world now. Yep. Yep. Right. And then over here, right, it fits just like anything else. So now you're you're gone, right? You're lean post, strong hook, you curl, curl flat. You're probably better there. So you still did the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the only difference was two by two into the boundary, we played red hammer instead of playing uh, hammer versus a pro set. Yeah. If there was two receivers out there, it was definitely, it was red hammer anyways. And the outside backer would show cover down, apex, and hit it. And the inside backer would work out late. They, they wanted to be on a string. And the outside backer creeped up, so then the inside backer worked out. Calls and we ran we ran this a fair amount versus Northwestern and I forget who else we ran it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But Tolzien, Orton, Boomer were all solid calls for us. Uh, mm -hmm. The last one is field slant. And so notice though with all those calls, right? With everything we've got, we have Type 4, we have Wizard, we have Tolson, we have Orton, we have Boomer. And all of those in the odd front, there's nothing coming from the field. You know what I mean? There's nothing coming from the field. The field edge, I guess. Yeah. There's inside guys, there's boundary guys. There's nothing coming from the field. And that's really the main reason for field slide. Because it, it gives you that ability. Because what, um, you know, Cause here's what like we played. It was the it was the it was versus Iowa. And it was early in the game. Iowa lined up like how they do like that at every third down. And so they lined up like that. And then you know we look like this. Uh, and so they all pointed to this guy. And they did this, which that's smart to do. Right? Yeah. Versus everything we just talked about, that would be the thing to do. Right, mm -hmm. right there. Right. Yeah. That's where field side comes in. And so that's where you want to be able to bring somebody off this edge. Right? And just as a, and just in a three man rush, right? And so like we would go like this. And this this would be a trade call. And you drop out. So field side is bringing um, it's really the nickel from the field, but if it was three removed, this picture I've got would be a trade. Mm -hmm. But it's for that reason right here, because all these other, all this other stuff is good, but 
that the whole hit chart for that is in here. Right? All this stuff right there. We need something out here. <coughs> and so it's a good mixture because I mean three deep we play, right? It's really the same coverage as far. And a lot of times you want to run far because you have it. Yeah, the outside back to come in with a, a nickel behind them, but um, you know, you um, I think it's important to try to keep the field slant going. this way, so this nickel is going to rush now. We say he's a CBR player, and so that means tackles down, he's down, right? So he's not a um, bullet player, if you're saying this, if the bash is offset to him, he'd be going to the Q, you know? So he's a, um, um, a glorified five technique, right? This is a gone, loose man, right? And then the three over here, or four eye, he's going to slant to the rear cage of the guard, Hands on a slam to rear cage of that guard, rear cage of the tight end. Right, so the max is 20, so he's an A gap player. Rover is a 40, he's a B gap player. This is a gone. We call these guys hook flat players, meaning they're playing the hook and taking uh, three to the flat. Right, this is loose. You're going to carry with the, with the F. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a gone, gone here, and a gone here. So we're gapped out. Uh, and then to this side, if it's just two of them, the B is slanting through the rib cage of the guard. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so, slant footwork is going to be balance up their feet a little bit, putting their mental weight um, on their push foot, and it's push equals step. And the nickel is here. <coughs> We played a nine technique when we brought the nickel. If we were to bring, if we were to bring like base field slant versus something like this, we call a trace, three man surface, which means you have to put this with an F. Mm -hmm. So he would go right through the face of that guy. Okay. So if it was down, he'd come off his ass. And base would reach, he'd come underneath. Um, so he did that. So all the outside guys we talked about attack or uh, rush footwork and drop footwork. So I'm the left outside backer. And my inside foot up, my outside foot back. And I'd be slightly tilted. Okay. <coughs> um, and if it was rush footwork, I'm gonna get all my weight on my front my front ball, my foot. I'm gonna see that back tip and I'm gonna push off this way. Alright, and so when it's run or pass, I'm rushing uh, off my front foot, rolling off, run where to come or to get my hands and my feet would come under, right? And so there's, there's still some people now that when they rush, they'll have, they'll be inverted, outside foot up, inside foot back, much like a de uh, defensive end. Mm -hmm. um, the only issue with that is their feet are only that way when they rush, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not that way when they drop because they're locked. Yeah. Right, so like I say, if it was wizard, right, it's lead, 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 then it's deuce, deuce, right, and it's deuce, right. You know, you see the switch feet, so. You know, yeah, you're rushing, you're dropping. And so this would be rush footwork here, right? If it was drop footwork, you want to be similar, have your mental weight here, but this is um, your weight's on your back foot. And so we would take a jab step, which is called read step. This would be our, our, our read step, mm -hmm. right? This would be drop footwork. Now if it's run, I could play it, but if it's passed, it can push off and drop. Gotcha. Right? So where's the weight, front foot or back foot, basically? Um, and so if we played that tr trace versus the tight end, then um, if I'm that left hand now, the left outside backer, I could still play rush footwork with the, I'd have to tilt a little bit more, and I could still work to get this foot in the ground, but then react off that tight end, right? So if I'm, if I'm rushing here, I'm here, and then I'm hands inside. So it's like a, a can opener. You know, we use the term splatter, you know? Um, if this was down and say there's a guard pull, 
we'd be flat and try to can over him straight back. Mm -hmm. Right. That would be the technique, like a base. If you got a base block from a trace, right. So if I was if I was this way, right, and this guy tried to base me here, I can over and him up this way. I'm, in, I'm inside, so okay. it's not like a dip and rip. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're getting reduced. Now, if it's a reach, he's going to overreach you a lot of times because this plays off that trace plays off the tight four, mm -hmm. wizard or heavy or nines. Yeah. So they're going to overreach you and you come inside. At that point, you want to go track the back or make a play. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, so field slant. So if it was something like this, this would be a strong hook. This would be a weak hook. Mm -hmm. This would be a curl flat. So you can see that here. You can get that. Maybe four would be a BF player. You know, the, um, the, the strong hook and weak hook. So the, the, the we were, if we were all staying at a hotel, the strong hook to me would be uh, someone that lived on like the second floor. He could get down to the lobby, check out the, the visitors that came in to that hotel. Right? Um, the strong hook player was responsible for, you know, the stick route by the tight end, the, um, the exit route by the X, the check down by the back. He was all had to do with the lobby, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He could get down there quick. Right? So I say it was like uh, his drop, his aiming point was outside of three. So if you got this, you drop outside of three. No more than ten yards deep. That's a stick route, he's playing that. We call this a dodge. He's playing that. Uh, we got something like this. Exit. He's playing that. If he got the tight end option, which is the hardest one for him, I think, he's playing that. Mm -hmm. If he got the check down, he's playing that. So it's all little on the second floor, take stairs at the lobby quick. The strong hook or the weak hook, he was on the 35th floor. He ain't getting to the lobby. He's playing, he's living on the high rise. So he's got the vendor here. All right, so he's going to come back on this hash and run man turn with the bender. He's gonna come back on this hash, right? And then man turn run with the dig. So he sees the wide, he sees wide action. There was a time where, so I remember, it was just last spring. It's always, man, God, it's hard, because it's, I think it's just guy's nature, you know? Like what, what Les did with the big splits on like day three, you know, type four, and then we're on a, we're on a, with, with Paul, and like I said, Paul was great to work with. But it's just, like I said, I think it's just guys' nature, you know. So it was with Paul, and we're on a bus to do like a, like a, um, a what do you call it, like speak to boosters or something like that, like mm -hmm. a booze bus, you know. And so we get on there, and he, we're about three days in, and so we're playing 3D. And he's running four verticals, and the guy's turning and running with it, you know. And so... Um, he goes, how does that guy know to do that, you know? Because then when they run the dig, we're sitting on the dig. And he goes, well, coach, he's reading the release of three. If three runs a bend, a bender, he's going to run with it. If three is just going vertical, then he's going to get his eyes to X and he'll play the, the, the dig. Well, fuck the very next day, right? <laughs> they're, they're, they're not bending anymore. He's going vertical, and then he bends it like 15 yards up the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, come on, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like, so, I think it's just human nature. Hey, how are you coaching think, that? I think that's just how guys are. Yeah. I think, you know, that was the way we always used to get. What are you telling that guy? Yeah. Well, fuck, you don't know what they're telling. Right. right. So, right. go ask me. You figure it out yourself. Yeah. So, <laughs> there was, you know, there on, on the lean post safety. Yeah. So that's important. So the, the weakness of the way we play the 3D. Um, so there's a guy over the X, right, man-to-man. Mm -hmm. -man. There's a guy over that Z, man-to-man. -man. Mm -hmm. There's a guy over number two, that S, man-to-man. -man. Correct. There's, um, there's really not a guy over that three, man-to-man. -man. Yeah. And there's the weakness of the coverage. You know what I mean? And so you're cheating the coverage, really, right? So it's not true thirds. 
right? It's a match thirds. And so if three, so you're kind of buying that safety, kind of saying, hey, three ain't going vertical. Well, he is gonna go vertical. Well, let me say this, not so much go for, if he goes vertical, it works out because he runs right to him, which people aren't going to do that versus closed middle of the field. The weakness is three on the bend and three on the seven, Mm -hmm. right? When he goes deep, but not to the middle of the field. If three runs the bend, that's the rover. If three runs the seven, that's fucked up, right? That's the weakness (laughs) of the coverage. So if three runs the seven cut, you put that on the safety. If it pushes all the way, if it's a true gone, with space, right. yes, and that's got to be the same. Okay. If, if, if the splits that, well, let me say this. It depends on what is two doing. Because if two runs short, then the nickel falls. You drop the nickel off on. Yeah. See, the Vikings will tell you to if three by one, they don't press the corner, yeah, and so he sees way. two's release. Right. And if yeah. two goes inside short. Right. He won't follow one inside right. short. Yeah, that's the other way to do it, and that's. Um, but that's that right. gets into right, Correct. you know, that Correct. gets into a lot of. Yeah, that's the other way to do oh, it. And yeah. 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 yeah, And so <laughs> if we were, yeah. if we look like this. So like, read it. And I'm gonna say this too. The other thing, the other part about it is, the 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 rotations from the boundary are better than the rotations from the field. So like, say if we were, let's go. Uh, let's say we're something like that. Yeah. And so he's sitting right here. And he comes down late like that. Correct. Right? And so we got loose man. We got loose man. Right? And we got gone. We're right on top of three. Which is yeah. We want him. If you're doing it from the field, that's harder to do. Yeah. Because this guy is coming down on that guy. And you're this guy has got to get over that guy. He's got to get over. And then you're saying that guy does that, it's all fucked up. Yeah. And so the saving grace on that is typically people don't run scissors in tricks. No. That's the exactly. saving grace. Because if you say this guy's gonna run a seven and you get this and you get this, he falls off. Correct. Right? And then if he matches that, then the strong hook is playing right there. Right, because that's a yeah. drop right outside the three in the corner match. What that. depth are you telling your lean post safety to? Uh, he'll line up at 12 and walk out. Okay. That's the starting point. And then if it's, you know, if longer distances, he could get to 15 and walk out. Um, yeah, but the, you know, the one I'm talking about where he's got them all the way is scissors. Yeah. So, there to get something like this. Now, typically with something like that, the split can get cut down. Yeah. And then, then, then that's where we play the mini. Well, if, if the three and two get tight, so three and two get tight. Now, when you do that, you're basically playing zero. Which really, I guess, what I'm trying to say, with all this, you're really playing zero anyway. Yeah. Really kind of like this. Yeah. If they run the routes that. Sure. Kind of like quarters, I guess. If they run the routes that declare it to be so, it is. Yes. Right? You've exactly. shown us our true cup. The lipstick is off the pit. Yeah. And so, um, if the splits are tight like that, because the other thing people will do with all of it is they'll do something like this and this, right? And yeah. And all that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they do that. And so then we play mini to that. And mini is um, like your nail. It's like nail with the nickel and the safety. And they, they'll play that, so the nickel will play whatever comes out, and the safety will play whatever comes in. And then the, the strong hook player now becomes like that B becomes a small hook player. Yeah. So we play a fair amount of mini too. That's what the splits of three and two are tight. Um, we haven't even got to that so LSU yet. But that would be an adjustment in 3D if three and two were close together. That's what. Th- that's like what we do a lot mm-hmm. is we play it that way. Yeah. We call it special, but that's what we play. Yeah. We don't really get it to the other very gotcha. often. Gotcha. Um, yeah. yeah, when teams have run scissors on us in the past, the splits of three and two are tight. Yeah. And so that would be many, and we pass that off. Um, many is 
is um, is a switch limit, I guess. Is yeah. probably the better term for it. Um. Yeah, those are the odd the odd looks in place of so type four wizard um Tolzine, Orton, Boomer. You know, so the thing about it is a lot of those are the same. So I don't know. I don't know how much of it is, to be honest. It's not the same. I kind of look at it that way, and I think I don't know. I mean, how much you can do and all that. Because, like, say you had same uh, some front, right? And you 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 um, ran a pirate stunt, and then you ran like a pinch stunt, right? And then you ran like a uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a tom stunt, or something. I don't know what you would call that spike stunt. It's not quite the same, right? Because there's guys rushing, guys dropping that are different. Now, for the yeah. majority of the secondary, though, it's like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's going to be one or two linebackers that are switching spaces, switching spots. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so that's where the coaching comes in. But I think I look at it that way, though, at least from a certain point of view, in that um, you don't want to just sit there, you know, and so mm -hmm. that. Um, there is a mixture of it. You know, the guy I used to talk to all the time, too, was um, uh, Derek Mason. So he's been in Vanderbilt for a while now. He's at Stanford. I always loved how to watch those guys play. Um, you know, another good, good resource would be a um, guy I can't say, Kodo. He's now back in it. He was the DC Vanderbilt guy I'm not going up to one year. He's a different, he, I, very intelligent, great guy. He's at Utah State now, the okay. linebacker coach. And so he's he's great. He's great. Um, he's got all that Stanford did, the reason why, and all that. A lot of it came from him. This he's a small college guy, small yeah. college background. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess you know, it's long story long. And talking to and talking to Mason about his the games that they he played the best and the games that he'd like to take back. The games he'd like to take back are the games where he didn't mix the calls. You know what I mean? Where he just sat in one or two calls. Yeah. Right? And so the mix I think is so important. And I think it goes back again to the the three, four people will or those looks people will will block you certain ways. You know what I mean? If you're a four down look, they're gonna run their you know, they're gonna look at you blitzes mm -hmm. yeah, more so than your front. You know what I mean? They're gonna look at your blitzes where the set stuff. They look at you run the three four, they're gonna look at the front. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're gonna want to see where is the fourth pressure coming from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fourth guy. Not necessarily the fifth or sixth, but the yeah. fourth. Yeah. Right. And so it starts there. Mm -hmm. Right? And then um, so that that's immediately we're already playing the game. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's one more yeah, variable on there. Right, so. yeah. right. So you're already playing it yep. and so having <coughs> these um, different calls allows you to mix and play the game. Yeah. You doing good coach? You need a break for a minute? Or? No, I'm good. It's going to be man. There's not going to be a lot of that. Now, uh, let me see. I'll take a Coke if there's a Coke. Have some, uh, we've got, uh, I'll tell you what we've got. We've got, uh, uh, we've got Coke Zeros. Oh, no. I'm oh, here's a diet. We've got uh, Pib. Yeah, I'm just saying it because we're on, we're on camera. We're on camera. <laughs> Zero blank here. <laughs> no, no, he wants, no. Yeah, I know it's I'm sorry about that. No, you good. That's called being a dumbass on my part. No, you good. <laughs> That's all right to be on camera since it's all right. I asked him, I said, if you're gonna be anti social like Fellini was, just let us know we can get it down the outlet. Gosh. Man, that'd be cool to see, man. I can see it. I can you'll see it when I send it to you. Yeah, yeah. We, you'll see it when we send it to you. <laughs> I'm watching that that night. 
And I said, hey, he knocked on my damn iPad. I brought that in the next day. I said, look at this guy. He comes walking right by and just knocking the shit out of it. <laughs> There's, uh, there is a 3D coverage that um, that Stanford runs. Um, another school that I think is another good resource is Washington. Washington came down to visit this um, this spring. Their D staff they came last spring to uh, Wisconsin, and they both they visited both both us and uh, Stanford. Mm -hmm. Or Kitowski, you know. And so they did a good job. They ran like uh, a crap or, uh, or a ton of uh, spike and belly. They ran a lot of the pressure, they had a lot of success every year. You know. And they ran uh, the 3D version. They called it, it's, um, we looked at it, so we called it burn. And that's like a zone to set 3D, right? And so if it was two by two in nickel, the nickel, the nickel, the two by two in peso. Nick will be down two to the field. The safety was on down two to the boundary. Yeah. And then if it was three by one, nickel nickel on two, safety on three. Yeah. Right. And that played out as three D. Mm -hmm. So it was gone on two, two by two, gone on two. If it was trips, gone on two, gone on three. You know what I mean? And then you had your, your Were they carried three? Yeah. With yeah, the so it was to me very similar to what was man. Very right. similar. Yeah. Now the only difference was when things got bunched up, it was true, it was true zone. True zone. Right. Or if they got a, a drive route or something shallow, then they called it off, or did, were they carried it? No. Yeah. No, that was true. It was like a true in. But uh, you'll yeah. see the way we play man, we cut in man. So yeah. there's some similarities. But um, that was an answer to them for like the three D match three, yeah. number three seven cut, or when we just play a guy. On. Good so there's merit to that. Our answer was was well, man, um, three, but then we played two packer, we played two kick. So kick was like a three roll to the field. Yep. And you know, I think the mixture of the defenses though too. I mean, we were such a heavy three D team two years ago that we got it a fair amount, and we played so much kick and packer mm -hmm. and um, uh, mixing quarters. You know. I think it's a thing to where you don't want it to ever be always or never. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's when you get those beaters, right? Um, so if we're in peso man, then the this is probably similar to what you guys what you guys do. So the nickel will be on two, corner on one. Now mm -hmm. we would say five one bottom would be the divider rules for the uh, for the corners. And so one would be if the ball was in the Receiver was outside that divider would be inside. Mm -hmm. Receiver was inside the divider would be outside. If receiver was a yard in or out of that divider either way, then that we call that the move area, would be alert for stems, hard stems. Yeah, we'd be able to change the, our leverage on a stem. Right? Uh, so that was in that was in the middle of the ball on the hash. Right now we're talking bottom and five. So now it's the bottom of the numbers here. Right? So there's that. And then the split of the numbers here. Yep. And that was ten, so it was five. And so, you know, the, the divider to the field, this was ten, right? And then the bottom here. So that's how they play. The, the nickel would play a divider off the seam, right? And so now this is the middle of the field here, so the seam would be if we said it was two yards outside the hash. So any any ball was the number two receiver was inside of that seam or outside. It was outside of the seam. That was the that was how we got lined up.
Now, uh, when we play uh, three, when we play the G, if the back, the base rules was we said peso man, we call the string to the tight end. Right? No tight end, we said to the running back. Okay. Right? Um, now, those were kind of our camp rules. They pretty much stayed, I guess, but mm -hmm. the team was a heavy team away from the running back. And then you, you look at that. And the, you know, the base way we played the three technique, uh, well, that changed. Okay, so the, the, there was a fair amount of gap technique that we played. And a lot of this came from the Gary Anderson influence, to be honest. And so that gap three penetrating up the field, which put this guy in a fill position, which would put this guy, he wouldn't be a 48. He would cheat down to a 20 if we played a fill. And he was a full. Um, if we're again like a beer routine, that was called fill and fold. The, the, other, the other way we played zone read, we called it scratch and snip. We had a, um, a freshman linebacker call it that. And so scratch would be the same as fill and fold, but we just flipped it. We played that a fair amount this year. So away from the linebacker, away from the back, he would fill and he would fold. And so if that if the ball were to hit across, he'd play that edge. Okay. And so the, the, the linebacker that hit it, he was responsible man on man on the back, and this guy was your whole play. It'd be just the opposite if this guy filled, he was man to man on the back, and he was your whole play. So it was a little bit worse. So we play fill and fold, so play scratch and sniff. Now all that was with a gap charge in the B gap. If you have three techniques squeeze the guard, then we're a rope a and we fall back. So we didn't want to run through. So if he was squeezing this in, so the thought would be, if that's a that's a guard and that's a three. And we're aligned like that. Okay. So if he goes in, then what is this foot doing? Is it doing this? To us, that would be a gap charge. Okay. Is that is if he's going in, is the foot doing this? Let's say that's an in flight adjust, that's squeezing the guard. If that was the case, then you wanted to open it. The film in. This surface would be right here, this would be too short. Be too short of the surface. Okay. Um, if the back was away from the tight end, so if the back was away, right, then we didn't play the six anymore. We played a six with uh, uh, to a tight end in uh, a home pistol or near, right? We played a trace versus far. So if he was away, we played a nine and we traced it, anticipating zone coming that way. <coughs> and so you know, he would get this block. There were nine techniques, five techniques, and then they were gone. So it was built in that they could do that. Um, it, you know, that was more or less the front aspects of man. The, the coverage part of it, the other part was we cut routes. And so, you know, I don't know. I got, um, I got the guy that was a DB coach, Bill Bush. He's at uh, Rutgers now. Mm -hmm. He's over there with Chris and all that. And he's trying to get Chris to see if they can cut cut routes, and Chris won't do it and all that. And all of it's you know, there's a million ways to do it, and that and I get it because you know the, the the thinking is well, that's a receiver in the boundary running full speed, 
and he's running to the field and you're going to have a linebacker cut him, you know, that he's man to man in the field, is that what you want to do? Yeah, that's what we're doing. You know? mm -hmm. And so, so the, let's say um, if we're, so the cut rules would be, or how we would play, right? So we were here and here. Okay. So what we say is if the splits were normal splits, then what we wanted to do was try to hug rush the back. Okay. And then away from the back, we wanted to work right over the ball in the hole, and we wanted to see the QB. And so the thought being there is um, with no potential cut, no tight split, I guess, we want to steal a second off the pitcher. So much like we're on first base, inching off, inching off of first. You know, the, the pitcher's is looking at his back, he's in his wind up, right? We, we get our, uh, our lead, we roll over, we go, we steal a second base. That's what, that's what we want to be able to try to do, right, when we're in the hole. Now, if the splits were cut down, and our rules were, if it was two by two, right, look to the tight end Z. We call it a Z crack alignment, right, or a wing alignment. If it was um, any form of by one, right, so two by one, three by one, we look for the X nasty first, right? If, if we're X nasty, we're going to cut that. No X nasty, then we would look to the passing strength, right, for like a, um, you know, a snug. Mm -hmm. Right, a stack, possibly a bunch, you know, but it was always that first and then that. And so it was something like here, we're all good, but now let's say, you know, we got something like this. And this would be a tough left. And what that meant was if we were just playing hole, we saw the cube first. And if we're cutting left, we looked here first. And then we saw the cube. And so we're going to look to see if we saw a face come out of that. Saw face come up. Well, let me see. Prior to even get to that, with that split coming down, we would go cut left, cut left, cut left, or cut right, or whatever it was. We wanted the corner to acknowledge it. And then the corner would play off. So if we got something like that, you want the safety to come up. Who made the cut call? The linebacker would. The, line, the safety would come up, and then this corner would come off. And we wanted it to be on the same page because what we're basically saying is if this goes down the way we think it is, you're going to be the whole player in a, in a minute. Yeah, the corner will be. And so when this, when this route, would, when this would happen, this would come in, the rover would cut it. And we wanted to be underneath it if it all happened. And we, we um, give ground grudgingly. And, and I think, you know, there's weaknesses to it now. Right? So I mean, if, mm -hmm. if we see it coming, we're kind of inching this way. He could sit and all that. But <clears throat> I think the, it became a um, it became something our kids felt comfortable with because there are times where that cat is mowing and, and running full speed, and it, they were most comfortable measuring that out. Right. So we would see it, kind of give ground gradually, be low, and be and make it go over the top of us, man to man. Right? And then once that happened, the nickel, the corner would see it, so the safety would be driving on the dig, and the corner would fall off, and we would be in the hole. Mm -hmm. um, if it was, if it was like a five one every day, let's say if it was something like that, then this would be a cut right. Right, so if we're get something like this, like this Mac, for example, right, he's going to be pushing this way to match that up. And the rover's going to be hug rushing on that. And then the corner, if he sees it, so like say it's something like this coming back, the corner matches that. And then this corner will be in the corner. We're already getting that now. You know, I, I, you know, I was um, at LSU, which was a little bit Probably a little bit surprising. I wasn't expecting to get it as quick as we got it. But anyways, um, that allowed us to... Um, How much work does that take for you to get done on that? Uh, we do it in all the mans. So man, Spike, Belly, Ryan, all the way through. So okay. it's pretty consistent. 
So there's a fair amount of man that we play. Yeah. And, and all four of those we play the same way. Okay. But you see, the thing is, like, say, if we get a bunch, like, we don't make any combos or limbos. Or we, we lock and level at different levels, and we're going to cut it, you yeah. know? And so you just play your leverages, mm -hmm. and you're at different levels, and the routes come in, we cut the route, new hole player, and all that. And so it allows you, I, th I think, to play fast, right? And so th th there's, um, I don't know, maybe there's different opinions on that, but, you know, the, um, we haven't, I, like I said, this is the fourth DB guy I've been with now. That's one of the first things I go, like, what do you do to bunch? What do you do to you just play it, you know, and you just cut it. And so it's been, um, I think the, once they, they understand those rules, then they play it out. And it hasn't been that. Now, you know, within a practice time, there we have run fit, skelly teach, and then we have stuff with you. So like the run fits would be, you know, um, our top defenses versus their top runs, right? Yep. Yeah. Everyone does it. So we would walk the fit, and then we would jog the fit. So they get it twice off the card, you know. So we walk it, and I'm right behind them, the linebackers anyways. And the coaches <coughs> are right behind their guys. So when they walk it, we're saying, hey, see the fullback. You see that right there? Right, you can see the guard pull, okay, you need trigger, trigger, and then you walk it, you get the fit. And then the very next fit, I kind of step back, and then it's jog, it's faster, yeah. go get it. Right, and then a new play. I walk it, you know, hey, you see that, see the, the indicator, see the tight end, and the sling, he's off the ball. What are you thinking right here, what are you thinking? And it's a ways on. And then they play it, right, they jog it, and then the next play. Right? And so, that's run fits. Now, at the same time run fits are going, so we go like the ones and threes at the run fits. The twos and fours are at Skelly Teach. And the Skelly Teach would be stuff like this, working cuts or um, working um, bunches, right? So like, we'll work bunch, we'll, we'll work tight four with our boxes and yeah. twos, and then our man with their cuts. And then the twos and fours will go to the run fits, and the ones and threes will go to scale two. And then there's times where the run fits, you feel comfortable about what you do. Now, when we do the skelly teach, what we do, you know, someone today, or one of the last days I was there at LSU prior to this break, um, they showed us the, they just spend money to spend money on stuff, I can't go there. But they, they have like a, um, like a wristband. There's like a wristband, you know, and it's got like a picture. So there's someone with an iPad, and the wristband, for your scout teams, it has the the play, the card. Jeez. But then it, it's like animated, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So whatever the offense, whatever that card is doing, and their guy, the guy that has that wristband, the guy that you're playing, is kind of like, it blows up. So it kind of like, it, it blows up, like kind of flashes, and then it animates, so you can oh, see it. So we need that for some of our players. You may not see that. Wow. And so there's that, I, I think we're buying that. So if we get that, then fuck, we just do that. You know what I mean? And the yeah. guy with the iPad on the side, the a admin guy, he does it. But what we've done, we don't have that. <laughs> Another guy? Yeah. Well, we don't we don't have that yet. Yeah. So what we do is we take like an eight by an eight, uh, you know, there's an eight box kind of sheet. You know, we do all our drawings on, mm -hmm. and we do the routes on that. Yeah. And then we make a copy for each one of the skill guys, and they carry that, and so and it's laminated or whatever, and so we don't. Um, we don't huddle or meet during that skelly teach period. And so each guy has, each receiver has that sheet. And the guy that runs it goes, I want to see one. And they look at one. And they run it. And so I want to see three. And they look at three and they get lined up and they run it. You know what I mean? Right. So they're running with the sheet. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're not.
because we're not wasting time. Right. Yeah. Correct. Well, that's a good way to do it. So we go run fence, we go skelly teach, and then the other the other Bring piece back, we do show is card. the other piece we do is stunt review, and stunt review is like Wizard Four, Trolls and Norton, mm -hmm. Field Slant, Spike Belly, all of that versus pass protection. So we'll do stunt review of skelly teach. So the stunt review is like um, usually let the D line guy run that, and so the front will be in there, and they'll work the creeper versus pass protections. What are the pass protections we're expecting? Mm -hmm. So it's a run fit pass protection, basically. You know what I mean? so, so you get basic protection or you get slide protection. You know, you have a two-way go. The guard comes to you, come under, right? Or if the guard, the tackle blocks down, come off his ass, or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're working that same, that, that pattern versus 5-0, big on big, versus slide protect, right? Versus say the back is offset one way and you're expecting uh, the center to slide, but now the back crosses and the center slides to you, right? So how does it go that you have a two way go now, come underneath the guard, you know, when he fans to you, all that. And so that is stuff. So typically, like Tuesday, Wednesday, run fits. Thursday, Right, stunt review. Friday, we try to get both. You know what I mean? Try to get both there. Um, okay, the other thing we do in man is we do link. And so, the the cut stuff, we're all, I mean, we're okay with that. And then yep. the, and so, what we're not cutting is like over routes and stuff. You know what I mean? We're not cutting those. I don't know if we can cut those when we cut the other low stuff. You know, you know, so we're cutting the low stuff. And so the, you know, last year at LSU cut over routes, but they didn't cut the underneath thing, so yeah. it was just the exact opposite. And now, link. So I, say it's something like this. What bothers me about man is the back getting out. There's two, there's two things we can do. We go link or we can go mouse. Now, both of these are kind of pa pass, pass, um, we want to do it when we think pass. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do it, if, if it's run pass scenarios, not great. <coughs> um, so I say link and mouse. Okay, so, you know, what the mouse came from, we played Utah and Utah State, and they're an empty team, and they're an empty, and they're a 5 0 team, so the hashes were like that. And so when um, Rover was here, corner, nickel, safety, safety. So typically, you know, if you put the Mac like that, and you just play man. Scat team, so they don't pick up the back, so that's the center. So then, like scat, the way we would look at it would be is the 5 0 lineman for the 5 most dangerous guys. So they'd ID one. So the, the rule, I guess, the thought would be if it was a too high look, typically a lot of teams will look at the will, you know I mean, uh, to the two receiver side because he's stacked with his, with his safety on top of him, so he could rush. Be protected because the safety's on top. You know, to the three receiver side, in too high look, that max over three. But if he rushes, the thought is, who the fuck's got three? It's not sound. You know, look to the number two guy first. You know? And so a lot of scat teams would go number two high. If a 
this one eye, then, you know, that look right there. I go to this eye. The other one else is more or less taken, taken up. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, so the thought would be like, you know, especially Utah, like Utah, at that time, Utah would fucking point to the guy, right? They point to him. And so, all we wanted to do was try to have a stunt, try to get a rush, and try to cheat, get you know, bargain shopping for that. And so, you know, if we ran a game right here, the center could drop back and pick up guys that have been twisted and all this shit. And so the thought would be, what we wanted to do was get the Mac here, the control of mouse, and the, with the center was going to get slide this way, slide this way, and slide this way. All right, so they're all, they're all pointed, they're all hip here, here, here. And they all pointed that way. Now, we were still going to drop this guy back out to that middle like that. But then all we did was run with his own version, with his own second. So it was not a big thing. But his alignment affected the protection from Mouse to us. Yeah. All, all, all the way. And so that was Mouse. Now, from there, what we take a Mouse to do is versus this. We put the Mac out here. When the back is wide, we put the Mac on the line of scrimmage. And we move the rover over here, right? So the Mac can play this and not be picked. Now, anytime we do that, because of this, that we still run this stunt. Okay? So he would be first, he'd be second. And he rushes and he's in the hole. That'd be mouse. So the back was wide. You go mouse, mouse, mouse. That's one adjustment that we have, right? Versus the back being not wide. Now, um, and typically, you know, the back's wide, you're not really thinking the run, you know what I mean? And so, at least you hope you hope you're not getting the run, you have a twist. That's that. The other the other one we've done is link. Link is we put in the app and that's one of the this is one of the advantages with um, he's in a nine now. He's playing with these guys as linebackers is now he has the back. So Link is, he's rushing, he's rushing, he has him. So we're going to link the back. And so gotcha. Link is this right here. And now we rush him. And he's B-gap contained. And he's in the hole. So if the back gets out, we got him. Now, the, if the back blocks, so or, so let's just say it's something like this. Right? So what's this? What's this? So the back, the B's got him. Now, let's say if the back blocks, then he hug rushes. That's going to let a three man twist. And we show the whole front. So, anytime we go link, the B gap player has got contained. The B gap player has contained. So, link's always best when it's two or three technique. I mean, you could link to a bubble. The linebacker is rushing in the bubble. So when he rushes to the back, he's got to rush outside leverage on the back because he's contained. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then that five technique, if the back block, you come inside. Uh, so we've done that too, but it's best two or three. And so if we're getting backs out, like all the link and mouse, these are all things we had to do versus Paul. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the backs get out of time. Yeah. Have you toyed at all with keeping that guy at a nine at all times? Because uh, that, that's what we do out of our base. That's what we've, in drawing all this stuff up, that's what we've talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if you've experimented with that and A, it doesn't work and you can save us some time, or what are the reasons why, just because? You no, know, I just never, we never, you know, the only, the only thing that would, um, we play nine in, a lot of the uh, the creepers mm -hmm. is all a nine. Yeah, they're all nines. You know right. Uh, but in just plain man, we haven't just because of the the run away. You know, I like a nine when they run to them. You know I, mean? mm -hmm. I like a nine is hard when it's man and they run away from. Them. Right. And then especially like, how does the three play? Mm -hmm. Does the three squeeze the guard? Right. And how does that linebacker play? Is he trying to get in the A? Both those two things are happening with a nine, and I'm worried about the bend. Okay. You know what I mean? Right off of it. 
Yep. And the safety being walled off. Yeah. You know I mean, from the right. tight end stepping out and then working up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be the concern. But I haven't done it enough, though. Okay. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Because I was just wondering if yeah. maybe you could save us something. Yeah. It doesn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, save, you can save us a we'll probably be able to. <laughs> To give you a, yeah. a good insight on that, we'll probably base a lot of it out of nine. Yeah, because that's sort right. of what. Right. We that's what our base does, and that's right. what like our three tech is always used to that. I mean, right. I mean, right. our backers are used to fitting. Right. That, so I, yeah. that's why. That's, that's why. I ask. Yeah, I just that's why. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, but I do agree. There's issues. That, mm -hmm. I mean, you can scheme oh, it up. Yeah. Just that's like anything, you scheme it up. Mm -hmm. You can do that. But. Yeah. So that would be, I think that's man. I think that's all man has been. Um, yeah, make a mouse and then cut. Okay, spike. Spike is my, is my favorite. Um, so spike you say to you tight end. No tight end into the running back. Uh, so Spike's an answer to the beaten the backs in the mouth. You know, I think the hardest part with Spike is outside. You know, the here's the, always the thing because I because like, it was the same. It was with um, outside backer we had last year. He's a good coach. I I, res I respect uh, him too. So he's there in Wisconsin now. And I like Tim, he's a good coach. And, you know, he's always gonna Yeah, you know, that's the other thing about the two four is that there's is that um, the guys in the room are gonna vouch for their guys rushing because there's a menu, right? So before before Tim, you know, we look at, you know, who are the what are some uh, third down pressures you like? And this particular guy coached safeties, and so he gave me six pressures, uh, creepers, and every single one of them had one or both safeties rushing, right? It was just, I mean, that's just natural, you know? And, and Tim really wasn't any different. I think that's a natural thing, you know, mm -hmm. to have let your guys go. And I think it's especially when those are two of your better players. I think that's also true, too. But I think it's hard. I, mean, I, I'm, and I know some of this is going to come up, too, with the guy I'm with now, Dojeron. LSU is the same deal, but it's difficult though, and I don't know if you're talented enough at LSU just to say, you know, uh, more or less, hey, fuck it, right, and yeah. here we go. Um, I don't know if we are, you know, mm -hmm. because there's so many things that are built in schematically where they get you, you know what I mean, when you just go this way. Yeah. I'm talking about just rushing five guys, right, and just rolling, and back getting out is one of them, right? Um, you know, LSU last year was a huge five-man rush team. Third down was five-man rush, like 88% 80, of the time, huge. And they got more mesh routes, more slants. In the middle of the field, it's wide open. Right, any, just rush five and come to the back. Right, any in-breaking route you can think of. Yeah. And the backs were getting out of touch. Yep. And so, I mean, you know, you just having some, I, not that that's a bad thing, you just you want to have something tie off that. Yeah. Now, I like Spike, but Spike, those outside guys, it's really a hug is what it is. You know what I mean? And so, you're rushing, but you ain't really rushing. So that's, the f that's always the first hurdle. And that's always the big one. Once you get over that hurdle, then I think it's really good, right? Because you match numbers on it. And so, I don't know. I think it's hard for me, and, it, and I need to be better at it. But what is the what is the war where they um, where they uh, was it the Revolutionary War? They're like banging drums and blowing and blowing on bugles and shit, and they got like flags and they're the marching. Yeah. Is that no. the Revolutionary that would War? Probably be the yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. The rebels popped up from the side. And yeah, so yeah. like you know, well, <laughs> there's like a I don't know anything about. I can't remember because I remember I took a class, but I don't remember the class. <laughs> I remember like the Mel Gibson movie, The yeah. Patriot. I remember yeah. that movie. What was that movie? Yeah. That was the Revolution. That was the Revolution. Yeah. Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so like in that movie, right, they're marching and stuff, and there's flags, and there's guys on drums, and everyone's wearing like 
really colorful uniforms. Right, right. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're going to meet at a certain place, like a grassy field. And so I'm going to meet here. And then you guys are on the other uh, opposite. I'm going to war with you, and you meet over there. And more or less, I can see you camp out over there. Mm -hmm. And you see me camp out over here. And we're going to meet the next morning. And we all get up and we march out there. And, you know, we're doing the drums and the bugle and the, the flags are waving. And it's more or less, here you are, here I am. You know, it's hard for me to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's hard for me to do that, man. You know? And so much of it, I think, is based upon that. Mm -hmm. Right, a lot of yeah. our game is based that way, you're, and I think there's you know, warfare. right, mm -hmm. and so the run game, mm -hmm. the run game, I think is 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 a big part of the run game. It needs to be that way. Yeah, yeah. but the passing game it kills me to be that way. It kills me to be. And that unless way. you've got the guy that can just right. do that, right, right, which we don't. Right, you know, right. 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 And so that's where like spike yeah. comes in. And so to me, that's where like that, this technique of kind of hug rushing, you got him, kind of comes in, you know. And so, um, yeah, it's more of like, hey, they can be doing the, them doing the, the drums and blowing on the bugle and all that just lets us like know when to fall out of the trees on their ass. You know what I mean? As opposed to waiting in the middle of the field. Yeah. Right? But, so like, if it was Spike, that outside rusher, we want him to, uh, he's a hug rush guy, right? And so like, we, we kind of talked about it already, but let's say if it was this, this would be to a, to a tight end first. Now, it, you know, this, um, who was it? Uh, Washington did it the other way. Washington did it always to a back. This was Merrick to it. That way to it. We did it to a tight end because the very first time was when we were getting, you know, when we get two by two like this, the tight end would block, and we got a fair amount of like um, this right here, um, big on big protection. So we get this. So you know, he's got the nickel, right? He's got the will. He's got the Mac. That's where Spike came from. And then so then that's where we started to rush the tight end. Right now. Since then, we just kept the rules because these are the rules for everything that we got in this man. Now, how we set our strength in all of these. Our strength is all set the same way. So it's kept there. We're doing it now just because it stays the same. You know what I mean? Um, but it started because, you know, the two by two, that's where people get you. We, we call that basic protection. Where, you know, he's got this guy, he's got this guy. He's got this guy. So mm -hmm. you attack the back, you attack the back. A lot of times that wise off the ball like that. And they do it. Yep. That's when they hit you. So all the two by twos, when the tight end's attached, you want to look at and see if that if that's no longer slide anymore. Now that's basic. So now they're now they're it's not the will they're looking at, it's the Mac. Okay. But anyways, so if it was spike, we are three or G, right? And then uh, here, I'll just give you some examples. And so uh, this would be the, that. That is a good point, though. I mean, at, at um, Wisconsin, we eventually just put these guys as tackles and ends. So okay. we stop saying, "Hey, you're the bench, you're the field." It depends on what you do on base, you know what I mean? Because if um, or how you do it, we just right. said tackles and ends because you know he's the F. But he's to the boundary, so yeah. from the F into the boundary and the bench yeah. to the field. We always had to kind of backtrack to talk like that. Yeah. Right. So the corner nickel, the corner safety. The Mac would go to the strength hole. So we would all the language would be lake and river. Lake is left, river is right. This would be lake, lake, lake. And the Mac over here would be a thirty technique, and the rover over here would be a twenty. Right. The safety would be here. Let's do it with the back, the back two first. So uh, the F's going to be rushing off the field. We call this scat control. And so he has the back crossing his face. So I was talking about this with, uh, with the OC over there at LSU. Um, God, what's his name? What's up there? His name? Cam Cameron? Yeah, Cam Cameron. 
and he was saying, you know, teams that peel, that peel with this, they'll take that peel and they'll do that action right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're doing this. That's yep. their automatic. That's a thing. hard right? shoot route. And that the shoot. The so bits. that's where the end. the player has to use a hug rush because of that route. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's because of that that he takes some aim across his face. So he's hug rushing from that position. And that's the thing you kind of have to eat to get this thing to go. Yep. Right? And so he does that. Right? This end over here, he's a two face. So he's crossing the guard and he's reading the center. The center goes away, he's off his ass. The center comes to him, he crosses his face. This end over here is a two eye. He's going to face into the B gap and then he's going to contain from that. The Mac is going to rush this B gap. Right, so the Mac is first. So he's going to rush the B. We call that bitch the B. So these are the four rushers right here. Right, and so if the if the guard goes down, he's right off the guard's ass, and he's going to spill the running back. He's going to spill the running back. If if for any reason it was a cross protection. And the slides too, right? The end is reading the center. He's yeah. away in the A. The Mac has a two-way go on the guard. And he's in the A. Okay, and so he's gonna spill the H and two-way on the guard. All right, and then over here, the rover, he is the hug rusher. Okay, so he hug rushes when the back is offset. To the river lake. He is going to be a hover player with, um, with the back away from river lake. So this is a lake, lake, lake. So the back's offset there, so he's going to hug rush. Right? So let's just say we get our, our normal our normal thing. So he comes in, he takes them because he's working out. Right? He spills, he hugs. We want that to be an aggressive hug rush. Right? So those are your four rushers. He's the hug rusher. He drops on the hole. And he applies all the rules we talked about in man. So if it's two by two, it's the and it's um, a pro uh, Z crack, or it's a wing, it cuts cuts left, so it cuts right. So if it's two by one or three by one cut to the X nasty. If it's not an X nasty, we'll cut to the bunch, cut to the stack, cut to the snub. Um, so what you get is you get an overload and you still get a whole part. Now if the if the back were to swing, so like say it was something like this, that back were to get out, the F plays it corner squeezes, safety's outside leverage, right? The Mac is still working. The tackle's gonna work out and see the F take it and come on back. That's where the rollers mm -hmm. now is going to contain the right. Contain and the B's are still the hole. Mm -hmm. See, the, the, the thing I like about that, you know, when you're four down line and you run that same thing, you're committing six. Nobody's in the middle. Mm -hmm. Here, you get it committing five, mm -hmm. and there's always a halo guy, mm -hmm. there's always a scramble guy, mm -hmm. there's always a, under, you know, there, there's always protection in there. And that's just, you know, the number of times that you run something like that, and somebody just happens to get out of a lane, and the next thing you know, there's a tuck and a scramble, and it's on the damn mm -hmm. high safety because everybody else got their back turned. Right. You know, that, right. that's. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then if the, if the tight end was not attached, then it was taken to the back. Well, here, let me show you this, because this is what, what Washington did. Um, Washington played, uh, Washington played USC. And I thought they played really good.
do you have a term for that, like to spike the back? You know, in terms of your uh, spike rules, to the, just put it yeah, purely to the back? Uh, we would play, we would just have spike rules for that week. Okay. So we wouldn't really, gotcha. yeah, we don't have a necessary term for that. Okay. Yeah. We'd say, hey, spike for this week is always to the back. Now, the other thing we've done out of spike is run a way spike. And so that would be just away from the back. And that was that would be for gun run teams. So let's say if the back was like that. You get some spike against the other one, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. And so we'll put another line up like that. That, that. And so, you know, this thing comes and they want all these angles. And then, so what we want to do is do that, right? And then do that. And do that. So that this roller here, so he puts Q, this roller's just got to go to that. You see what I mean? So it's like A gap, yeah. B gap, and C gap play there. B gap and C gap here. So he's just got this gap. So you want that to the side of the back. So that would be a waste spike. And then if you got, you know, play pass, there's a chance to get something out of that. Right? If there's pass, right, then he drops out. <coughs> you can get the back flare. Yeah, so that's the other part of it. That player here, so he still had the scat control. The guy at white. Okay, him. he's he's still there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so he got it. So like, say here, so he's hub rushing. Yeah. That back flare, he no, plays the new contain. He was in the hole. He's in the hole. He's okay. in the hole. So you really lose a contain. Uh, this this guy would. He's still thinking contain. Okay. Yeah, he's contained all the way. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about that. We, we talk about a waste. That's not just relative to a waste spike. Let's do that. We talked about it if it was near. Right. So now we're going to talk about it if it's far. Yeah. All right, so let's say we're going this way. All right, so he's going from a 2i to that B gap, and we're going to cop from there. All right, and then we're here, here, and here. Okay, so that's. That spike right there, those are your four rushers. And then this guy is a hover player. So he's away from the late call. Gotcha. And the reason is because you don't want to add him in to when this guy's two facing and all that. There's no space for him to go. You know what I mean? So you go two I, he he goes to B gap, and he reads pass, and he just keeps on going outside right. the tackle. Correct. Yeah, we'd like to contain through the B if we could. Okay, like a contain. If we can't contain through the B, then the gap. So he's going to read ear hole to face mask for this guy right here. Yeah. All right. So then, what this guy's reading. So if the back, let's put this. Let's go here. If the back was this way, mm -hmm. then he's thinking hug, and he's thinking hold. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. The uh, if the back was a, to the side of the leg call and blocked. Hug rush, flare release or release outside, contain. Right. If the back was here and went straight across, like a play pass, the rover has him. Yep. He's man to man. Yep. He's whole all the way. Now, once the back is now away from the river lake, right? Then he is. There's no more uh, scat. Rule. No more scat rules with him. It goes to him now. Okay. And so. If this if this guy were to get out quick anyway, he plays it and he's in the hole. You see what I'm saying? Right? Let's say the back the back blocked. If the back blocked this way, then he would hover. He's in the hole. And so is he getting out right now? He's out. Mm -hmm. He's in the hole. Is he blocking? Right? Is he coming to block this? Right? Then uh, the, the rover's got him. Yeah. Once he crosses to this side, it's that, not that. Yeah. So he's in the hole. And so that, there's always, when you put him in, a little bit of learning to work. Did he, is he uh, releasing right now? Is he you said if he hovers, that the, the rover's going to take him in. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Spike's been my favorite one. Because, uh, like, Spike was the perfect one versus, like, Paul Chris, Wisconsin, backs to get out. 
Yeah. Because you got to contain. Oh, yeah. You got rushers coming right yeah. now. Um, you know, all the man beaters that you get, Spike is good. Yeah. You know. Man, if we got empty, if we got empty, we make a shove call. So we say shove left, shove right. And so you would shove to the two receiver side. And that's just because that's an easy thing to do. It don't really mean anything, to be honest. And so, um, here right. motion that roller would take him mm -hmm. okay and then we would go shove left okay so now what would happen is the Mac would rush this A gap right he would go B gap to contain he'd be a whole player he's gonna push vertical and he's gonna wrap get in twist a shove. So we do the shove versus the empty in both spike and dummy. Those are shove calls. We shove the both of those. We used to just run spike, right? So yeah, if they lined up and empty, you're just going to pull the rover out right away and run the shove. Mm -hmm. That was the adjustment. So we used to just run spike, right? So the, map, the rover's out, and then we're just going to run it. But the problem was, is there was too much grass, too much space in there. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the hug rusher, right? So like, um, if the quarterback ran the ball, too many seams. Mm -hmm. Whereas in here, we were more, you know, if the quarterback ran like a draw or something, we had that element coming back in, mm -hmm. which was helpful. Yeah. And then if it, anything did come back out here, this guy in the fold kind of helped out that A late. So any type of draw action or run action, this was helpful. Anything to determine which way you want to shove it to? Always the two receiver side. Always the two receiver mm -hmm. side. Yeah, now, uh, let me say this. If it was aligned empty, it was the two receiver side. If they motioned the empty, it was whatever side they motioned to. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you motion to whatever, with the right, it would shove right. Mm -hmm. If you motion to the left, it would shove left. Spike is kind of a staple. We, you know, then oh, and then and we've and got and a, and we made a cut up of all those yeah. that you did through the year, yeah. and there's there's a bunch of them. Yeah, at um, southeastern Louisiana, the guy, my guy over there, Ron Roberts, he runs it, and he says it's been the most successful one he's run, the most successful blitz he has. And then um, I want to say at Washington, they had a lot of success out of it too. But it's, I think it's it's efficient, you know what I mean? It's one of those things because what I like about Spike is that it's realistic because it, it's not, you know, what's another example? You know, we're talking about like the banging drums and the, and the, and the bugles and all that. You know, like, um, training is, is belly training is um, four rushers are the inside guys. And so if we were to line up like that, that's a nine again. Mm -hmm. So these are your four rushers. Yeah. These guys have the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got all the same man rules. Mm -hmm. All that, and these ends are playing the back, but they're playing man to man. This yeah. is their piece of man. Yeah. yeah. So, is it cut left? Is it cut right? They're playing all those rules. Mm -hmm. And then the Mac, the guy to the back, he goes first. The guy away from the back goes second. And so the three over here, he's going to get vertical and contain. Right? He's going to do the same thing. Go to the G, which vertical, contain. 
you know, ear roll, face mask. The maximum will go first. The maximum will hit this A. Now, he's going to spill, spill the back. If the center goes away, it's tucked out first. The back comes, you're going to spill. And watch the fill. The left side of the center, <coughs> this side right here, you'll spill that. Because the rover, it's called it's a V technique, he's reading the center. If the center comes to him, he's going to stick his foot in the ground and he's going to come around. And that's a freeze on the center. He wants to be on the other side, um, the other side of the center. Right? So the Mac is always going to hit his A. The back is to him, he spills it. The rover is going to hit, um, he's going to run right at the center and key the center slot. If the slider, center comes to him, he's going to go away. If the center goes away, he's going to go up in the A gap. So the opposite would be. Uh, this right here, so now it's this and this. So he still goes A, he's first. And now he sees it. Goes on his ass and hits that. Mm -hmm. Now, the final piece is, it, is that we get a hug rush. So if the back stays on side, he's going to go one, two, and he hug rushes the back. Right? So even if, so the only time that he is not, so say the back flare releases, he's got it. Yeah. Right? It's, it's like, it's no different than. Back was here or here, he has him, he's in the hole. If the back where it goes something like that, he would have him, he's in the hole. That's what's happening there. Yeah. Right? So if that back were to block anywhere in this A gap, he's hug rushing and finding that scene. Okay. One, two, and, and he's in the hole. If the back were to be here with flat across, then he would take it and he's in the hole. Then if you can do it out of a double mug, it's the right way. Yeah. Can. Well, in all of those, yeah, you could do it out of bear. Yeah. You could do it out of yeah. mug. Yeah. Which we've in, in installing, and what we're going to do next Tuesday, we've got it out of. Right. We've got that thing there out right. of those three right. fronts. And, yeah. And. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was it, what is the the what's that the, the Forrest Gump movie? So like he's talking to uh, the um, Bubba Gump, right? He was on a hook. Shrimp, because I was boiled shrimp, right? it was uh, shrimp scampi, it's grilled shrimp, one of the types of shrimp. Mm -hmm. right? There's always, that's what it is. You know, it's mm -hmm. shrimp. And so it's just different ways of doing the same thing. Um, but, you know, those different ways give you different protections. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it gives you different ways of. You're getting if you're if you run bear belly train, you run mug belly train, right? You get different things. When you, you break, do, try to do the same thing when you run mug belly train, where you mm -hmm. take that guy and mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. have that you know the guy at the side of the back penetrate it, put right. the guy away. Yeah, it takes time to read it. Now I think it's good to do that, and we've done it that way. Yeah. We've also done it the other way. We just say, hey, you just go A and A. Yeah. I think a lot of it depends on how much time. You're working it, right? It's more of a yep. self scout because if you work it a bunch, it's good. Because what people will do if they're good is the center will just come straight back, won't give you a read, yeah. right? Yep. And so what do you do versus that? And we would trigger and go vertical, yep. which is hard, easy to say. It's hard to do when you're yep. saying, "Hey, you're going first, and you're you know all that shit." And so the other way of saying just go vertical, fuck it, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the other thing. And Sometimes to be honest, that comes center. into play. Right? Yeah. It depends on what yourself, how much you're working on. Yeah. Right? If you, if you want, like what we did, we we got film of us doing it. But we go a gap, and we read off the center, and we spend a lot of time on it. We're good. Yeah. yeah. But if we do it, and we're doing all this other shit, then it ain't gonna be any really good. Yeah. How much of this in game prep? You know, when you're watching the other team. How much of it is? Okay, what are they doing protection-wise, and how much of it is we've got one of our guys that can beat? No, that's all guy. of it. Yeah, it's, it's all of it. it. You're not. It's no. It's no. My guy's better than him in this. Let's try to isolate this guy. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's that's the whole. That's the okay. Whole I got you. That's yeah. The whole thing. That's okay. the whole thing. Yeah. I think the 
you know, the, um, cause a lot of times, you know, like that Mac, the first guy, the guy in the back, he was our, our B. We put our B over there, our mm -hmm. best guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We put him right in that A gap. So he would hit it and go vertical right. to get that matchup, you right. know? And then we put our F, Joe Schober, yeah. on the same side as the B. Right. So those were our two best guys. The guy that's hitting it and then the hug rush. Okay. And the other guys with the droppers, you okay. know what I mean? Or the, the reader and the dropper, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's that's totally all of it. And if, you know, because I think, like, protections are protections, right? So they'll be slide, they'll be big on big, they'll be basic, they'll be turn. But everyone's protection is a little bit different. You know what I mean? So I'd say, well, there's some slide teams to where, like, when we were at Wisconsin, like, for spur spring, we did a fair amount of um, inside pressures in the belly with one, spike was the other. And so that center, when they when it was zoned, stayed square. The center did not turn. Mm -hmm. So like, the back was over here. The center was like this. He'd be this one. It was slide. Yeah. It was slide. Um, typically, you say that'd be basic, but they, they slid it. That back was dual. And so what would end up happening, though, because we blocked it like that, it was slide pro. Uh, it was harder to get inside stuff. But what you could do is bring them like far, you know what I mean? Yeah. To the zone side. But it wasn't really zone, it was more of a man zone, you yeah. know what I mean? And that tackle couldn't come out and get the nickel, you know what I mean? So the end would be on a track and he would come inside. And since the guard was on the last scrimmage, the tackle couldn't come out to get it. Otherwise, who had this the track? The nickel was kind of clean, continuing. Now, there's other teams, when they slide, the center is doing this, and the guard is overset, and the tackle is overset, and obviously the green grass is inside. So, so that's all the, you know what I mean? That's all the, the bellies and the spikes and all yeah. that. Yeah. And so, you know, the slides are different, so it's really, I don't know, you try to, I mean, you just try to look at it like this, protections, right? So you try to look at it by formation, Right, back right. set and try to um, narrow it down. Like I enjoy doing that mm -hmm. and seeing that. But I mean, you know, I don't know. I think uh, everyone's protections are a little bit different. So it's kind of, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's something that might, once you kind of look at it and you have it organized, that's always the trick, is to have it organized. Yeah. I think at that point, my six year old boy could see it. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of over there. <laughs> Look at that. That's weird. <laughs> there's not a lot of space over there, but there's a lot of space right there, Dad. Yeah. That's where we're going to try to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you got to organize it that way. Yep. And so I've never organized protections like that. I know sometimes it's like numbers and stuff. Oh, I already <laughs> use the terms, the names. Um, so I don't know. You're not the, but I, I enjoy doing it myself, though. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so you, you're able to, when you do it by formation too, what you can pick up is like the Y off, is that when they go basic, you know what I mean? Right. Is that when yeah. they, he's got the S, the H has got the W, and the Max, and the center's got the Mac, you know what I mean, when they're separate like that, on mm -hmm. different sides. Or the Y is off and the back's offset to the Y. Now that's what we call it, YT protect. Mm -hmm. Both of them are blocking. Right. That's what one of you guys used to do, yep. right? Yep. And the full mm -hmm. turn the other way. Yep. So you get to see that, right? Or, you know, you get to see when do they cross pro? Is it two by two when they cross pro, which a lot of people do, right? right? Um, a lot of three by ones. How much is the back, the center to the to the mac, and the back's always the boundary, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So by formation, I think it kind of helps. You know. Okay. How fluid were your guys at backer? You know, if we're to say would. Schobert know F and B? Mm -hmm. Would he know? Would he also Eventually. know the M? No. No. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of on the ball, well, off the ball. Well, yeah. Well, bit. I guess no, but they would. We we had to. He would know F and B because they were in, they they were in the same room. You know. Right. But then the the um, the M he would learn per the particular. You know. So like we would say, what would, what would we say? I think we said like flip. So we said like uh, flip would be outside guys were inside, inside were outside. 
Okay. So we flip them. Okay. Yeah. So that uh, I, that's always the hard part, I think, is that if you're outside guys, are generally your best pass rushers. You won. No, I'm good. But the outside. but the um, it's so easier. It's so much easier to bring inside rushers yep. than outside. Yep. You know what I mean? Because yep. it's it's a quicker mm -hmm. it's a quicker uh, path to the quarterback. It's less it's less uh, you if you rush outside. Yeah, man, you got like there's alarm systems and shit. Right. And there's like fucking automatic lights. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's all of that, right? When you rush inside, you're like you're rushing through the back door or you're rushing through the window that right. they didn't close. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. That's really the truth. You know, and you know, in the zone game, you rush outside. I mean, you got to creep. You got to show that there's all that space. Someone's got to cover down. You rush inside. You already got some width. It's easier just to kind of show more out. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. And so, athletically, the challenge is it's always better to to rush outside. Right. Schematically, it's always better to rush inside. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a challenge. But, if, you know, part of the answer is just to flip them, you know what I mean, to move them. Right. They have to play off off each other a little bit. But then, you know, um, I think once you get, once you have a, a base, you can do that. Right. Yeah. And should be able, we only have one room, so they should be able to pick it out. I've got some pretty smart kids. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Then, uh, Ryan. Ryan, you did lack this past year. I should have done more. Now, the problem that I did with Ryan was that I was an automatic flip, and we shouldn't have done it. Uh, belly versus empty is shove, right? So it'd be the same thing. So it'd be the exact same. So the problem that we had, is I'll show you, we did it this way. So this was a great one, but that wasn't like a bunch of stuff we did. There was a few things we did out of that look, and that look only lasted so long. I mean, and so you could very easily just do it um, this way, and then walk this guy out and do it like that, right? Which is how we're going to do it now. So like say it was that and that. All of this is all still the same. And so you go Ryan, so it's all, um, it's Ryan though is to the right back, yeah, guys. And it's a hitch, man. So wherever the right back is. Yeah. All right. And so this language isn't really river lake, it's Ryan left, Ryan right. That's how we set it. And so he's gonna go vertical, you're gonna cop out from the three. Use your whole place. So as the rover rushes off the edge, this um, uh, this end over here, he's a five, and he reads um, the, uh, the guard. And so he's going to slant in like this, but he reads what this guy does. And so if he blocks down, he's right off his ass. If he fans, he goes again and goes in. He hug rushes on the back. He hug rushes this way. And so what was great about that was, like say if we got like turn protect or slide protection, we'll say the back is here, let's say this guy's going to release, right? And so we're going to go here, 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 and here. If we got something like that, then you can see it. So that was good. Now this was still scat control. This was all the, this was all the, uh, the elements of uh, 
Spike and all that. It's a new guy now doing it. But that'd be like Spike. For, right. You know, for, for that uh, technique, the rover's not doing it. So if we got, um, so Ryan and um, Belly were the two calls that we liked versus cross pro teams. So cross pro would be this. Ryan and Belly like the cross mm -hmm. Spike was good, but Ryan and Belly were the best ones. And so if we got something like that, and he's pushing up here and then So this guy was able to do was able to do some damage in that area. So that was Ryan. So that was where the back was. Now we called it Ryan one hole because um, one, the only reason for the one hole was that it played versus empty. Because we were able to get, uh, we weren't concerned about the quarterback draw, the quarterback run. And so we would go Ryan left, Ryan right to the two receiver side, like we did in show to the two receiver side. Uh, but it played. So to the two receiver side, we go Ryan left or Ryan right. would play it out. Now the Mac would have the back. So the Mac would go cover. The rover still rushed. And then we still had a whole play. So Ryan was I think I think we had like twelve Ryans this past year. And I think we won a ten of them. So it was pretty high. We should have called them more. <laughs> now the last two the last two that uh, the the two that we didn't were ones that we were ID. The main both ends are on the same side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, but if you did it just like that, you wouldn't be ID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, would you set the? F I mean, s three technique by your normal rules then? No. Yeah. So this was this one was different in that respect. You're gonna set so the three away from the back. Mm -hmm. So we didn't say river or lake in this. We said Ryan left, Ryan right. And so that just said it. Now, we've done that, I mean, um, you could, I guess, you could say, you could just in, in, in our way of thinking, I guess, you, this is the only one that it would be, hey, it's river, 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 Ryan left, Ryan left, you know what I mean? So for that matter, we just tied it in to right and left. Gotcha. So right and left, you, the end knew. We only had two ends. One of them knew I was three technique away. And we just built it in. Or yeah. right and left on the G2. So we didn't, we didn't want to have to have it to where we said, you know, um, river, 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 right and left. Yeah. Gotcha. Which I guess you could. You could say that. But mm -hmm. this would yeah. have been the only time that we we would be saying something like that. Yeah. But yeah, that was it. And so, um, you know, the the whole thing there too would be the max ability, the hub rush, because he's really, the, he's the element. Right. Much like in belly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's the guy that overloads it. Where, where this one is away from the back, strength-wise, so if the back was at home, would you then go away from the tight end, whereas Previous your default was to go back to wherever the tight end was. Back uh, no, we still went to the tight end. You would still go to the tight end. Okay. <clears throat> if we wanted to like hide the shades, you know what you could do is deal it. You know, mm -hmm. you could yeah. deal yeah. it yeah. Yeah. and then stem like. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. You run into issues at all with the with the F and B, and I'm sorry, linebacker guy, just I keep harping on this stuff. This, um, formation into the boundary, does uh -huh. that mess with you at all? And formation into the boundary, say you're tight four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does your F now become your B because his drops are? No, I mean the, the only alignment time, wise, we're staying the same. Yeah. What I like about tight four is that it's pretty. Um, um, there, there's work. It's so balanced, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, 
let's say uh, the field's this way. And the field's this way. Just um, still be. I mean, he's playing um, nail, uh, nail hook that he normally would play. You know I mean? Or so I say, if it was something like this, and it would look like that. And then your F is playing a nail hook. The Mac would, the Mac would be here for the ski tackle. So this is a gold, right? And this was a red hand. He's out of looks. He's on two. So here's your answer. He's on three, he's on two. And then if we're this way. Gold. Okay. So especially when it was gold and it was to the bottom like this with this guy, right? He was straight back saying, hey, he has to come in peace. Yeah, is anyway. You don't work the quarter track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was always the quarter track. But yeah, so I mean, the, you know, he's still in that apex, mm -hmm. which he's going to play. Now, if it's, if it's peso like this, he's going to play that a, a lot because he's, to the field, he's the outside backer, you know, mm -hmm. right? to the field. Right. Yeah. So he gets a fair amount of that. Mm -hmm. So if it's in the boundary, um, there's the same as there. Now, if it's born base and we're playing F and B. Um, if it's into the boundary, the, the bench is playing nail hook, which is going to be, um, I don't know how dissimilar that is from what you would normally get, like two by two would be playing right. nail hook. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. So it would be concepts, the only thing that would, carry over. Yeah, the only thing that would be different for him would be if it was trips into the boundary. He'd be in a screw, which he's not very often. Right. He wouldn't be in a screw or bus. When we get to tomorrow, I'll ask you a few of your dub trips things. If oh, you yeah. know what you do with some of that. We won't fool with that right. tonight, but that's no, so good. Good, good, good. Cool. That gets up. Uh, awesome. Yeah, we can. We can go all night, but I'd rather give you a break right now, and then we can start up. No, that's well, great, we man. We got through is this a the, lot right there. Yeah, is this stuff you guys want, want to do? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now that you're out of the conference, this is stuff we'd like to run. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen the Big Ten Network since, like, man. <laughs> After a while, they 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 they, uh, they changed me. I, I was watching like Big Ten Network hockey. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, in California. Yep. Man, I was full <laughs> convert for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's part of the world. Both the women won tonight. They Did scored, they beat just scored a goal with like two seconds left. To win. No way. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's, a, that's an upset for them. So they're playing a national championship? I believe so. Yeah, then that way, the week probably just truthfully start in the morning on the yeah. kicks and those things. Yeah. And yeah. And as well as film, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, yep, we'll get through. And the other thing, too, would be want to go back to some of the other stuff and just talk about hey, you guys had like runs. Exactly. You could give me the runs and then we can talk about the fits. Yes. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We could keep you here for like a month to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, that, no that, that'll be. Couldn't pay you nearly as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> But um, the uh, <coughs> no, that worked good. That'll work good. Stop this thing here for now. Get you. Get you. <coughs> so, like, I say we have one.
thing that we would do in cases would be to load. And so load would be we'd load the front one way or the other. Okay, and so like if we did spike. So if we just said spike and we were to line up like that. Yeah. Then if we were to load it. spike. So this is a five, this is a zero, this is a five, that's a nine. And then you just run a spike off of that. So yeah, we have the back, there's a hole. Do this. So this this would look like NCAA bricks. Yeah. Right? Now, a lot of times, we would get people... You ran that a lot against us. Mm -hmm. We would get people that would see this as, like, um, sometimes you get people to see it as mug, so you get these guys, or bears, you get them walked up, and you get yeah. them beat up, you kind of hold this, yeah. and then get out. And then, so, when all of this came, you know, he's hug rushing. Yeah. Right? And he's got this guy control. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be low. And so, it's... There's advantages, so I mean, again, the thing is, the advantage is to odd, you know what I mean? Yeah, odd look. Mm -hmm. I think you do that when you have advantages schematically that they give you in the front, right? Yeah. Now, I think the other thing, too, that we did not do, that we probably should have, we're, we're going to do it now, uh, or at, um, you know, LSU, is bring the Mac, just twit, uh, a little bit. Because, you know, if the team were big on big protector, so let's say, where are we at? We're right here. And so let's say they do, they do do this. And there's still an element of these guys passing this stuff off, right? Um, and so, and if it is merit, when we load it, On big team, yeah. I think there's merit to that. I mean, having this guy still hug rush, yeah, right. Because I mean, now what you get is you yeah, right. As opposed to letting them pass that off. Now, the other thing with I should have brought it up the spike. What are our terms? We get train and run. What do you tell the, the zero when you run that out of load? Because he ends up being your entertain guy. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what do you, so what kind of path is he going on? Right. So it depends if it's train and rocket. So if it's train, we're saying it's run. And so he's on a slant right now. And he's going to uh, slant to the rib cage of the guard. Because okay. it's 45 degree angle. So you're basically what you're doing is you're saying, hey, I'm going to get to the A, and then it's like escape from Saigon to contain through the B. That's yep. what it basically And in a general picture, that's a little bit of what it is. But he's going to slant to the rib cage of the guard in the A gap. And then uh, if it's run, right, he's an A gap player. The end over here is a C gap player. The rover is a B gap player. Right. Yep. That's run. If it's pass, it is a 45 degree little step, step because it's train. You know, it's a run. Yep. You expect him to run. Right? And so then what he's going to do is, once he sees that it's pass, right, he's going to, he's going to, uh, he took his reach equals, or his push equals step, and then he's going to take his gather, his second step. And at that point, he's entertained the guard, and now he's going to work to contain through the beat. Yep. So he's going to work to the guard, gather with his second step, and then work to contain through that beat. Now, we we'll always try to tell him, push through that beat if you can. There are times where tackles, you know, after a while with us, <coughs> and the, someone will drop off and they'll come right back. But there yeah. are times where guys will, will drop off and they're still kind of doing this to nothing. <laughs> so 
still contained through the B. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but it is it is push equals step. Right? So push off the right foot, step with the left foot, right? Work to the ribcage of the garment. And so then it's going to be a dip and rip with your right with your right uh, foot and your right and your right uh, arm. Get that foot in the ground. At that point, runner pass. And this is pass. Right now, you're going to continue to work through the guard, and you end up becoming like a three technique, right? Yep. On the way, right? And then if you're a three, and there's there's grass in that B gap, meaning that you got an ear hole of a tackle, hit it, right? If there's no grass, which is generally the case, then you work on out. But it is like, what is you know the movie Saving Private Ryan? And so there's storm at the beach, right? At the very beginning of the movie. What is that like a like a it's not like a drawbridge, but well, it's not a bridge. But what is it? They're in those uh, when they those lower boats. Like, when they lower it again. Yeah, and the thing, and it kind of comes yep. down like that. Yep. Right, and it's just all the dudes in front, right, just getting, yeah, uh, getting shot to pieces. You know, and it's the guys in back that can have, can get out, right? And yep. They were able to. This is in the movie. Yo, yeah. right? They get to the beach and all that. Yep. That's what this guy is. He's the guy in front when uh, when the the, the, the uh, thing comes down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he wants to attract this, this, and that. Yeah. So that we can get this over here. Right. Um, okay. Uh, it's a rocket. Yeah, so then if it's rocket, see now it's pass. So now we push vertical. So we don't want to be, we don't want to be flat if it's run or if it's pass. So if it's rocket, On all the film, we'll be able to see all this. I say, if this was run, this was trained here, so he's this way, right? So now I'm here, and I'm getting to that. Yep. But if it's pass, if he's up here, I don't want to do that, because now they just, they're doing this to me, and they're just, they're looking at me, yeah. you know what I mean? So now what I want to do is I want to push up this way, and then work. You see okay. So I'm up the field, then I go, I get to the toes of the guy, mm -hmm. and then I work out. And that's the same. With He'll all be these. getting to the toes of the guard. Yeah. So, well, yeah. We would still, he'd still push up. And then it's. Okay. So I'm here to here to here. Okay. And so that initially, when the pass is set, he's going to take one, two, and he's going to work to entertain the guard, and then he's out. And so there's not a slant, there's more of a get off. But all of it's the same. Like if it was passed, this guy's doing this. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yes. And they're all working up. He's holding it and going. When it's, when it's passed, because we want to buy him there. We're not buying him there anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, if the. So you'll put that at the beginning of the call, then? No, no, they'll they'll uh, they'll call it. Yeah, so there'll be a um, the the D line will have. Um, I mean, if we were to call it in third down, then it would be a rocket. But there's sometimes second down, whatever else, where they're deciphering that. Okay, so that's in all of the calls. That's in everything right there. So like the train rockets. So like say if we have pace so of the man, players. Correct. That's yeah. on the players. It's on the like players. Birds, pigs. Right. So if we're in like in Peso Man right now, and we had train, we're playing a six technique. If it was Peso Man and we had Rocket, he's playing a nine technique. Mm -hmm. So that's with everything. Yeah. And so just in all the movement, then I'll up the field first, get on the toes, and then go. Um, so, you know, that. Um, that has to be done in practice. Yeah. That has to be a look that the offense gives, whatever the look is. Yeah. It's a staggered of the feet of the tackle. It's um, uh, two point, three point stances. It's off the ball. It's whatever it is, you know. Yeah. And so, anyway, we're talking about loads. That means load. And then there's different things for load too. That's one of them. You know what I didn't put here was Flacco. Right. So that's my fault. So this is low. Flacco four. So we did this.
this in uh, like the high red zone. This way, and all I'm gonna do is play quarters. It's an idea of trying to make it look at more, more than something than what it really is. And so the, the Mac here would get on the line and go vertical. The B would come under, and then this would be a, uh, a two-phase. It's working through that guard, and then you know this guy's working this way. But this is he's the same. This is that low again, or this is that spike. He's doing the same yeah. thing. So if there were pass, it don't work up. Right. He's on two. Right, he's on three, he's on two. So we try to put the nickel high. All this is lipstick on pit, yeah. right? And so we're trying to make it show like it's a three shell rotation. And we're yeah. playing, we're playing quarters, right? And so if it was a two man surface, we call this scissors. We got the scissors path. Okay. If it was a three man rotation or a three, uh, three man surface, This was also like a two minute, uh, two minute, uh, two minute deal, and so I'll keep doing that, and then go this. We go right on the line and work that track. Mm -hmm. Look like that, and so that was the base way we played it. The Mac was the track player. Track would be off the tackle. The B is the track player here, off the tackle. And the Mac is contained in scissors, and they just flip it into this three man surface. So the roller was always on three, the F was always on two, and the nickel was always on two. Right? So as far as the rushers, the only thing we really changed was the, the Mac and the roller. You know, the roller's yeah. now on three. But the Flacco, that's always from the field. And then this play, so if it was bunch, it played. If it was empty, it played. So it was a little simple. And when we played that in the high red, and then we played that in two minute. And we, there's times third down, I think we called it last year third down. We played it, played this versus um, Mary. Yeah. So that's Flacco. Okay. <coughs> so that's out of the low front. Um, now, the other things that, let me, let me just finish with load, I guess. When you in load, what you could do, and this is, this is always on me because I didn't do it. The, so the thing about load is, say you've got all this, which is part of it, and I just didn't, it's one of those things where you have to do it and I didn't do it, right? So like say this was uh, the F. Wall and said, Well, hey, to this side, this is when all the shit is, wherever those guys are. Right? Yeah. That's where it's coming. So then that's where you run your stunts. Right? Yeah. And that's the oh, that's the change up to it. Okay. That's, that's how we did it. You know what I mean? And so, you know, he's here and he runs like a natural, right? Okay. So it's that now. And so we would just play peso man and go load, load man. Right? But then that was the play. And we'd show the numbers here. And then get Schobert. The idea was get Schobert a one on one. Yeah. We're, we're anticipating you know, this. So we wanted to do that. Yeah. So once you've got load, because you only have having load flacco, then you got load spike. Right? Now load now where are you loading? Load flacco, <coughs> flacco to the field. Yeah. Load spike, where are you loading? To the river lake hole. Yeah. You see what I mean? So that the F, F and B are field boundaries, so they're double taut. So they're not 
It's not, um, there's some learning that goes on with them, right? So it's not like the F is always going one way and the B is always going the other. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. <coughs> um, but then, what else would you have? You have a load, you could go load um, Breeze to Packer, which Breeze would be in the boundary. So now we're loading in the boundary. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you have all those things. But in all of it, the pressure's coming from here. That's where load one helps you, or load man, rather. Yeah. Because now we, we can twist, and that can be the, like I said, we had this and I never ran it. So it probably would have been good to do it. But there was a fair amount of load that we did. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Because that was something going through. <coughs> um, yeah, we saw a lot of that. All right, then, you know, in talking about belly, so, we talked about this song yesterday, so if we were to be, I'm going to you this way, okay, so if we were to line up like that, so, and so we could go belly, so we could go mug, right, and then, So those were, you know, the other thing too, uh, oh, so let's just say, let's just erase that. And this could be man. So we could just play man out of this. Yeah. Okay, so man. And then if you want a hug rush here, and then if we're concerned about the guy getting out, you link it. You know, you do the whole thing. Okay. Right? So if you yeah. worry about that, then you link it. And then um, over here, Bear, we do the same thing. Now, what we did here was he had the back and he was the whole player. You could do it the other way, to be honest. Right? It depends on how much you want to link. If you put the yeah. guy on the ball and you say he's got the back, then you probably need to link it. You know what I mean? And then you got your whole player right there, which is Merrick. I mean, at that point, you're running a three-man twist. It's really what you're doing. These are all passing scenarios, right? So like, if he did it where he was here, and then he just did this, he's here, and he, if he blocks, right? And he yep. rushes. That's what you get, right? Yeah. He knows he's contained because it's like left, and there's your whole thing. Correct. It looks like you're doing more than what you're doing. You're just hug rush in the back. Yeah. But anyways, mug and bear, we play man out of, right? And then mug and bear, we run belly, belly train out of, right? So now, so when you think of it in terms of link, all you're doing is link in the back, right? But you're adding, yeah. you bring in, you bring in, um, you bring in another guy off the ball. So if it was something like this, this was what we wanted to do. We wanted to try to ricochet and do all that, and him read this and come around. Yeah, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, and to be honest, you know, the goal of us was to do that, and we didn't spend enough time to do it, to do it correctly. Um, well, so, and, and then the thing is, if they bring the back across, in, in some sense, because that yeah, guy's anticipating right. a read, you right, know, yeah, get the get off that he needs. Right, you know, right. Yeah, because you. That's all part of it. We have to. Re we have. To, if we're both in there, you know, and I'm taking yeah. off, and he's here. I'm this way, yeah. right? If I'm taking off and he's here, sticking my foot in the ground. That's what. That was it. We're yeah. reading it. We're trying to get, have our cake and eat it too. And there's people that do that. And we did it some. We have. There's several of us doing it. But the better way, I think, at the end was for us just to go vertical. Yeah. When we're up, mm -hmm. so the the mug belly train became um, can be different than the belly train off the ball. Right. Where you're you're having a B technique. It can be just vertical. Which I think some of the film you know, you'll see that with what we did. Um, then if we go bear, bear uh, who would we we'd always do this versus someone. You got uh, Rutgers, I think. Rutgers would do it like you did a lot of bear to Maryland, and I know you did. Uh, you did a lot of mug against Rutgers. Right. Um, so the, the idea would be, we would try to go um, away. So he would hit it. We wanted that. There's some thoughts with that. So do you want to go away from the back? Yep. You know, with him, 
and so he the Mac goes two and he goes away try to get that, that H to have to come across the formation which I think there's some there's some merit to doing that but we wanted the hug rush so this guy to get to him as immediate as possible straight okay. we wanted to be right down the sideline of the cube so that we could get that you know, that's what we want so it's like one two right and then the hug rush it and how is he using the hole uh, I, I love and, that. and then so the thing would be all of these would be the same because like I say if he was if he was out and he would go get him and the motion went that way so then this would show just shove it shove left So that's that's man, right? And we got Ryan. We didn't do much with Ryan. Ryan kind of stayed with the, the G being to it, to yeah. the back. Ryan for running back. Yeah. And then um, now at the back flip, we um, as a general rule, we didn't we didn't do anything about it. I guess you could, but we didn't do anything. So like say say you had Ryan one hole and it's Ryan left. Back flip to the right. We didn't. We didn't try to flip it. We just played it. If it was uh, spike one rat, the river lake tight ends not attached. It's lake to the back. And the back flip. We just played it. Mm -hmm. If it was uh, belly train and the back flip, we just played it. And so, you know, Ryan and belly, you still have the ability of the read guy in in and Ryan and the line linebacker and belly to read it. You're still good. And then spike. You know, you're gonna get the zones so will come underneath the guy. You yeah. know, with the Mac, you're on three technique, you have a two way go. Yeah. We just played it thought it was simpler, you know, just to, to do it that way. And so, um, I imagine you could change it, but we just kept it the same. Uh, just because it was simpler, I guess. Okay, then Favre and Bledsoe, and then uh, Brady <coughs> or our three. versus uh, the constraint teams, the teams that are having a run, and then a run on the inside and a pass on the outside. I call them constraint because they constraint your numbers in the box. And then um, I like my third and three to five, that down and distance, three deep, because it gives you man at the splits, a lot of play man, and then yeah. it gives you zone when they're trying to rub you. surface changers, you know, and so there's some movement and all that. So the, let's see, if we're, let's say, let's just talk about the coverage, I guess, for the coverage. So, This is how I, this, and I apologize for this, this is kind of how I do it with uh, the uh, players at uh, LSU. Do it like this. Right, and then we have got this and this. And so from, from line scrimmage to about five yards, we want to have some depth. And so we, you know, we use that, we use that term. And then after that, when we say 3D, so it's going to be four under, Third, right? There's a third, and there's a third. Now, if the splits are wide, right, then those thirds are going to transition into man, right? So this would be a man yeah. on one, right? And this would be a true middle of the field player if it's two by two. And this would be a man on one, right? And so the splits are tight. We're thinking the splits are constricted to expand, so we play zone. If the splits are wide, thinking of seams and vertical routes and so we man. So those thirds can get big or get tight, yeah. how we say it. Yeah. Right, then over here we've got uh, curl, flat, and then over here we have uh, hook, flat, hook, flat, and then a curl, flat. Okay, and 
so the language we have is we would say zone it. We would say gone. Uh, we would say tree coal. And then we have a one or two coal. Okay. If if the splits of that, so the, the hook flat defenders are saying that the crow flat defender is planning a gone on two. Crow flat planning a gone on two. Crow flat planning a gone on two. And so that takes the hook flat defenders uh, that that allows the inside linebackers to play hook flat. Mm -hmm. And so the gone means the outside backer or the, the nickel has the safety has two up and out. Mm -hmm. So two run out, run a wheel, man to man, two would run up the field past the linebackers, man to man, two's up up the field past the linebackers, run the dig. Two's up the field and diagonal past the linebackers on an over route, man to man. Two runs seven cut, man to man. Um, two are to run inside right now, inside the linebackers, in and in and in. And, and we'd be cold flat defenders. That language would have to work its way across because of the two hook flat defenders, we don't want the hook flat defender to the side of the in and in. Um, take that. We want the hook flat player away. Now, a lot of it's dependent upon the back. Now, that's where like, Wisconsin will make you work, you know, because yeah. they'll clear the back two by two. They'll clear the back to the left and follow with the, the slot from the right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you're thinking, you know, all this so it's off the back. The hook flat guy. So the back went yeah, you no lateral strain. quick. Mm -hmm. Your your other hook flat's got to be able to almost yeah. be a wall guy. And right. Carry that, guy. And that's where with the hook flat defenders, it's always important when their eyes are inside, runner pass, and they see the back. If the back is any any way out fast either way, right, we push through, but then the other hook flat works over the ball. Yeah. Just that that <coughs> those steps working over the ball puts you in position. I drew that follow route. Same right. route for a guy from the Vikings the other day took a picture of it, sent it to him. I said, What are you telling this guy? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So yeah, so when you're drained, and that's all the stuff that Paul does. All of his, yep. all of his routes, right, are flood routes, right? They're all uh, four to a side, three to a side, and so the footwork, or the eyes of the hook flat defenders, and the footwork. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, like say it's if it were to be something like this, if this were to get out, right? If say that this is happening, that hook flat staying matched up. Or that crow flat stain match up the hook flat's gotta push through mm -hmm. if we were to get something like that. So once this other this other hook flat sees that, he pushes here. Yep. That puts him that gives him a chance to play that. Yeah. Yeah. Because then this guy's saying in and in, he's out. Yep. Right. Um the 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 first way we start teaching it is um uh four over three. And so we have the crow flats either side, the two hook flats versus these three guys. Mm -hmm. And we just start working just the combinations with the QB, you know? Yeah. And so just the verticals, right? So we'll get verticals, seven cuts. And then we'll get this guy checking out, bursting one way or the other. So that would be one way, right? And then we'll get for these vertical, he blocks. So then, you know, I, you go curl flat, okay? This is, um, once this happens, this in and in, this guy becomes now a hook curl. So now he takes his, you want him to zone off, yeah. right? And now this goes to the other hook flat defender. Then in and in goes all the way across and matches it. Okay, and so now we're zoning off of this. Um, if, uh, uh, the, the other thought would be, like say, like a mesh. What kind of depth are you telling the backers at, or is it down and distance related? It's ten yards. Ten yards. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then let's say if we were to get something like uh, um, this, like a mesh, yeah. I know that's in and in both ways. Yeah. Stack, stack. Yeah. And then the final one. That we're just talking about is the drains. And so that's 
say we get something like that, and that, and that, and that. Right? Like that's Paul Craig's story. Right? That's, those are the hardest ones. Yeah. And so this would be the max here, and we're gone, push through, and then that match you got to And it's, again, when, the, when you get a quick release, you work to the middle of the field, you work over the ball. It's like a cut, you're cutting it. Yeah. It's basically what you're doing. Okay. Uh, zone in. So if the if the number one receiver uh, to the field was on or inside the numbers, or inside the hash to the field, rather, the number one receiver on or inside the hash to the field. So both one and two, all the receivers, right? On or inside the hash yeah. to the field, we would zone that as a general rule. And so zone would mean if the curl flat defender is a curl flat defender and the corner is a true third, yeah. right? And then the hook curl defender is a hook curl defender. And so we're taking, <coughs> we would call those uh, angle pedals. We would angle pedal out with the curl flat angle pedal out with the hook curl. Okay. And so we didn't, I mean, you, I imagine you could do it however you want to do it. We, we didn't open, you know, cross over and turn. Yeah. It was just kind of an angle pedal out. But that's how those guys played. And it was a zone it. And so zone it and three call are similar in that the corner has a third. Yeah. But the difference is the zone it was used when the splits are reduced. Yeah. When in some form or fashion, all the guys are inside. Mm -hmm. They're constricted. Yeah. And so the underneath droppers can take you know, traditional cover three drops, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the corners of the divider, third player, you see him two to one and all that. Yeah. That five one bottom, those are your dividers. Yeah. You know? um, the three call would take place if three the three call is like um, so it'd be this right here three 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 that that's like a nine one one call that is a linebacker who's crow flat over skill right and it's a normal split so there's a normal split there number two and we've got a linebacker on skill so like say we're in field slam so it's field defense now and they put pass strength into the boundary. And there's a uh, there's a slot into the boundary. <coughs> and the F's in, in there. We can't we're not gonna play a gone with him. Yeah. And then we don't really want to say zone it, because zone it means um, I mean I guess you language is you know, there's yeah. a whole bunch of thoughts on language and how that applies and how how direct the correlation is and all that. Because I've been around people where it's you know, but anyway, so zone it means a kind of angle pedal. Yeah. But you don't want to angle pedal when there's a skill slot in the space. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then all of a sudden the seam's an issue. And so we say three call. And so three means the corner's on a true third, mm -hmm. but that outside backer is pat your feet and reroute. So he's going to make sure he reroutes number two out. And we're basically going to give up the out by one or the sit down by one and yeah. tackle him. But we're trading that for the seam of two. Yeah. The hook flat, the hook curl defender is still expanding angle pedal on a three call. He wants to get the seam late, you know, be in the window of the seam late. But the inside, the outside backer is patch your feet, patch your feet, reroute. Mm -hmm. He wants to reroute out. In the zone it, in the three call, could be independent sides. Correct. Yeah, that's whatever you see. Yeah. You could be obviously you could be three call to the boundary mm -hmm. and be gone to the field. Mm -hmm. that, that's a common mm -hmm. thing because if you got a two by two, that's, that's how right. that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So if, if it was some say if it was like this, um, that'd be a zone. Right. Yeah. And so then this curl flat over here. 
this this hook this hook curl and angle pedal in the corner over here. Just like that. Do you uh, if that would be a tight end flex in the perimeter and the boundary, would you typically go on it with the backer? Be a gone. Yeah. Even if it was a running back, as a rule, camp rule, we'd say play gone. Now if it was a you know, it depends what that running back is, is the big answer to who that running back is. You know. But as a general rule, we were gone and running back. Yes. How's it going? Good, how you doing? Um, so um, yeah, so like if it was a three call. So yeah, I gotta talk to you guys also about all the P the you know, so like Panther, all that. So you know, the, this was always the teaching. Is this? I don't know. Once all this is taught, and then the thing is, hey, this team's a formation and sideline team, right? They're gonna put. They're gonna uh, because they know. Well, it's like you know, it's like anything, I guess, right? So we're at LSU. We put in field slant. Tuesday, this last Tuesday, and so you know we give like this we give the offense the, the thing, and so um, this is, I love this though because it's, it's still to me it's still it's still like Calu and Division three it's still f just football man so you love that part of it <laughs> you just wish you had the vets you know what I mean you weren't teaching you guys when all yeah, this is going down but so we give them and it says field slant on there. And up till that day, there was no formation in the sideline. But you better believe it. Tuesday practice, formation in the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. There's skill in the sideline now. All of a sudden, we're seeing two back slots. We're seeing tight to the nub to the field. Yep. Twins in the boundary. And so it's just, that's going to happen, right? It's yeah. going to happen. And so what Puma 3 is field slam. Uh, how do you spell field? Field slam. To passing strength, and Panther three is far, which we're not having even talked about. To passing strength. Okay, you know, that was the way we did it. Now, you know what you could do is you could just say, "Hey, passing strength Bledsoe, you should passing strength far." You could do all of those off of just passing strength, right? Yeah. And we just use P terms, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. <coughs> so. Like, uh, but you know the adjustments would still play out. Like there's a clip, I think we got it versus in the USC game. That we played Panther three in that game, right? And they put pass. So like sometimes you would always look field sideline cut up. And what are they putting people in the boundary for? What are they doing it for? Yeah. Are they doing it to throw back into the to the field? So like Wisconsin, what like Andy Ludwig used to do, mm -hmm. the guy who was there for two years for. He put it in the boundary to run like a w split boot or a way boot, you know, to put wing, like tray wing, you yep. know, the boundary. And the wing would kind of come back to the field and the Y would run the, yep. the, the crosser and all that and the, the Z's run the post and all this shit. So they, he put all the people into the boundary so they come back to the field. So if that was the case, then we wouldn't do any of that. we just play it, right? Because yep. it's coming back to the field anyways. But if people are putting people into the boundary to run it and to throw it in the boundary, yeah, then we do that. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that they we played like um, you know there's adjustments that kind of go on. So I guess what I'm trying to say is once you've taught, and the reason why I think that was always second to this is because at least for us that once we taught those adjustments, those adjustments played out. You know. Here we're getting lined up to the field. There we're getting lined up to the, to the passer strength. But yeah. if they put formation to pass strength and then motion back to the field, and we're in Puma, it plays out just as if they put formation to the field and motion to the boundary. Yeah. You know, it's not, and nothing changes that way. It's just where we're setting. You know what I mean? And so the rules still play. We're just trying to hedge our bets by where we're putting the, the, the people in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Forget what I was saying. So the, 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 the three call, and so if we were to get this, so if there was a fair amount of that, that 
that's when you would want to say Puma, Panther, come, yeah. come from the bottom. Yeah. Right? Um, let's just say, let's say we're not, though. Right, so if we're in Puma, this would be Puma left. But let's say we're not, and let's say, you know, um, the, the nickel's rushing like that. We got our F over here. And so, uh, let's see. We got the B, all this, so we're slanting like that. Over, back, right? Safety's in a dawn. So that's not a great matchup, but let's say that's what we got. Then over here, so this is um, a big split, so this is a three call. Yeah. Okay, so this corner is going to be on the third. So he's got his midpoint of uh, the bottom of the numbers, and then, or um, yeah, the bottom of the numbers, and we'll say he's going to reroute here, make sure that he reroutes out. This is still going to be an angle pedal here, right? Mm -hmm. And so he reroutes out. And inevitably, what you're going to get is something like this. Yeah, you got to tackle that, tackle that. Basically, what it is. Three call from the linebacker? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now he and the corner have to be on the same page with us. Yeah, we're three, three, three. And so all that is the, the language of, so like, you go back to type four, and it's like, this would be um, nail right here. This was nail, right? This was hammer. This was red hammer. And so all those guys, the outside backer, corner, the safety are all doing this, right? So they're all on the same page, yeah. right? Or if we're saying cut, Right? If it's man, we're going cut, right? Cut. So they're all the corners going cut. So we're seeing and we're talking, right? And then this would be the same thing. It'd be three, three, three. And then you'll see a three in the corner walks off. But yeah, they have to be. You know, the sign, the sign language is important. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And then one and two. One and two is um, we're going to play gone on either the guy on the ball, which is one with the nickel, or we're going to play gone with the guy off the ball, which is two by the nickel. So I, people do this all they call it top hat, I think, and band yeah. and all that. That's all one and two is. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so we'll play that. So like a general rule would be in 3D, if it was like a snug alignment, so snug is two guys tight together, two the formation, <laughs> Right, one or two, two formation type. We would call, we would play that in a zone. Right, if it was stacks, which is our language for one and two uh, type, uh, away from, away from the formation, then we'll use one and two. Okay, you know what I mean? As a as a rule. So I, I guess I should just draw that. Now, that depends. That's like a camp rule, I guess. But that depends on what they're doing. All right, so let, let's say it's this. And let's put uh, something like that. Yep. So if it was that, and that's far removed, then we're going to say the nickel right here. If you were to say two, if you were to say uh, one, that's a one. And the corner would play off and would look like that. And then we still have uh, our, our hook flat players. Right. And so we go like this. And so the thought is. That hook flat player, when you're a hook flat, your landmark, initial landmark, is the goal post. Hook flat in the boundary, landmark is the hash. The hook flat to the field, landmark is the goal post. The and then I have some middle of the goal post. The middle of the yeah. goal post, yeah. <coughs> and then you got the safety in the post. Yeah. So, like, if that, if that one and two were close, or on or near that hash again, now that's a three call, or I zone it rather. That those that stack was out wide. Now it's a one or two, right? And so what you know the one or two, it all depends on who's the guy that's the underneath guy, yeah. right? Who's the guy that's running option routes? Who's the guy that's running the shallow routes? Is it the guy on the ball? If so, then we say one. If it's the guy that's off the ball, someone got us with that. I think it was Purdue. I guess he was like a smart guy. He seemed like he's like a mad scientist guy. Yeah, guy. yeah. Like a, yeah, like it like doesn't. It, 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 it doesn't hurt like anybody's it. feelings that he's gone. Yeah, and Cuban's gone. Yeah, it's just you know because like there's. Yeah. 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 Well, that. Yeah. 
for yeah. all the Purdue stuff. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's just fucking just, crazy. It was just junk offense. You it's know? craziness. And then I, I go to shake his hand, and he was like, um, like I'm, I, 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 I realize that I'm odd. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not normal, you know. But he's way weirder than me, I must say. <laughs> he's way fucking weirder than I am. And he's a nice guy. He's not. He's always nice to me and all that. But yeah, but you know the, they got us though. That's the thing with with playing Wisconsin is the change, what you've shown on tape, because those kids will study. This is like you guys, right? They'll study, and they'll be all on it. But yeah. if you show different than what you've shown, you'll get them. Because now all of a sudden it's athleticism. Now it's reaction. Yeah. And it's not, you know what I mean? Like what is it, like Pavlov's dog? And all yeah. that. That's what it ends up being after a while, right? Yeah. It's the, they, they're, they're salivating and shit because they're trained. But once you flip it on them, right? And so uh, they were in the stacks and they were running um, the slot was running off, and the X was running options, and they were they 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 converted like three first downs on us. Yeah. In that game, in that Purdue game, our game, and we were we were playing one call, and fuck, we needed to make two calls. Yeah. You know, and it took too long. Really, it took th three first downs before we made that adjustment. It was yeah. too long. And then once you start making two calls, it's not a big not a big deal. No. But cause you make one or two calls based upon who is the guy that's running the options and the unders. That you play. Now, that is a camp rule. The ha so, the uh, inside the hash, right, is a general rule. No. But then, you know, depending on what you're getting, right, if they go inside the hash, they're both in here, or on or inside, like that, okay. And now they're going, they're running verticals, right? For whatever, whatever reason. Let's say it's something like. Uh, Something yeah. like that. Then we'll play one or two calls there now instead of zones. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So we we'll try to keep that middle field player and not stress out the weak, you know, the hook flats and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, that those would be the those would be the call. The, the, you know, the only one we're missing really is mini, but I'll bring up that in uh, three by one. About one. So his his technique's gonna be uh, his alignment's gonna be the same thing. It's probably you know, um, you know he's got the similar uh, alignment leverage that we talked about in hand. His 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 um, divider is the seam. Yeah. You know, it's two yards outside the hash. Any more than that, he plays inside leverage on the And then so you got the curl flat. You got your Corner over here. I mean, he can press. He can play off. He's playing loose man. There's your corner. And uh, you know, I know because the I think the M Miami. Cause that's where Kevin was at before, right? right? And so um, our guy now. Uh, he was our DB coach last year. I enjoyed Durante. Durante was a good dude. Durante Jones was his name. Um, now like the assistant assistant DB guy at Miami. And so we were talking and he was telling me about the three how the, the corners off and reading and all that. And so there's um you know there's other ways of doing it. And so uh, there's I think there's probably merit to it. But I always what I always liked about three was um, the ability to play as tight as possible in coverage. Yeah, you know, make them hold it. Especially with the fact that it wasn't, um, it, it was simulated pressure coming at him. You know what I mean? So you wanted to, to really have him to force to make throws. And all of that's cool as long as you're not giving up bigger plays, right? So that's where I imagine some of that comes in. 
So the corners would play press or they play off, but they're a loose man. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, uh, from there, then we had the hook flats became strong hook and weak hook, which this was also true in two backs too. Right, so we have a strong <coughs> hook player, we have a weak hook player, and then we got curl flat here. Okay. Um, then you had a lean post player. And so if it was two by two, you had a middle of the field player. But if it was three by one, that was no longer the case. Now you had a lean post. Right? That's how we said it. So he had to lean on top of three. Right? And so if it was two by two, you're having gone both sides. Yeah. He's in the middle. Now what you what you what you could do in two by two is if he had a three call or if he had a zone it, he could lean that way and he was taught to do that to the zone side. Right? To the three call side. Now how does he see that? How much of that is realistic? That's all dependent on how hard that's coached, you know what I mean? Yeah. For him to be involved with that. That's yeah. one thing for me to probably say it, you know. Um, that was the plan. I, I think, that was the I mean, plan. You get a guy to recognize, hey, you got skill on a backer. Mm -hmm. You got tight splits. You know, I mean, it, to at least to know the scenarios that, hey, this is where I'm going to get the three yeah. or the zone. So the, the idea was for him to lean that way. Now, if it was um, three, I mean, not three. And so, kind of like we talked about, to where vertical corner, vertical uh, um, curl flat. Vertical corner. If he went vertical, main post. So then the issue is about three here, about three here. So those are the areas. And so if he came in here, then we said that's the weak hook defender. And if he came in here, we said that's where the safety's got to go to drive it. If two was vertical, two came, two came under it, uh, that curl flat player, that gone player. The guys that we got all this coverage from was the uh, the 49ers. They're at the that'd be a good resource too in their coverage. Of, I mean, Minnesota's a great resource. But the, yeah. Uh, the Bron the uh, the Bears and Donatello now, Fangio, all those guys. Um, is where most of it came from. The Niners. They they when they're the Niners with the linebackers that they had, they did a fair amount of all these. you to have six guys in the box so you can fuck around with them, basically. Yeah. Right? Who's rushing and who's dropping. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so then the strong hook, his drop is outside of three. And so he takes an angle pedal and he's going to drop outside of three and that's going to be at ten yards. Right? And then, you know, he's going to play the stick route of three. He's going to play the dodge, I don't know what you guys call that, of two. Um, he's going to play the Y option of three. He's going to play the exit uh, by one, you know, yep. and then on that. And then he's going to play the check down of the right back. All right? Um, then oh, what else would he play? He play the chair. The route we're going to talk about is the chair seven. Right, the chair by uh, two. All right, so let me get this. Yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. That's what he plays, the strong hook. Second That's route there that you have after the mm -hmm. stick. No, I yeah, the dodge. The dodge. I don't know what you guys, so like say uh, this and just this. Oh, okay. It's not quite slants. It's kind of, they push it up yeah. a little bit more. Maybe you guys call it slants, but that window right there. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Um, Okay, so that's the, that's the strong hook. So that's an angle pedal for him, and so he angle pedals that. And um, you know, if he gets an option route like here, I'm talking about too wide. I'm seeing it from my my view from where I'm at right here. So mm -hmm. he wants to be right on that outside shoulder of three, because if he 
she gets these guys sitting down, right? So like the other thing, like the other thing that that uh, Paul will do a fair amount is if you're playing single high coverage, then he, he just does this, yeah, right, and just takes takes the the one on ones. And so if it was something like that, the strong hook one right there, right, and the, this is a reason for playing dawns, right, and loose yeah. and and loose man is because you're trying to get tight coverage and all that as opposed to playing off and you're breaking it. But he wants to be right outside. I don't want to be in that window because that's just a cat that's a um, uh, throwing cash. So he's right to the outside shoulder. Who was it that you said that plays dawns on all three of them and then just both backers are? Uh, yeah, Stanford does. Flats. Stanford, Stanford does that. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. There's a lot of merit in that. that um, I'm just coming up. Burn. Yeah, I let's try that, to remember who you said. Yeah, we call that burn. And okay. There's, I think, when you're building it, I think if you're building it from scratch, I think there's a lot of merit with that. There's a lot of merit with it. The, the thing that I, I couldn't get away from was that it was so much like man. You know, yeah. Man, peso man. And I couldn't, and I think maybe it's different. So zone, they'd zone it out if it's bunch. Yeah. But see, we would cut. You know what I mean? And so I, I've never felt nervous about about playing bunch to man because we yeah. cut it and we got to the point where we're good. Now we're trying to be good at this new place, right? But yeah, I never got. And so I think a lot of times when you're that, when you're set up like that, you know, um, it's it's uh, it depends where you're coming from. Like, what is is your man pretty expensive? Are you comboing this? And, you know, yeah. limbo in that or whatever you're doing, right? And then I think you, know, you look at burn as a relief, you know, and just yeah. play zone, right? Exactly. And so there's probably, I think that kind of ties into it. And then the other thing too is with burn, you know, the guys that you're playing with in the structure of the defense would be the inside backers, right? Those are more or less the guys that you're bringing because yeah. you're, you're gonna have a nickel on two and a safety on two or three, you yeah. know what I mean? So the two inside guys, you're bringing them, or one of them. Yeah. Right? So that's more, you have, and there's patterns you can bring, and there's a lot of merit to it. But in some of these other ones, these other three deeps, you're bringing nickels, corners, and safeties. And right? you don't have, yeah, you have to. Correct, and then, and then you don't have the ability you don't to have play the ability the burn, Right, yeah. and so those yeah. are the, the pluses and the minuses, yeah. I guess. No, I just asked that, I just, I knew you said that, and I was trying to yeah. remember who. Yeah, I got a lot of film on it, and and the guy watching went ahead and sent it, sent sent the tape, and so um, I'd be able to show that to you. I could I could I could send you the Stanford cuts of it, and I could send you the Washington cuts that he sent me. You know, so it's good. I think the um, there's I like it. You know, yeah. the okay the weak hook defender is. Um, then in that, I'll, I'll get back to that one more time. And when you do burn it, though, then your safety is just true middle of the field. Then again. Correct. The high safety. Correct. Yeah, because we're you're running with everybody. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so, okay. if it was trips, and it's a gone on two, and then it's a gone on three. Yeah. And so then, um, you have uh, you have one kind of hook flat defender, and then you have a curl flat defender. Curl flat defender. Is really yeah. what you got. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just, uh, yeah. like I said, I had to question as to who was doing that. So. Um, let's see. We could defend. Okay, yeah. We're, I'll get back on track there again. Yeah, you, you it's, uh, we could. It'd be we cook now, I think. What's that? We cook now. Okay, yeah. Be where yeah, so the, the we cook is uh, dropping straight back on the hash, and he is, um, <coughs> he's playing the bend of three, to the dig by X. And what we've done in the past with that is we played that from the dig to the X. And we look at the release of three. And uh, we try to see if we're getting a turn of the shoulders, if his stem is giving us a, if he stem, you know, because part of it is to be honest, a couple things, I guess. If we, if we said, what's up, man? So if we said, a strong hook. When some people play it this way, strong hook, you are inside of three. In reroute three. 
See what I mean? Let's right now, it. we're not rerouting. Okay. We're dropping. We're over dropping. Yeah. See, the Vikings so, keep him inside right, of three. Right. Coyle said that they over jam three. Right. So they'll slide into the outside, right. but they want a collision. Right. And so if you were to reroute them inside out, then to me, and, th and this is probably speaking as a linebacker coach and not as a secondary coach, then that gives a harder read for that weak hook in terms of what is he, is he running a bend? Is he going vertical? Yeah. You can't, you don't have a read on it. You know what I mean, when you over drop it, he ain't being rerouted. It's a fucking clear read, right? He's bending it. He's running a dig. And so, you know, there's good and bad with that. I mean, it's however you want to go, you know? And so there's more vision of the strong hook when you overdrop it. Um, when that weak hook, when that weak hook um, uh, pedals back, his eyes are at three. If he sees that inside bend, he'll play. Because the thing about it is, you know, the, the coverage breaks down if that weak hook don't play that bender. Because you're, tra you're talking your lean post to stay in the middle, and that, that's a dead area. And so he always has to play it. I mean, he has to be on that bend, which it, it, it helps us, I think, for the strong hook to overplay it, and we're bracketing. You know what I mean? It'd be, this would be no different. Say if this was two by two. Yeah, don't, you yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's the back on the check down. Yep. And that's what it is. Yeah. It's basically that, right? This is two by two. That's the back on the check down. We have him bracketed. And so he's pedaling back and he's looking to see if he gets a bend. If he gets a bend, he's going to turn and run with it. If he gets a vertical release, right? So the, the thing is, he's protecting the hash. So this hash, he's not coming off the hash. And so this is a pedal. This is an angle pedal. So, and he comes off, he's looking at this, right? And then if he gets a vertical release, right, he's gonna take a peek and go there. So that's always thought. So, you know, is he getting that, right? And as he comes back, he's here. If he gets something like this, on this hash, and then he's looking at the dig. Now, the, um, there's, there's been some opponents of the play that um, the X is a bigger factor, and we looked at the release of X. Yeah. And so, like, I think there's some cover two teams that do it. But we did it in two games, um, where if the X releases inside, we're taking a peek, and that's the dig. Yeah. If the X releases outside, we look at three, and that's the bender. So there's merit to, maybe we should have done that more. Well, that was on the bus with Chris, right? Yeah. Right, I know, but that was the change up right there. Was to look at the release of X. Um, his, you know, where is he creating space? What space is he taking? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a man turn by that weak hook, and so if he gets a bend, <coughs> he's man turning. If he gets a dig, um, we want him to. Um, I think I might have said man turn last night. He's zone turning to dig. He's underneath it because the corner is still driving. The curl flat player to the op to the open side. He wants to angle pedal out, and so it's not like a V drop. It's not like a country cover three drop. It's a, he's angle pedaling, and um, he wants to be able to be in the the, the slant the comeback, the throw lane to X, right? And so he doesn't want to stand underneath X on the comeback. He wants to be in the throw lane to X on the comeback. And if you got a guy with some length, that helps too, you know? And so his is an angle pedal. So he is pass. Right? He's angle pedaling out this way now. So all this is an issue because I want you to do that. So like, here's the thing, right? So like, um, let's put that guy back there. So you can see it, right? We got an angle pedal here. We got an angle pedal here. And we got a guy pedaling here. And it's like, who the fuck is in here? You know, the check down and all that now. So part of it is we're trying to occupy the guy. You check eat the down. check down with your putt. Right. We're trying to do that. Yeah. But then the other piece is if he does get out, 
you have to collapse on them. And so you would collapse on them and the strong hook would collapse on them, right? If this thing were to be caught in here, right? We're not asking the weak hook to do that. We're asking the weak hook to be kind of, you know, I don't know, I think the, uh, we had to do it this way. I have not, I have not talked to anyone else about strong, you know, I have not picked up, hey, you are playing low and bro over here, you're playing high from anybody else, you know. Um, so I know, I know when Tipasar came um, over, outside linebacker guy, he had been a coordinator before at a couple different spots. And um, he was at the Bears for that one year. But Tiz is a good coach. Tiz had a lot of questions with the, the strong hook and weak hook and high and low. It just you couldn't you couldn't get it for the longest time. And so it was some good conversations, you know. And so the 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 thought that I have behind it is is that it just seems to me cover three is a great defense, but if it's all if it's true four under and then three D, so four under here and three deep here, then what the fuck about here? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where they're gonna throw. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those layers. And so then I think that if you don't have descriptions like this, then to me, and this just comes from coaching the linebackers, is that, you know, because that tips thing was, well, you should just get them, we just, and, and I get it, but I think the match, you know, I don't know, it's probably it's just a different way of doing it. Where, hey, let's just play deep to short, and let's everybody do that. So, yeah. the, the strong hook and weak hook are both playing deep. You know what I mean? And then I, I kind of get that part, but it's like when the bend comes, who's got the bend? Is it the onside guy? Is it the backside guy? Who has that? You know what I mean? And then, you know, you get the stick route. The stick route comes, and we're both going like this. Who's got the, you know what I mean? Yeah. I look at all those matchups and who has those. And so that's, that was. You know, that was always the issue, right? And so the you know, when you play this way, this way and this way, right? And you're concerned about that space, that's the check down. But I think the other part is that's where we're trying to occupy guys as well. Okay. Um what else did I wanna say? You do strong a good hook job and weak you hook. You do a good job of eating up the check down once mm -hmm. what you do. Yeah. The strong hook and weak hook are also um, passing strength. So we're talking about field defenses, but the, they're passing strength based. So if formation is on the sideline, then the, the weak hook in this picture becomes the strong hook. Yeah. And the strong hook in this picture becomes the weak hook. If passing strength is in the boundary. So they have to understand that, you know, and so the jobs reverse. The jobs change. Um, the, the other the other piece with this, and I probably should I missed it, right? I missed it was um, three step. Is that they've got to build a clear three step. So if they get three step, we want that strong hook and weak hook flat, wherever three step is. So we push them flat. The gons stay matched on. The gons are matched. So in other words, if it's three step, we don't push the gons out. So the corners stay matched. The gons stay matched, and your hook hook uh, curl players and two by two your mm -hmm. hook flat players are flat off the cue. Okay. You had a rep against USC, maybe I'm jumping ahead, we had formation in the boundary. Mm -hmm. And then Nickel actually came to sort of the middle. Mm -hmm. Did he become the weak hook player essentially like, they, they ran a route and number, like uh, uh, somebody bent right into the middle right to him. I'd have to show. I'll, I'll pull that for. I mean, but it was it was really interesting. I was like, boy, they they had that one figured out. Yeah. And I I'll have to, yeah, I'll be able to find that pretty easy. We'll ask that later. Then. Um. All right. And the front. The, okay. So the front three. Is, um, right through the inside number of the tackle. So it would be a slight tilt to that track player. And so 
very similar to what we talked about with the trace. The trace is on a tight end, now the track's on a tackle, but it's the same thing. And so um, if, if the tackle would be down, he's off the, he's off the butt, and then he is picking up the running back, right? And he's, he's going to match the path of the, the running back. Either he's going to run the heel line, or he's going to U-turn down the heel line. Um, you know, well, I guess to be honest, it's tackle, it's faces, it's <coughs> track, to be honest with you, right? Um, on the track. If he got uh, base or reach, so he got base here or reach here, he's going to come underneath that. He's thinking of a plan with hands. And so, uh, if he got, like, if I'm in this position right here, Right, so I'm this way, and I get a base. Right, as I step, I'm here, right, on the track. You know what I mean? With hands. Right, if I get an overreach, if I'm this way, and I get an overreach, then I, I, I pick up the back, and I'm flat right now. You know what I mean? But I'm thinking hands. I'm not thinking just different way. Uh, okay, the, this is, this would, on the train right here, right? If we were to say rocket, okay, then this is going to be up, up the field, okay? So now this is pushed up, and then we go. And it's the same thing, just up the field at his toes. So what we don't want to do is have these guys push off the ball, and um, we're going flat. Watches. Right, so we can get all this right here. So this, these are the calls on the line scrimmage. So that changes the, the path, you know, or changes how vertical we're getting. Okay. So <coughs> that's a track. Now, what's the alignment of the track? You know, um, it's been, you know. Um, Honest, especially in, in some of these, because we want to be able to create the space. So the time has been you know, yard outside, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we tighten it down, it's been maybe half that, but it's been it's been some space because we want to, be able to open up on that. We don't want it to be um, a true base. We want it to be a reach, and so to give us space inside to hit it, it gives us more room to work, I guess. Yeah. Okay, over here, this is a face. All right, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a two face, we said. So I'm crossing this guy's face, and I'm reading him, right? And so I'm gonna push equal step this way. But this is more of a lateral step, moving what this guy's doing. Right, if he's coming to me, I'm gonna cross his face, dip him up, right? Go again, right? If he's working away from me, I'm right off his ass, and I'm doing the same thing. Picking up the back, run the heel line, right? You turn down the heel line. If that were, if that was ever the case, okay. And so we're getting the track, and then we're getting the two face here. And the reason for that, not all, the, not all the time do people do that, but the reason for it is so we could still run, um, run this with pulls, and not have to read out. You know, I mean, if we just took them to the A gap. Then, um, you know, the guard pulls, you got the tackle on the end, both in that gap, you know. And so he reads the center, so if he gets blocked back, he comes again. I don't know, maybe you build it different ways, because I, I, I don't know. There's one guy I was just talking to, I forget what it was, but he just sent him in that A gap, but then, you know, if he got the block back, he went again. I don't know, maybe that's the same thing as what I'm saying, but I think here the aim point in the center is maybe different. I don't know, I don't think his aim point was the center. I think his aim point was uh, more like the inside of the guard. You know what I mean? Then he, I don't know how that, how one plus one got to three in that case. You know, I don't know how that <laughs> but we read the center. So we go again, 
the, the tackle over here, this was a face on the tackle, the left tackle. He was a two eye. And so um, he did not two face. He would just, uh, A and I read the tackle. And so he would go A to B. And so um, he worked the rib cage of the, of the tackle. He worked that rib cage on the tackle here. This guy is doing this. I'm, and I'm going to maintain. So if I got any, if I got a, a, a reach block, I, I want to be able to get big, shoulder square in that B, find the running back, all that. If I got a down block, I'm fighting pressure on the down. Um, if I got a pass, I want to be able to get vertical. All of this would be the you know, river call in this particular instance, so we're shaped in this one. Alright. You could have the same the same uh, defense, but it could be a lake call. A lot of times that's because the tight ends the other way, you know. Let's say so let's say we were like that. So this is far, this is blood so they're all the same. Yep. So that's with it here, and this is with it here. So this guy doesn't change. This guy's still on track. <coughs> Alright, and then this guy, he's still gonna get to this this part of it now. So he's still gonna get across here. We call we used to the mistake that we used to do is it goes back, like at Utah State, is we did this. And then once you do that, then this guy starts to come back because he's too flat. Yeah. And so, yeah, what do we call this? I think we call this an angle. I can't remember. It's some bullshit, really. I forget what the term is. He's basically running a track on the center. Okay? And so he's aligned right here. He's working that way on the center. You see what I mean? Yep. And so if the center was here, he's off his ass. The center was to come to him, he cross and get in the A. But it's that 45, it's this track. Yep. He's running a track on the center. He's using his hands. Yes. That's what he's taking hands up. Mm -hmm. Yep, same thing. Right? And then this guy right here is running a sling. He's going from a three eye or a three to a four eye. And again, he's playing it at this point, you know, the, the reach he's playing the same way by the tackle. The down, he's playing the same way by the tackle. Um, if you got to pass that, your whole face match the same way. So the thing is, whether the shades are two or away, <coughs> the gaps are the same. See what I mean? Yeah. The gaps the guys behind have to play are the same. Okay. Uh, so in, in all of these, though, too, again, these are all the trains, the rocket. This would be pushed out. is going to be Russian. This would be a nine to begin. And he would move to a six in the cadence. And he's going to work his track. Right? Uh, it's a river here. So the three techniques. Uh, push equals step. Work his two face. Right? He's going to work his face here. The rover in the back when it's three by one. Done far. He's going to be a zero. And then this map over here is going to be a fifty. Nickel is going to show apex, and he's going to start creeping down. Right, and we had a bullet path for him. Is how what we said. And so a bullet would be if the back was off the. Um, okay, so if we were to just bring like one guy off the edge, 
don't know how much we talked about last night, but we call that CBR, a controlled slant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's basically he's a glorified five technique. And so he has the vision. He see the ball and all that get off wise, but he has to see the in that line of scrimmage. And if that guy goes down, he's got to go down. Right? If he got a base or reach, he had to play that on the line of scrimmage. He couldn't get vertical. Yeah. You know, the guy who was off the edge and the seams and all that. Yeah. So that was CBR. And so there's, you know, I think there's advantages to bringing one guy off the edge. You're building, you're creating a surface, you know, an over and an under. So there's advantages there, but it's not necessarily to rush the passer. You know, it's more to change the surfaces inside. Yeah. Right? He is doing his part so the other guys can slant and do whatever the fuck they do. Or in this is a little bit different. So this, in my mind, is just two guys off the edge now. And so, you know, the whole thing is, well, how does this fit? How do you fit all this? What's the zone read? Yada, yada. And so, you know, um, we would always start with this, with like the, the main reason for Favre and Bledsoe and Brady would play action pass. The number one reason is that um, I think that's where you start. So early in the week, what are their play action passes? Which creeper is the best versus this particular team and their play action passes? And then we get that fitted up versus their runs as opposed to the other way. Because yeah. what you don't because what you don't want is that play action pass to do this and he pulls it and it's just Yeah. Right. And so like if we're like in over quarters, over cover four, block down, step down, maybe, you know what I mean? Right. And then uh, run action, linebackers are up, switch routes. So it's zero rush, zero coverage. Yeah. Right? And so that sucks. Right? If that's where we start, you know. Yeah. You, know, you go like tight four, right? That sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so uh this, what you want to be able to do is you want to have something, I think, to where you're in the face of the QB, right? Something to where you're coming at him. And so this, there's a merit to it, I think, just in terms of uh, the play action teams that block down, right? You know, the thought I always thought was if a team blocks out with their tackles, bring people in. The Tolzines, the Ordens, right? Um, the Spikes, right? The Bellies. If they block out with the tackle, so I'm talking about the whole line that aggressively here, right? And the guards are doubling on this guy, and it's a, yeah. either a pop pass leading the linebacker on three, or like USC was the best because they block out, and the back went this way, right? Yeah. It was here. Yeah. So if it's ever anything like that, inside, right, because they're blocking the over or under that's presented to them, and you're building that new one with a run through, you know, yeah. and so, you know, that, now, if a, if a team were to block down from the tackles, block down and pull a guard, right, then we want to bring two off the edge, we want to do this, yeah. okay, and so far from Bledsoe's bringing off the edge, right, and then so much of it would be you know, field and boundary, I guess you could go passing straight like Panther. When you said Panther, this would be to the passing straight, wherever this was. Okay. Uh, Panther straight to the boundary. You know, Panther left, Panther right. Okay. Um, but the field boundary. So if you went Panther, you'd put the nickel to the passing straight. Uh huh, he'd try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wondered that because I saw, you know, and then there'd yeah. be a few plays right. get, you did against USC. Right. There'd be a few plays where all of a sudden the nickel's into the boundary. Right, yeah, Panther, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the, the, um, the, a lot of it though, field boundary, you know, I don't know. This was one of the things I think the tips too, you'd always get, that I'd always, in the meetings it'd be like this. It was hard to kind of get through the subject because I'm always talking. Whatever kind of comes up, I start talking. So it's, you know, it's like, well, let's get on with the fucking thing. You know? I can't help it. But And so I would explain kind of what I'm thinking and all that. And maybe sometimes I shouldn't. But um, what, you know, there are times where far and blood. So what I would do is I just wait and see how they line up. Where's the tight end? I mean, yeah. if I have the tight ends in the boundary, I call blood. So the tight ends they feel like call far, right? 
so you can get some of the pattern, you can get some of the formation stuff just by seeing how they come out and not having to do that. And and then I didn't want to put it on the kids. You know, I mean, have some call where it's on them. Yep. It can just be on me. I can just wait and see how they come out. And I'm looking for it. Where's the tight end boundary? Where the blitz on? Right, tight end. Far, you know, with the, I'm talking about the wide tee. Right? Like, there's going to be a clip versus LSU where this guy blocks down and the back comes across. That's what we want. Right. Right. So, um, bullet means if it's done far, right, the back's away from you, yeah. we want you thinking back. If it's done near, back's to you, we want you thinking QB. Mm -hmm. And then everything else plays off of that. So if the back's in pistol, where does the back step to? We play those rules. And so, you know, if the back was away, he wants to be thinking running back. Now, if the running back eliminates himself, Climbs goes to Q, right? If the Q back is to him, he wants to be thinking quarterback. Yeah. Right? There was a um, we gave up. We had a, um, a nickel, and the kid's going to end up being a good player. But, but it, it sure pisses you off though. So we we played Illinois and we ran for this. It was two by two, and he did not play. He was, yeah, the back was away, and he went right up to the Q. Oh. Yeah, the cash. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's the bullet rule. Yeah. Um, okay. So the safety is going to come down. He's going to play gone. He's outside too. And here, this is your strong hook, your weak hook. All right, this is your wing post. And this is what I was saying. This is what's always difficult because when you go far, it's this way. Right, so he's got to get in position to play that. <coughs> instance he has the A gap and the Mac over here the Mac is going to have so we say really what we're saying is we're saying that this end right here is in the B gap this tackle is in the A gap this tackle is in the B gap right this nickel is your D gap run support okay so the Mac is a C gap player this guy right here so like say say if you have like a what play would what play would be one say you got the O play right yeah. And so he's going to stay latched on. So it looks like that. All right? And then when all of this comes, the, you know, the rover, he wants to play the cutback off of that. But he won't leave it. So in other words, we didn't give that to him. He had him okay. play near and him for our shoulders. We made sure that it He's not run over top. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, you know, a lot of times, if they block it that way, this is the guy that should win. Right? Yeah. If they double down hard with the tackle. If you know the if the line movement is right, if the line movement is I think they if we're doing what we what we need to be doing, the offense is forced to block sideways. Right? They they should not be allowed to be aggressively coming at you downhill. You know what I mean? And if they do, they're given they're given um, yeah, they're given uh, spaces for us to take, right? They block sideways, and it gives us the ability to knock off. And I think that was evident in the USC game. Um, now, you know, with uh, that is three by one, done far. Okay. Um, so we can line up this way, zero fifty, because that's going to work, and everything's kind of pretty. It's all nice right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the back, right? We're all good. If that X were to be cut down, that'd be a two, two, two. Play out that rule that okay. I talked about last night. Like, say, if this guy was down over here. Yeah. Right. This was a two, so if we got this and this, the corner's here, and he's here. Yeah. That's what we did. In and in. Shoulders are turned up. Right? If it's a two, then you go vertical, match to match. Correct. There's no end. So it's kind of a, it's a razor's edge there. That's how we play it. Right, so um, that is three by one gun far. Now, the issue becomes the four by one. Four by one. I think that's, that's the main issue with this. Uh, can I just 
let's say if we line it this way, the problem is that's where you're bringing guys, and that's where they're blocking. So I guess what I'm saying is we wouldn't line it up like that. We have in the past, but last year we did not. And so let's say they're going to block it. Uh, let's say they go something like this, right? And they're going to go from here to here, here to here. Not so much they get when they're forward set like this. And especially so that's initially, right? That's without any movement. They block it like that. Now once you've got movement, in other words, he does this and he does this. He's not blocking here anymore. He stays on. He now yeah. sits his foot and does that. And your trap player is cut. You see what I'm saying? And all of that is because he's aligned here and he's aligned here. So that's a problem. And so um, now I remember we played Purdue two years ago, and they got into some of that, and we lined up like that two years ago. And that tackle is sticking his foot in the ground because he's reading the R3 technique slant. And the line, so the linebackers are pushed over, so they're comboing back instead of up, you know. And then the three technique, he's working to slants. So he sticks his foot in the ground, and then he more or less butts block, butt block, and seal the track defender. Now we're cut as a scene, you know. And so um, I remember looking at that. We had a bunch of guys come through last spring. Um, and so we all talked about that. Who, who, you know, who's the guy? The guy in Louisville, he came by. He seemed like a nice guy. Todd uh, Grantham. And they run this. And what they do versus four by one is they pull it. So, in other words, it turns the field slam. They pull the end, it comes off, and they push everybody over. Which, if you do that, I mean, it's basically it's field slant now at that point. Now you lose your track and all that, but you're probably stronger versus that particular play. You know what I mean? And so um, that's what he did. Um, Washington, when they came down last year, they were messing around with this, and they had said um, at USC, that's the guy that's at Wisconsin now. Mm -hmm. They ran this. And um, you know, the USC, you know, the Wilcox and the Washington guys are all close. And if, with the nickel, you know, it was four by one, they played their nickel on the CBR. So he bent, so he treated th that gun near like gun far, and he bent yeah. and played the dive. Okay. And then the Mac overplayed it and played the cue. Yeah. So like if the cue kept it, the Mac would come out and play it. Mm -hmm. We experimented with that too. That was, I, I can't remember when that was. That was like a spring or something. And so those are all ways to, those are all ways initially to see what the fuck, you know, how do you play that? Yeah. Now, the way that we settled on uh, is probably not, I don't know, you know, you're, you're, um, you're concerned with three going out. I think the thing that gets you, either way, even if it was a true zone, it would kind of concern you the way we're doing it. Um, uh, but especially when gone, you know, because I think the thing is, they're working to the rover in the Mac. And since the Mac's pushed over in a 50, it's like, come on, man, you know. But then I'm worried about putting the Mac anymore in because, you know, it's a gone. Why goes to the flat? Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, that was always the thing. But that's what we ended up doing, though. This last year, we ended up putting the Mac, we played the Mac in a 30, and we played the Rover in a 30, in a 4 by one And then to buy the angles, to buy the tackle blocking down, and to buy the center blocking out. And so, you know, 4 by one far. Okay, so you can pull it. We never really did, right? We could CBR it, right? Or we could go 33. And that's the one we chose. And so like if it was this and this, we wanted these angles so that we could get that. You see what I mean? Yeah. And then he would fit right on back. Now again, see he's going Q, so his his crease is going to be right here. And then this guy, he's still going to work. So if we're getting this and this, he's still going to work to this A gap. The rover over here at 30. Right? So this is similar, you know, those 
talked about in the very beginning last night, the rope adult and all that. Yeah. That's basically what we're doing. We're yeah. falling back. Yeah. And so as a and those as a general rule, it'd be that. Now, all of that's like right here we got it now, right? Because they're combo and they're up and they got it. That is a problem. All right. If that guy just goes to the flat, then we probably have I'd have to readjust this thinking. To be honest, if they did a fair amount of that, then we're saying we're gonna live with it. You know what I mean? And be fifty zero. If we got a fair amount of that. There's not a lot of people we see that just do that, just to read the flat right now. Yeah. So we play thirty, we play five. The majority of people that we see that get four by one run this and run it down flat. Yeah, the data and the So <coughs> those are a couple I mean that's an issue, there's a couple answers or at least adjustments I guess for that, you know. Um, so he would be going he'd be thinking Q. And so like if it was a play pass, he'd go into the quarterback, right? And then we're saying we want this so that that end can run the streets, get get that end, that Y attracted to him, and then we fall on back and we've got that bend if it were to happen. That bend would be ours. Yeah. Uh, and I think the alignment does help not being having the whip to where you're not getting that, right? You're getting Now, if three got detached, three yeah. by one, right. are you trading it? We trade it. Yeah. Leave so the nickel outside of three as the strong hook. Uh -huh. And then, of course, now your tracer threes, you'd be on a track now off the tackle then, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, so I mean, um, the four by one, if it's three detached, isn't, a, isn't as big as an issue because we no. trade it. Yeah. yeah, so it's just the four by one with the tight end in there. And, you know, the other thing, to be honest, the best thing versus that, if you're getting a lot of the four by one downplay, is to run it away. Your main is to run blood cell and to slant into it. That is the best, right? And so, if that's giving you a lot of problems, because what you could say is, hey, we're just going to be a 50 0 and fuck it. You know what I mean? And then say, hey, if we're getting a lot of it, then look to see what that tight end is and call blood cell, right? And now, you're yeah, obviously that real quick. We'll talk about Bledsoe still, but you guys will see. So, like I say, if we were like this, all right, so now we're going to say this way, this way, this way, and this way. So, you like that, you know what I mean? A, B, D, and C, mm -hmm. right? And that, a lot of times, that bubbles out here to the A. So that fits it better than anything. So I mean, there's merit to saying, I don't know, I'm not going to change anything. We're far. We're just going to play it. We're going to teach that in. When that tackle comes back, we're just going to squeeze the fuck out of that guy and we're going to play fast and whatever else. You know, and, and then when it gets to it, if it's a problem, then call the stuff away from the back. You know, and call it away and work into it, right? as opposed to trying to work. Uh, If it was trips, yeah, it'd be a trade. And we bounce add to that guy. And so let's say it was this. I think there's there's something there's, you can change up how you're playing with that with this dude. I mean, um, I think uh, if it's in a line that's an aligned trips and they traded it. The nickel at times felt more comfortable on two and the safety cheated when we played at three. Yeah. So that was their own little deal and it didn't matter to me. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. But there's times when you're not gonna be able to get that, you know, whether we see it late or in motion, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to get to a trade on motion too. Yeah. So it's just if they're okay with it and I was okay with it, yeah. You know. And so then this would be, we wanted this guy to be a 30, and we still wanted to play it this way. So we were here, here, and here. And so he'd be like that. After this yeah. pass. Right? So this guy was a uh, C gap player and run, and he was an A gap player. But we called this was a bounce add. Okay? And so we didn't, we didn't 
want that guy to go right now. We want him to play the run first. And so like if it was a run, like say they ran zone read, that would look like a, what do you call it? You guys call it like a squeeze and scrape. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. And then if it was if it was pass, then he would add in. Um, and so and the whole reason for just the bounce add was just the, uh, the the pure numbers if we bring them up on the line of scrimmage. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we were able to still get the the effect of him off the edge because he was a C gap player in the run because he played off the track. But then on pass, right? We were able to. Uh, we were still be able to get the trigger that we wanted. And so just didn't want him to be up to be on the line of scrimmage with, you know, you basically got half your defense lined up on one particular side. That was the main reason. Um, and the Rovers playing the A-gap there off the, off the, the two-face. And then you know, the end over here is dropping. So you'll see the bounce ad in the deal. plays, right? Bunch of plays. Bunch of turnovers I got first. So like if it was like um if it was quarters and we're in box. If it was box. Um you know the outside backer is gonna push under one but he got he has two to flat. That's how we played it. Um and then if it was bot if it because the safety to the boundary, he's going to check for X uh, initially. I mean, it's more of a, a safety into the boundary away from the box. It's kind of a quarter track. And he's checking for the X quick throw. But then we st he was still a gold player on three verticals. So the safety had three vert. The other safety had two vert. And the corner had one. So it was three over three over there, a bunch in the box. And so the the X went out like that, or the number one receiver, because that's always, that's another way like Paul would fuck with you is he'd be bunch and one would just go out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, who's fucking got that guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. So the corner would play over the top of it, but the outside backer would would, uh, would push that way and then really more or less tackle that guy. Yeah. We're going to tackle him. You know, we're not, we're not really concerned with fucking covering him. Mm -hmm. We're going to tackle him. The outside backer had two to the flat. The corner... By rule had one, but he didn't want to jump one because now we're saying two on the seven cut. You know, fuck you, you know what I mean? All that, right? Because that's what they're trying to get. Now, you maybe you could play more aggressive when you have three guys over three, which a lot of people would be split in that instance. Yeah. Others, you know what I mean? And so we still played it that way. But um, so box, outside backer related to two, you know, so he push under one, but he took two to the flat, not one to the flat. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Now, if it was if it was uh, 3D, he said I got first because the corner was a true third, right? And then yep. the outside backer took one. He took the first guy to the flat, so it was different. You know what I mean, at least how we saw it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. And then we had strong hook and weak hook still, and all that. And then the weak hook player was still responsible for. We had some come across like a bender. He would play it. So I mean we had a bunch. Let me see if I can make sense of all that. And so if we were in this uh he's here. He's here. And so like say what would that be? It'd be something like um so something like this. Right? So something like that. So if that was the case, right? Then he's pushing out here, he's on top of this, he's on top of this because you still had him. You see what I mean? Yes. Right? And he's here and he's here. So he's here and we're gonna really kinda of rally down to that. He's gonna be here, top down, he's gonna push that on the throw. Yeah. That's how we played it. Right? And then if it was a three D uh, then safety was here. So this play, I got first. So he played that true. That he was a third defender. And this way he would recook and he would overplay that strong hook like that. Right? And 
and then the coin divided it. So I mean, we just played it out, but he would play outside. So depending on, let me say this, on what that three did. So anytime like three went out, like this, and that was his drop, right? You push outside of three, that's his three. Right? If it wasn't that way, say it was this, this, and this, right? Then he was sitting right here, right? He was here, corner had to drive. Yeah, got it. So now, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, you want a water cup? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Is there any more? I'll take coffee if you guys have any. Do you have a coffee machine? I'll go make a pot. That's crazy. crazy. You don't I said I don't coffee. know. I, I can't do coffee. I don't. I don't know who can do it. I have, I've never had a cup in my life. Really? I've had a lot of Mountain Dew and Diet Coke. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. Stuff I shouldn't be <laughs> yeah. drinking. That's probably no old. coffee. On Man, it. you guys, none, no coffee. I drink coffee. Oh, okay. Guys. I don't. Wow. I never tasted it. Hey, Man. we got guys that drink coffee. Clay drinks coffee. Yeah. Drink? yeah. That's. It's still. It's still run. Put it on stand back for a second. Oh. Again. Okay. Don't be messing with it. I'm Carl in your dorm. Don't be yeah. messing with it. <laughs> uh, that clock right What I don't like is uh, standby is green and the cord is red. Yeah. And yeah. It's almost the completely opposite, opposite of what life is. <laughs> it's going it to be green. This is this is Brady. Brady. This is Brady three. So Brady's from the boundary. Yep. And so the, the rovers from Washington the big out. And uh, he has a he's the three technique. And so if it's a run, we say you are three technique. You got the big out. If it's a pass, and they fan to you, you are a three technique. You have a two way go. Right. If it's passed and they slide away and the back works to block you, you have a two-way go on the back. Okay. Um, you like the freeze rush in that instance. Your tackle there? That's that same angle. Okay. And then over here at the three, that's a three to a four eye, that's a slant. Yep. So all of this is the same. And then there's a nine, he's playing strong hook. So if the gaps in the run game uh, Brady was more of a pass deal, but you could play it in the run because the safety has got that A gap. There's an A gap right there off that angle, you know, the, the shade. Yep. He's got the safety coming down, the cold flat, he's got that A. Yeah. And then the Mac has got the C gap over here, the right. So, this guy's A, this guy's C. Now, what we did though was. We wanted the Mac to play C to A. And so we didn't want the safety to come down there. So so you could run this and the safety could come all the way down. Yep. And I think the problem with that is that it's, you know, is that. Yeah. You're just learning them to throw it over there. Yeah. Where if you don't bring them down and kind of hang them, then I love this coverage because I love the I love Brady because Three by one, majority of the teams will slide to the field. Right? And the back will block in the boundary, so you get a one on one immediately. And then two, you know, they're going to read that boundary safety. And if that boundary safety just kind of sits there, they don't know what it is. Exactly. And he, yeah. he takes away his whole throw, this, this side. And then you've, you're playing tight coverage here, and you got your safety on top of three. Yeah. You got all of it. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, I went and visited, uh, I've been visiting uh, Sean McDermott at Carolina the Panthers for, he used to be at the Eagles, I go visit him at the Eagles all the time. Um, when Ron, Ron Rivera was the linebacker coach of the Eagles, I go visit him. And McDermott was like a quality control guy, and then I go back, and uh, Jim Johnson just passed away, and McDermott was the DC there. He's at Carolina. I visited two two years ago. And this past spring was a was a uh, what do you call it a uh, 
visited, you know, mm -hmm. and was like a defensive intern or a quality, whatever the minority, yeah. minority uh, guy during the fall training camp. And so they put this in. And so they had Thomas Davis, number 58, that's a really pretty good linebacker. And uh, he made a lot of plays with this. Right? Now, what the, uh, what the Dolphins did with this was they would play just traditional three deep with this. They played three deep, four man rush, three deep. But if the back was offset, they went to the back. And so it was a check. And so if it was, it was one call, if it was back under quarterback under center, back at home, or pistol, four man rush, four guys on the ball rushing, three deep. Once the back got offset, they checked like gun or something. And they ran Brady to the side of the back. Right? And they dropped the end away. Right? Or the outside back. That was like a, a gun check for them, yeah. right? Um, the 49ers run Brady, or the Bears now, they call it whip three. And so there's his weak side. And so if it is two by two, they go to the offset back, right? They'll run the rover to the side of the back. If it's two by two, they go to the offset back. If it's any by one, two by one, three by one, they go weak. Whip. So, and so it's more where ours is just field boundary, ours is boundary, and that's it. You know, but um, there's merit in some of those other ways. So the so if it's a run, we want that angle by the tackle, mm -hmm. and we want that rover hitting that B to cut the play off. So it won't. And then you know you got the slant by the three technique going to a four. So we don't want it going to the C. So we want the Mac playing C to A. Yeah. Come back so we can keep that safety out of the field. Right? So and the on the field. angle, on the angle with the tackle, uh -huh. center away off his ass. Yes. Center to him, he's crossing. Crossing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and so like, what you're trying to think is like, say, if it was something like this. This takes a lot of work, you know, the blitz and all that, because it point aims the guard. And so you have got something like this. Right, so you want to yeah. this to cut it off. You want this guy to cut it off. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this to get back and push it this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And then he's just playing football at that point off of that ball because it's been cut off. Yeah. So I mean, that's the way I would be, as opposed to just getting him down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see. Uh, yeah, it's the if it was two by two. Two, then it would be gone. Foot flat, foot flat. So he would have the C based upon that block, right? He has this A, right? And then he, the end dropping off, right? And then we're gone here. And that's your true third player. So the issue here is always going to be, um, this is a hard form to back in now, when you're having to push through, yep. that's difficult to do. You know, I think we always talked about having ways that these guys can push that stuff off, and we just never, never did it. But there's, there's merit to doing that, but we never did. But if we did it that way, he came out and said he ran a seven, and we're saying that, it's basically like your combo. Yeah, like what you maybe do in goal line or something like that. He's got to go with a seven cut. And it's like, I have a hard time telling a linebacker that to his face. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> I, I have a hard time because I'm just looking at his face, <laughs> and that would fuck me up. I yeah. couldn't do it. No, yeah. So then the three is on the two face then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of that is the same. So that same all that stuff we talked about is again and again and again. So that, so yeah, right now we're in the process of talking about, you know, like uh, grilled shrimp, grilled shrimp, all that. That's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we're going. And so that, um, 
Yeah, so this was good. I mean, uh, Brady, um, Brady was one of the most successful ones. Did you get teams to throw that X dig? This would be number one call. Yeah. Did you do this to USC when we played a hard corner with the safety over top? Uh, to the boundary. I don't know. There was, or have you done it with a hard corner? Yeah, we call it Belichick. Okay. Yeah, so Belichick is the signal for Belichick to be the hoodie. <laughs> no hoodie. So Brady, the signal was like the G Giselle with the, that the girlfriend. That was Brady. <laughs> and then this was this was uh, Belichick right there, you know, the hoodie. And so that one was good too. We ran this one in you and. Hawaii game. Okay. Hawaii game. And then we would run this version of our offense, which is Wisconsin. Belichick was like the number one third round goal. Because it's a good thing for the back and all mm -hmm. the shit that they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So all this would be the same. Yeah. It's just that this is a true, whereas before, in the match don't really change, but now, you know, say you play C to A, there's some, the safety's kind of sitting high if it's Brady, so he'll kind of come down. Now there's no one coming down. You yeah. Know what I mean? There's yeah. no max C to A, period. Because there's no, yeah, he's, he's got, got no, way. there's no run. And now he's here, yeah, right? And so he's in post, gone, man, and then you guys still got your same, the same thing. Like that. And so, yeah, there's a lot of merit to that. Okay. I, I thought I'd seen that mm -hmm. from you before, and that's why I didn't know how yeah. you were getting to it. So Belichick would be. It's Brady if it's two by two, but anytime it's a by one, the, the safety and corner just switch. Two by two is Brady. Okay. So only when it's a by one do these guys switch jobs. Yeah. Otherwise, it plays out like. Uh, oh yeah, two by two, then you're gone on both sides. Mm -hmm. So we kind of already, well, we've already talked about a little bit. So Bledsoe's probably been the most, Bledsoe's probably been the most effective one. Well, Brady is the versus pass. But Bledsoe versus run and pass has probably been the best one. Um, more effective than far uh, because you get more out of the throw game with Bledsoe. Drop back pass. You get the track of the end, and then you get the corner off the edge. So here, I'll just do it like that. Because you're going to get this, right? Again, that look to the field. So you get the track one-on-one, -on -one, you get the corner one-on-one. -on -one. That's what you get, right? Where you don't get that far, necessarily. You know what I mean? Yep. So um, all this is going to be all the same. So we're sitting here, right? And then where we at? We're here, we're here. Track, angle, right? Uh, slant, strong hook. Now he's going to buzz. So he's curled flat, but it's a really, it's a buzz. He's buzzing to this angle. Right? He's weak hook. Right? He is uh, strong hook. Gone. Right? In the corner over here, he's playing that forward. Right? So on this action, he's thinking cute. Right? The back's all set that way. But what you, what you get is, though, you get. That's the key when that guy comes in because you want you want to be able to hold that guard as long as you can. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the the flatter that tackle goes, the more the guard will come back. The more the tackle goes at the at the you know the track, you know, uh, the pin the ear hole, right? Put the the nose in, put the center of that egg out, and you get up the field. The more you want to track that guard, and now you got a one on one with that end. And that's what you're trying to win. You're trying to win with the, the bullet player too. So, um, yeah, it's Bledsoe. I mean, Bledsoe's been effective. And, you know, the thing, like we talked about before, we talked about the beginning, like the nickel and the limitations with nickel, is that in this one you can go far and check to Bledsoe. Bledsoe check to far. Yeah. Right? And do all that. Yeah. 
two by two. Yeah, then we trade him and the rover rushes. So that's a kind of a three man trade. I still remember that back at Utah State. We were talking about that. And uh, I go, man, what do you think? And, and I don't know, it was crazy because they were all kind of thinking the same thing, but it just sounds fucked up to say it out loud, I guess. But, so, like, say if it was this. I mean, I don't know, we haven't had a problem with it. Let's say if it was that way, fields that are. Okay, this was the other thing. I think I've said this. I've drawn all the stuff about tight ends and shit. Okay, so in, in all of them, in all of them, Far and the tight end's not attached, we will relate to the field. So you get you're coming from the three technique side then. You know what I mean? Okay. If it's Brady or Bledsoe, the tight end's attached, we will relate to the tight end. If the tight end's not attached, we will relate to the boundary. Coming from the tight end side here. But if this was if this was far, that drawing right there. That'd be river, river, river. The field to the right. If that we're, we're doing blood so right now. So this would be lake, lake, lake. Because the boundary's to the left. So see what I mean? So we wanted to come from the free technique. The reason for that is the angles. I mean, you can come from the shade side a lot. It's just um, I like the three better because the, the tackle, the, the tackle has to. Um, he's thinking um, combo on the three, and he has to take that extra step to where if it's just a shade and there's a lot of space, I think it's clear. You want some, you want some of this, and then get that as opposed to him just seeing being in a big window in here. You know, so I say nervous about this all the time. You know what I mean? With bringing guys off off this edge, right, and then him, because that's when you're gonna get this. You know, you're gonna get that more often in that look, right? Because he's man already. You, know, you see what I'm saying? When it's this way, you could still get that, but he's still there's he's still thinking this to me. Yes, you know what I mean? And so you're gonna get that better more than that. That's always the, when you're always bringing it from the shade or an egg out. On bubble side, you always have to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's where that, so let's just say if that happens, right, he's pushing that in. Let's just talk about that then, I guess. If this happens, he's pushing that in. He would still go to Q. That's where this guy has got to make you right. A linebacker. Yeah. He has to fit off that. And so we drill that. And that has to be a, we just call that a short fan. So if we had a short, that linebacker's got to fit off that track and make that right, you know, which is something that you got to work. Because it's, you know, because the thing about it, it to me it would be like, like, um, like radio stations, like at the, a lot of times for that Mac when there's movement, it's kind of rocking back, all that, you know what I mean? The old linemen are sideways, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's kind of like um, like Smokey Robinson, like cruising. Like I don't know, like the radio stations here in Minneapolis, St. Paul, just like old school, right? Um, Temptations, just cruising. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of times of how they're playing it. Kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Once they block out, though, the station changed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like fucking um, like Death Rock, right? It's like something else that's, that's changed now. Immediately, you gotta go. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yes. And that's what's got to happen there. So the Mac's kind of thinking, hey, I'm, right, I'm, um, I'm rope it open. You know what I mean? I'm working to the left to get the tackles to work up, and I'm coming back. But once the blockout occurs, so in other words, how do you know the blockout occurs? Because the space, fucking the Red Sea, the, the sea is parted. 
know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you know, once that happens, fuck that whole station changed. Hit it. So it's easy to kind of talk about, but he has to be drilled that way, right? He's got to roll. And so that's a good, it's good that we talk about that, you know? And, and all of that's true. Because if we're in, you're in the tight front, the same in the run game. So you're in the tight front, you get in the zone, you're kind of stacking four eyes, you're stacking zeros, you're rocking back and all that. Because their five are being occupied with your three. Mm -hmm. But once they run the lead play, the station changed. You know what I mean? It's no longer, it's no longer, um, you know, George Benson or something, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's what's happening right there with that one. Um, let's see. So if we're in this. Then I think there's, this is good to talk about this too, is that how to play this guy. We just kept him outside. We haven't really had an issue with him. I think there's, you know, the guys that have come up to the last, well, not anymore because we're in the league now, but it's Kentucky. And they made the point, Dave, on the trade, is it better just to keep the guy inside? And it might be, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you put him outside and then you can get the fan, right? They can work out there. You have yeah. more box. There's merit to do that. We haven't done that. You know, there's probably merit to do it. Right? So this would be a trade. You'd come down, right track, all this. It could look like that. Go on both yeah. sides. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably merit to just bring him, not kind of like we're doing an empty, you know, keeping him in and working him out. Yep. We just haven't done it. We haven't. Had, we have not put in far. Or if that tight end was attached, you'd still. Traded or would you? If two is removed, if there's a, a stand up and two stand ups in the boundary, we would trade it. Two stand ups, mm -hmm. but if the tight end's down, you're still gonna still rush. You're yeah. still gonna rush. Still rush the corner, and yeah. you're gonna put the uh, the rover. The rover gone. will be the gone player. It's a gone player. Yeah. And the Mac would have the A guy. From there, we could go, let's see. We could go load. So who is this? Is this dude? This dude? This dude? This is all pass now, right? You have a box like that, this is pass. All right, so we look at this. Um, Fox could be, could be this. Fox is really very similar to low Flacco. This is low Fox. So the patterns are the same. You're yeah. playing 3D now. That's the only difference, right? And so patterns would be the same thing. So I mean, the nickel's Russian though, right? So like now you get this. So it's going to be uh, what is it going to be? It's going to be this. Uh, him up, him here, right? So here's your your hook flat, hook flat <coughs> gone. Right, and it was form like a three man, a three man side. You had this and this. Right? So all it is is you're still, right? You're still rushing. All this is is low fox. It's far. Yeah. Just pushed, loaded, pushed out. Mm -hmm. So it looks different, but it's the same. So we had scissors to a two man side. And then we had the, the track to a three man side. So that was low fox. So like <coughs> that would be like if we're gonna play a lot of far on first and second down, then um, it is a good thought to play low fox on third down. So we're playing the same thing. It just looks different to them. You know. And then there you can move people around, do whatever you want to do, to show whatever you want to show. You know what I mean? If you could show population one way. To, to encourage 
protection to bring it the other way. Yeah. And then, um, uh, let's see. Then you could go this bird. So like bird would be. What would bird be? It's like Brady, right? So I blew it like that, and the field was this way. And then let's say we didn't do anything. We just lined up. We put him in a five. He's sitting here. Right? Here's our nickel. And that goes our Mac. And we show all this population that way. NCAA pattern from the boundary, bird. Yep. So bird is the odd version of the bird. So when we said bird, we said we meant, we just taught it when they said five techniques, we didn't call that another front. But that's basically how guys would line up, right? If we just lined up like in tight, you know, then that end would be a four I, and B would be a four I. We just widened down to the five, and we said bird. I mean, that's all it was. But we, again, we're going to try to show population in the field and then get out. So I, um, that NCAA pattern was the original pattern. We ran bird, though, and run, if it was a big on big team, we'd run that rover through the A gap, like we kind of talked about. Yeah. So he'd go through the A, and the end would go from the C gap to the B gap. If it's a big on big team, that's better. Like, um, like Minnesota, the like, like last couple years been a slide team, you know, so yeah. a slide or a turn team, yeah. and so that we would do that, right? That that pattern. Right. But if a team were to go big on big and fan out, mm -hmm. then we bring the rover and the A gap. Yeah. But all of that is the same as um, as. Uh, Brady and Far really, right? Yeah. I'm gonna go remedial on you for a second again because yeah. I didn't have I didn't have this written in enough um, to find out or anything. Lake and River. Mm -hmm. In terms of that communication for mm -hmm. you was in terms of setting the, is it set the strength? Yeah. Is that setting the, the where the where the uh, the tackles go. So if it was to be if we were to say like um, if we were to say the tackle, so the t like um, if the if we were to set the three, where we're setting the three, where we're setting the G. Yep. Okay. And so uh, on all of those, so I, well, let, let's go back. Let's say it's like Peso Man. Yep. We're in Peso Man. River Lake is the tight end if he's attached. No tight end. River Lake to the back. We're, set, we're set, yeah. The okay. two, we're set with the three technique is. Yeah. The the B is lying to the field. The F's lying to the boundary, and then we're set where the ends. Got gotcha. The two okay. guys. That's one. Yeah. And I didn't have that. Yeah. And then if we're in spike one rap, it's the same thing. You know. Tight tight end attached. Set it to the tight end. No tight end. Set it to the back. Okay. Belly train. Same thing. Yeah. Ryan hole is different. Ryan is Ryan left. Ryan right off the back. Yep. And then once we go far, Brady and Bledsoe, now we're saying if the tight end's attached, River Lake to the tight end. The only reason why we're doing that is we can make it look somewhat like fucking, um, you know, man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To have the same shades. If the tight end is not attached, then we want it to River Lake if it's far to the field. field. And then if it's a B word, to the boundary. Yeah. That's it. Okay, I want it. That's why I want to make sure I get that clear in my mind. Yeah. All right. So there's there is a uh, Favre, Lone Fox, Brady, and just Bird. Right. And then then you've got Mug and Bear. So we're not done yet. Right. So it's like, apparently in Louisiana, this is called gumbo. Right, where you take all the stuff from different things and just put it in a pot. It's kind of the same, the same thought. And so, so now this is the field. So now we could go. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. So let's see. We could go. Uh, let's do. Let's do far. Okay. Yeah, 
that's a, that's a Brady hit a turn in the bear. So let's do Mug Bar, okay? And so now we look like that. And to be honest, these were some of the better ones. Right here. Yeah. All right. So go. It's passing downs. So if we're if we're doing mug, we want to go mug and man, mug and three, mug and two, right? Yeah. And you'd like to have like a mug bliss, which we never had, but um, anyways. So that, yeah. all you're doing is run far. And so this is a track. We're here. We're here. We're here. We come down here. You know, once you climb up here, the concern always can you get to your work, and that's kind of that's the price of admission a little bit. Yeah. Right. That's kind of the yeah. price you're paying. Just got to run the guy out of there. He's got to go. Yeah. Gotta go. Gotta go. Here. Yeah. Yeah. The question I have, or one thing I was going to ask you, when the, when the when you're uh, uh, on the line mm -hmm. and playing a game. Uh huh. What did you coach that guy, or what do you coach that guy on, technique-wise? The action attack. So you want to go try to show footwork. It's like you're playing man-to-man. -man. Yeah. Like a, like a sand backer man-to-man. -man. Yeah. That's all it would be. Yeah. You know, so like, if that was a tight end, so what you'd want to go try to do is in front of that end right here, you want to be here initially. Still same footwork. Yeah, in initially, you want to go show this, and then as the cadence goes, you want to have to do this. Exactly. Be slightly yeah. tilted. And then okay. Slightly, slightly gotcha. Down. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. And okay. react attack. So how we play. I'll be interested to see how you guys play that. And he, the linebackers, was, mm -hmm. he reached be this way, goes down, and be this way. Like yeah. That. Um, gotcha. Then if it was trips, if it was trips, then um, so. Trade it. Yeah. That's how you got the. Okay, you ran one of those against uh, Northwestern, the loop mm -hmm. that guy. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're trying to figure out how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you got that? Would you ever trade based off of matchups? That tight end is just a just a dude, and you don't want to. I guess you could. You could. Yeah. We haven't, but you could. Man, mm -hmm. there's not that many great yeah. tight ends, but there's yeah. Yeah, the theory. The theory mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, man. Um, okay, I know what it is. So, you know what we didn't talk about before was pass strength at the boundary. So, yeah. let's talk about that. That might be a bigger piece, because then that affects the mug for it, too. So. This guy comes across, so you don't bolt him. The boundary. We didn't expand him, we kept him on the line. We said hook it. And then Rover played it to keep the, the surface of the end on the gotcha. field. Now, gotcha. um, it made a three call. Uh huh, three call. Yep. So it's hook it and it reads. Now, in the past, Utah State, in the first year at Wisconsin, we did not do that. You know, the guys that got us to do that were the BYU guys. They always come down, and they always did that. And I go, yeah, I know. 
But you know, you go back and you look at it. If you don't do it like that, and the end just walks out, well, fuck, there's an end over there. There's two. You mean like, yeah. oh, fuck. You know, I mean, that was us though. Utah State, the first year at Wisconsin, that's how we played it. Um, and we played it because it's simple. I think the simple kind of goes so far, you know. Um, yeah. And so we traded it. And now the other piece with it, too, is going to be, I mean, they could motion out of the fuck, they can run out there, right? You know, there's runs and all that. So the runs are affected as well, even more so, to be honest. And so that was a hook it, and that was a trade it. So we, so, or, or a hook it, rather, and a three call. So the rover would come out. So this is the hook it, and then this was a three call. So then he comes out, comes out straight back, and then he's rerouting, and it's moving on a third. That's how that would look. This guy would throw the work on, right? And then uh, he's playing a hook fly over there. And look at like that. Now, the other thing about this, too, um, is, the, is when you played the hook it out and run actions, Okay, so like say they got, say it's that look right there, or say there's no motion yet, and they went speed option, we play it out the same way. Play that like that. Gotcha. Yep. So he stayed on the line, he overplayed it, he played pitch. Right? Or say, um, say this guy came back in, like this, and they did like that. Any run action, you know, I mean, this way. You know, they, the, the rover just went with the, with the ball. And the end stayed on the line. So the end didn't come off. The end stayed on. What, what, what's the other thing you'll get? You'll get um, all of these are like bad things, right? What's the other thing you get? Let's say it's fly motion. Yep. And you get um, this, this, and this. Yep. So you want the rover plays this. Once that motion goes, you're going to hook it right now, and mm -hmm. yep. he ends up being the, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, once this fly, so the, the motion part of it would be since the quarterback was here, and he did this, and we're getting ready for the hook, no matter whatever, whatever the indicator was. Exactly. But, yeah. We came back in the USC game, our guy Jack Sitchie is a good player. He uh, was a walk-on and all that. He he was he kind of ended up being a starter at Wisconsin at the end there, you know. And it was your it was our game, right? Yeah. You yeah. get the guy. Yeah. 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 And so, um, yeah, Jack's a hard hit, bro. He's a good kid. He's just a hard hit. So, yeah. He's from Minnesota. He's yeah. from there. Yeah. yeah. And so, where's he from? Dilmer. Yeah. He missed that. He missed that first half. So we're playing the true freshman, Chris Ola. So Chris has got probably a little bit more feel football wise. Jack's a much better rusher, slippery. Yeah. yeah. I think Jack probably Jack's the better player. Mm -hmm. And so um, we came in with Jack and we ran Panther. <coughs> so it was like this, right here. This was it, this Panther. But this was into the to the boundary. And they ran motion like this to the field. Oh, I remember. And yeah. it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and that was like his second play or first play from yeah. the you know, it was like that might have been the very first play. Yeah, throw the half, yeah. So he's got to go, right? That's a hook it. Yeah. So he was, I probably should have called somebody to get, him, get his feet set up, but anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, with all that being said, okay, so that's, that's, that's how we would play off far. Pass your strength over there. Then, um, if it was mug far, and return him to bear and pass your strength that way.
which if we were like in mug Bledsoe versus two by two, it would look like that too. Because the rover's got um, not necessarily twins to the boundary, but pro to the boundary, twins to the field. The rover would have a gone on a tight end, right? So the Mac would be the only guy in the core. So I'd say if it was like that. Um, is this way. Let's say we were in the mug blood cell. So the roll would be here and the back would be here. Like that. Yeah. Like that. Right, we'll turn it there. But if there's anything but that book, we have two guys in, so now it's like mug blood cell. If we're going to go mug, the first call we would probably do would be man. You want to see how they would block it. You want to see if they, if the guards would, if they put the back in the A gap, or if they would turn it. You know what I mean? You want to see if the, if they were going to turn it all down and put the back on the edge, like turn and protect. Mm -hmm. So you go man, because that, that way you're hug rushing it, or, you know, if they do block down, you got an end right on the back, right? And so you look at that first, but then after that, then I would have these ones. These would be my other ones, you know? And then I get into all the twists and stuff inside, you know? We uh, messed around with this. I didn't really keep it, but it was, it, we got to eight man drop off of this mm -hmm. and do this, and we would still get that right. happening there. With all that other shit dropping, that's out. big. That's big. And you're getting a guy four yards deep in the backfield right. in a one on one, right. and you're only rushing through. Yeah, the Panthers do that. How how often? How much have you guys done that? <laughs> we, did, we, we only did it in the bowl game. Messed it with the bowl game, okay. and it was one of those things that, that, all, that we, all, all through the practices, all three guys got to the court. All through the practices, <laughs> we we did it, and every, about damn near every time we were getting a one on one with the back. We're like, awesome. We really like us. Yeah. So then we did it in the bowl game, and the time that we the one it was one of those things like. Fuck, we should have done a lot more because the one time we did it, everybody hit the quarterback. Yeah, that's awesome. And it was, and, and it was on sprint. <laughs> yeah, the Panthers do that. And so, so what we we're going to tie in with it, like when we did it, we did it off of more like the Belichick concept where we we showed one high and did this. The only thing is, is we were just true zoning this here yeah. and getting you know curl, you know playing right. it that way. But the thing that um, that in looking at it, I want to be able to have a way to zone it, but then to also have a way to, when you get to this part of be able to be the curl flat there, leave this as the buzz bender, mm -hmm. and then play the gone here, mm -hmm. and let that guy play high, mm -hmm. get your droppers. No, that's great. And do that. Yeah. That's great. The the and then, you know when in the Brady in the Brady three with the 49ers, they played it that way. So the safety came down right weak mm -hmm. Brady three or into the boundary, but they had the Mac the responsible for it. So gap wise, <coughs> Mac had the gas we talked about. Yeah. But pass wise, they flipped the responsibilities. So the Mac played the back out on the check down, which a lot of times that he was being occupied with the oh yeah the rover rushing right yeah and so the Mac didn't have the the back the Mac more or less had curl flat and you're kind of saying that's okay because we're hoping he's occupied exactly and the safety had the bend so the Mac yeah. didn't have the bend he didn't yeah. have the weak hook the safety did yeah like what you're showing yeah. right there yeah that's uh, if we got one way to zone it one way to match it that's awesome yeah and then you get but just uh, you know off of that. One look, we were wanting a way, you know, hey, you got a way to play man, right. way to play zone, right. and then, you know, we've we've been a trap cover two type of team, yeah, and we have a one high way to do that, right, and so it would be, it was something that we're off of this, 
to this type of look, where two by two we just play gone on both sides. Right. But the three by one, we drop him out, um, rush, drop, do that, okay, drop. But then we would go and look man over here. He would be a dropper, he would be vertical two, he would be vertical three. Push here and try to track it. Right. We we fooled TCU into one like that in that type of look right. in the first game when we played them. Right. Is we had a one high look, oh, yeah. safety off an edge, and all of a sudden they wanted to throw one of the blitz beaters, and there was a corner, and the nickel was hanging out out there right. like That's a cover two corner, and they yeah. couldn't throw that look. Right. So it's trying to find a way to have okay, right. a few different looks off of this to where right. you just you don't right. know, That's and good. and you sit there and you just you know. Yeah, because it's something. That it is. It's a problem. When you get those guys up there, shit happens quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you watch, you know, like you guys ruined Rutgers in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we're watching that. And it's like, dude, this is. Uh, yeah. So, bug bear. And so all of the bug and bear would be just dependent on. Like, mug is always good, but you go bear too. But it's all, you know, it's whatever the theme of. That game plan is, you know, what are you doing in in, uh, in belly? Is it bug or bear? And then you know, the far the blitz, the yeah. tight end, and then uh, the the two kicks and the two packers would all tie in too. You run a blitz, so bring in the safety too, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, we could, you know, a lot of it, you know, who which is, the, I mean, that's yeah, who same. is the yeah, the, who is the X? Is the biggest thing there. Okay. And then who's the corner, you know? Yep. And, um, and the after that, that'd be like question one, two part question, I guess. And then question two would be, you know, um, who's the best blitz? You know, if the safety is that much better, then you're going to say. Um, so, yep. I think from the disguise standpoint, the corner is the, still the schematically is the better way. Yeah. The safety's got ways as well. I mean, time it out and all that, but it's still, it's a, it's a huge operation. Yeah. I like bringing the safety when you play coach, too. You know, and you bring the safety in, and the nickel comes back, and the other safety comes back. So that way, there's merit, I think, because you want to use that whole operation. But, um, I got to bring another movie reference. I apologize. All my <laughs> movies references are like back when I watched movies. You know what I mean? Exactly. So they're way old. There's like, I will say in Private Ryan again. So like this, in that movie, the at the end of it, like the Germans are coming right to to where um, Private Ryan is, and who's that? Tom Hanks' character, the captain. So they're all hidden out, and there's a French town, and uh, you know they know the Germans are coming, so they get their hideout and all that. They got the sharpshooter guy on top of the bell tower or whatever it is, but the Germans are coming, and you just the ground is shaking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's all this and fucking the tanks and all of it. So they, you know, it's, it's, it's like a, uh, a, a dread because here it comes, you know, and all this. And I think that is the same as that safety coming down. You know what I mean? So you want to use that against them as opposed to the safety's really fucking Russian guys. And you know, yeah. just throw it right behind his yeah. ear because it's such a big operation. It's you know what I mean? And so I like doing that, but then playing coverage behind it, like quarters, you know, half. But yeah. the, um, which I, we didn't even talk about like uh, the other way with quarters is to play. I don't know how much it. You know who does this a lot is the guy at. Uh, see, I forget. Right, so Bart Bradshaw. I forgot about this. So like so like, um, yeah, the quarterback. You start running out of quarterback game. So like say if it was this and this, and so over here. So all things, kind of, how is this guy? That's the kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go over here, and then, so you could play quarter quarter half of this, and we haven't done it. You know, um, you could do that though, right? Where you're just doing this, right? And then he comes out, so he's a nine. He kind of walks out, and then so he's playing. Uh, you're on two. He's playing on three. Playing on two. That's your rush. That's the a red shot. The like match right. had to carry three vertical. Uh, this was still quarters. Oh, okay. so this was still gold, right? And oh, this okay. was still whatever. Now, 
to this side, the only difference was we always played red hammer or we played nail. Okay. Right? So even if it was trips, that's what we played. Right? So gotcha. the corner still came. And in the end, you know, the end played here. He didn't play out here. You know what I mean? And so he would be kind of showing all this, and then the Mac was here on three. In was there, and then the, these safeties played nail to those two, and then this other safety played. Uh, or I'm sorry, the nickel played nail with those two. Safety played here, other safety here. So you could do it where it was just this, you know, the same thing. Yeah, the one was here. But all it is is quarters, right? The team that does this a lot is um, Houston. The guy that was after um, Orlando, Todd Orlando, that came after Utah State, mm -hmm. they started running this a bunch. We ran it some, but they they run it way more. This mm -hmm. is like their far split so There's a way to put you up for that. There's merit to it in this for me to bring this, and then really if you wanted to, to play half over here, that's what we would like to do it. Yeah. This whole, that's the tanks and saving private right there. Mm -hmm. That whole thing, right? You use that and then play something else behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially that this guy can do something. Right? Yeah. That's that one drill we talked about. With those guys can actually, it helps if you're rushing guys that can rush, you know. Um, all right. So then, then we got the, the two. I start, I go with the two Packers. You know, the, the two. Um, we went and visited, or I went and visited the uh, Saints like the second week I was there. And. Um, they uh, they would go uh, I think they call this area I can't remember but they would go cloud here and then over here this used to be our two pack I guess the reason why I'm bringing this up so this was man to man and then the nickel over here he played cloud yeah that was a half. And then they had, you know, a guy here and then a guy here. And they played with 10, right? So it was 10 on 10 instead of 11 on 11. And we used to, that used to be the back when I was at Texas Tech and even the beginning there at Hawaii or Houston and all that. That was two Packers. That was it. It was actually cover two, you know, packed in, right? Yeah. And um, we just got away from that because of the play action pass and the verticals to the trip side. You know the seam routes and all that. Yeah, we got away from it a little bit. But I, you know, when I talk to the Saints and those guys, they run it when the slot is the main guy. If the slot is the option route guy, if he's the main, they run that to get hands on to beat him up. You know, and that makes sense. I haven't thought of it that way, and it's been since I don't know how long since we played it like that. But I think there's merit to it, and, and you know, we're already doing the other stuff, and so uh, our two packer has been more or less man, right? That's always the thing about it is that once you start trying to cover people, the danger is you always try to cover them. You know what I mean? Yeah. The more the coverages get the same and all that other thing. So to that side, that corner is locked, but the nickel and the safety play nail on two and three. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's nail. And so it's really, I guess, man, quarter, half. Is what it yeah. is, right? Yeah. Man on the corner, quarter right there. Yeah, half over there. Yeah. That's really what it is. That's a that's what two packer is for us. We play that. Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, the the coverage inside that one that one circle inside the Y that's a nail hook, right? So that's the, that'd be the same drop that we run in the two by two. Yeah, we don't really do anything different. It's the same. And so any other guy that's on the red hammer and all that, it's the same drop. And the drop over here to the X, um, the cloud, we call that a vertical hook. So what that means is if that two were to go vertical, we don't turn and run with him, we pedal with him, but he goes as deep as that drop goes. So he won't settle on the cue, he'll take the seam out. So he seams out that two. Um, and so we, in two packer, we'll go, so if it's trips, this is nail.
weakness is uh, nail hook. And so the, the weakness is always going to be that. You know, and he can aggressively yep. hit it because he's, um, he's topped off. And then over here, uh, this is a vertical hook. Right, this cloud. Now, mm -hmm. if it was, um, say, if it was, you play cloud whenever there's just a single receiver. So say it's something like that. So if we're in two packer here, then this would be nail. This would be cloud, right to that pro side, yeah. right like that. And so then that's where that vertical hook comes. So, so do you have one of those VA keys or a, a key? Okay. I'll let myself in the, out of the locker room. Appreciate. So you would cut over that tight end. Yeah. You know, we finally started playing cloud to a pro side last year. We played Iowa two years ago. We almost lost that game two years ago um, at their place because uh, they they got hot. That one receiver got hot and was making jump catches over our guys. And we're in two packer, and we didn't play cloud to a pro side. There was just two eligible receivers we played, like Nail and Red Hammer, and it got to a point to where it's like, kind of what we're saying, you try to cover everybody. Yeah. The problem is all the coverage are the same. And so, the, you know, we're in that, and they throw a, a, a fade up to Z and fucking they caught it again. Yeah. And that was like two packer. Like, what the fuck are we supposed to call now? You know yeah. what I mean? If, that, if that's the case. So it was after that that we finally learned the lesson and you could cloud to that. So we clouded it. You know, if you're a vertical hook player, kind of sinking back with that tight end. Um, we're a lot of quarter, quarter, half to these type of things, and it'll just depend on where we put the quarter. Right. We may play the quarter to the tight end, play the half right. to the I gotcha. twins, I gotcha. carry number two with the nickel. Right. Or right. we'll play the four to the twins and, and carry number two with the backer. Right. And do that no, that's good. And, and change. Right. So we're always changing that right. based on it's more on who the receiver is and right. where the matchup. No, that's good. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah. I can see that. I can see the need for that for sure. You play some people. We just we're going to tell you, hey, you have to throw it to the field. Right. Then right. we're going to take away the boundary, and if you sit over there, right. you know, you just say, okay, do you have the arm to do it? Do you have the guy to do it? Right. Do you have receivers that can beat us out there? That do it? And then other people, you know, right. you can't do that. With, so. Right. Um, if it was two by two, like double twins, you'd be nailed both sides. Okay. We play, so we haven't played files to that. It's all just the nail. You're just leaving the nickel to the field there. So even if, if you had, uh, um, you get to that, do you have like a trips into the boundary check then when you play two packer? Yeah, so if it's, um, uh, if it's two packer and it's trips in the boundary, where nickel makes a uh, stack call, so the nickel makes a stack call and he's got three votes. That's exactly what the one was against USC then. Mm -hmm. That's what you were. So then you're still you're still playing yeah, man on is, one. Yeah, this is nail to this side. Yeah. This is cloud to that side. So that's okay. So the nickel stacks it. He's got three verticals. Mm -hmm. And then this guy drops one. Which is like a trade goal. You say stack. Okay. And then you're you're, you're still you're whatever your other guy is. And then in that situation there, your nail hook player would take three on the wheel or something like that then? Um, this one right here? Yes. Yeah, he has three to the flat. Okay. Yeah. Two packers special for us, and that's what we right. we play a lot of. That. Right. And right. It's your it's cover three. Only you're matching the number three more. You right. know, or in terms mm -hmm. of, I mean, in in a sense of it, it looks similar, I guess. And then you know the um, uh, we tried to make it look like single high because this was the only 
thing we really had in all of it where we gave the X, the corner to the X and the leaf, you know, this was the one call we had, yeah. you know, outside of the eight man drops. Yeah. So I remember when we first got to Wisconsin, it was like, I had never seen, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but I had never seen so many white guys play at the secondary in my life. <laughs> And so that was a big concern, right, yeah. at the beginning. And um, I remember uh, the BYU guys came over. And so to me, those were the guys to talk to because they, they did a great job. Yeah. You know, I've always done a great job of pressuring. And they play hard, and they got more white guys than we do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you know, I asked, because I remember it like at, at, when I was at, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Kalu. It's yeah. kind of the same thing, talk, DBs. O linemen for them, DBs yeah. for us, and so we're really at the, you know, at, with Division Three, just that experience. There'd be a lot of DBs where, if the receiver was kind of going this way, going vertical, we wanted the DB to line up like this, and just to give us a chance. You know, man, get the fuck out. <laughs> 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 and so, and yeah, and that was kind of the lot. I was that was the main thing I was asking them. But they said no, you know, that they said that the less athlete, which is all makes it I just didn't think this way. They said the less athlete, the more space you give them, the more zone you play, the harder it is, at least for them. You know, you want to take that yeah. less athlete and play them closer to the guy. Yeah. Right? Tighter space, you can play more effective, you know. Yeah. And so it was like I didn't really wasn't thinking that way. I was thinking, you know, um, you want to get back. Right, yeah, get back, get more space, but there's more space for that, more grass for that guy to cover it. Yeah. You can't cover it, you know. So, um, what we try to do is show single high in Packer. And show like a buzz look or a sky look and then come back. Okay. Right, get this guy come yeah. back and play nail. Get this guy come back and play cloud, right? Yeah. And try to entice guys to throw it over there. And so, um, yeah. That Leave the corner on his own in your look. Correct. And then get back. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. So that's all tied in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the stack alignment versus trips in the boundary. And then uh, I, that one there I like because that's been one that. Yeah, it plays like Tampa, really. Yeah. Point. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, well, I mean, we get into that same thing. You see, we, we've taken the nickel. So much of our base rule was nickel goes passing strength, and he ends up being that nail hook dropper. But then all of a sudden you get two by two into the boundary and now motion it to three by one. We're running the nickel across the field. And, right. you know, you get into a lot of things where you're running guys right. a lot. Yeah. And right. there's yeah. you know, advantages and disadvantages yeah. to it, but it's it's also – Motion adjustments aren't clean at times because right, right. you're always going, okay, now if this is motion here, right. and this is what we're doing. You right. know, we got to run the guy. Right. I've noticed a lot of what you do that nickel yeah. isn't running all over the place, and I like yeah. that. This is very much, this defense would be, this is, um, you know, players are good players. They're smart, they're tough. There's some individual guys that are guys. Huge. Right, but there's no like LeBron James. There's no right um, Kobe Bryant's, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and so this is very much like this is this is like Bernie Sanders shit. Right, this is there's some socials. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone, every, it's gonna all be paid for. Right? We're all gonna pay for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's some taxes involved. Yeah. Right. It's not the capitalists where you get you make all the money and all the rest of us are doing all the work. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's LeBron and you're going. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So this, and I think based upon the players, I guess LSU with some of the players, I don't know if that's the, that's the way we're going to do it. Right? Yeah. Right. Where right. it's all kind of played out and everyone, you know, we get a, a really good outside backer and he's dropping half the time. I don't know. You know, we had good outside backers at, at Wisconsin, but they were good based upon some of the other guys were not very good. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So that you, know, you looked at them in maybe a little bit different light. There's some like one of the guys we got now, it's Arden Key. He just lights out, man. Right. I mean, he rushes. They people just cannot block him. And so, that best defense maybe just 
fucking art and rush, you know. Which I've never <laughs> been around. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Yeah. Right. I've never think? been around that before. Don't make that's some That's my money. first time, to be honest. <laughs> it's the first time of ever being in that spot. And so, you know, I guess the defense is set up. And that, you know, another way of saying all this is that everyone gets to play basketball. You all, I pass it to you, you pass it to him. You yeah. pass it to you, you have the shot, you take it. Yeah. I yeah. pass the ball to you, you pass it, you take the shot. You're yeah. open. You know, yeah. that's different than, you know, I'm the guy. Clear yeah. arm key, and then you guys clear it out <laughs> as one on one. Yeah, four by one cell. That's well. different. Yeah. Exactly. And so <laughs> when we're doing all that, and the nickels to the field, and all this other thing, Right, it's all got to be sold that everyone has a part, and we're playing team defense, right? Because yeah. we're attacking them schematically. Yeah. And we're attacking them with numbers. We're attacking. We're morphing us to attack their weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to just um, uh, attacking them with ability and whatever else. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. And so okay, so if, um, if we're in like Breeze, okay, so this is Breeze. Okay. Packer. All of it's going to be the same now. So now we're this way. We're here and we're here. And so it's going to be uh, or is it easier in A. Okay, so here yeah, let's just do it that way. So we look like that. And so he's going to get out. This is a cloud. Right, he's going to come back. So this is a nail here with these two. Right, this guy's locked. Right, so this is a track. Zero, and he has the A to the ball, right? And then over here, he's playing that vertical hook on two. And then this guy right here is playing a nail hook. Now he does that from a nine. And so he's going to squeeze. That was always a big thing. We don't cheat him inside, even though it's a nail hook. We beat him up. So if he gets an inside release, he's beating that, beat that up. And he's going to convert to inside leverage. So we play it from out to in. Now, a lot of times, we will get that release, and so that helps us. But yeah. If you were to release inside, I'm beating it up and squeezing on it. And, you know, we, so, um, the other thing about that is that back will block that rover, and we will get help vision from that back leg. Yeah. Right? And so at times that, that nail hook will look like a strong hook for him, right, based upon the release of three. But yeah. as long as he's physical and hands on the tight end, it's all good. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's Breeze. And so what you like about Breeze is that's real simple. It's not a big thing. But that's the protection you get. Okay? Is that you get the end on a track and you can roll with one on one. And so uh, if you got two by two, it played out. And so Times if it's true, I should probably show it that way. Because again, we're all showing 3D. They show it like that. Come out. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then the thing you could do too with these is uh, if it's empty, it plays. Right? Um, is you've gone. Load it, you can load the breeze, right? So, like if you had something like this, and you had this in, right? You could go like that from the rover. That'd be load breeze, loading the boundary.
run that one on. I mean, not that one out the load, but you run Breeze some. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, two years ago it was a really good call. You know, Derek Landish, who's a rover, was a really good player. And so we rushed Derek quite a bit. This last year we didn't run him as much. Our rover wasn't. We should have run him more with Jack towards the end because Jack was a good rusher, but in the, the middle part of the year we just didn't have a guy that you know, could win that one-on-one -on -one consistently. The freshman linebacker we have, but um, yeah, there's a lot of merit to Breeze, especially in the three by one. So Breeze would be similar in my mind to like where Brady was, right? You're getting the one on one on the back, yeah. and then you're you're taking away that X. And so the three by one, you like it. Um, if it was bunch, we played out the bunch, so we didn't we didn't um, we played. So I don't know if that's really the best. That's what we did, though. This is the, the simplest thing. So the nickel and the safety <coughs> still played their nail. In the corner, you were still locked, but you still had these guys inside. So we played it. I mean, what we used to do with that was play, uh, you know, what's hard is that we don't have anything. We don't play split. We don't have anything where the Mac plays three and got a level three vertical okay. by himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's where that's the reason for why we do it like that. You know, so like if if we had stuff like if we were a quarter quarter half team and the Mac was used to running the three, you know, knowing that hey, I got to see this and now I got to take three vertical. Yeah. yeah. Then it wouldn't be a big deal because it'd be just part of what you are, but. None of the linebackers carry three vertical. Like I know, like yeah. who was the guy? Andy Boo was a friend of mine. We kind of came up together, I guess, out in California, and he was at Cal for a little bit, and now he's at Kentucky. And he, he was off for a year after Cal, and he went and visited Florida. And Florida at the time, and that was the, the guy. The guy that was at Michigan just recently. And, Dirk. Yeah, and all their stuff is like linebackers carry three vertical. And, and Andy had never been around that, and I never really have either, but I know people do it quite a bit. And, yeah. and Andy was going, it's like nothing for them. I mean, it's like these receivers are like, are fucking going, and the Macs are just taking them and running with them, and they don't even think about it. And I'm talking to him, Dave, and it's going, oh, yeah, the Macs got them. And Andy will walk out and go, what the fuck? <laughs> you, mean, yeah. it's just, you know, it's just so different, right? Yeah. Or at least for him, it kind of is for me too, to yeah. be honest. But... I don't know, maybe, I think what that is, some of it, because I'd like to, to have like someone study that, because I think that is different for linebacker guys, to be honest, right? Mm -hmm. For linebacker coaches, oh, that's different. For DB coaches, oh yeah, Mac will take them, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we got <laughs> double the X, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> right? That's how it is, to be yeah. honest. That's how it is, yep. right? And you look at the front guys, and who knows what's happening, right? If it's yeah. a front yeah. guy, who knows? You guys do yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's all, but I guess we never had it with three, the guys run the three, so that's why we play it that way, right? Yeah. If we had it, because here's the thing, we, we didn't used to, we did this last year, and I liked it, because it was easy, and we just played it out, and there's, you see it on tape how it matched up, but um, the, year, the year before, a couple years before, we played it in two, so it was Packer, and then that came, and we just played two and Cloud, mm -hmm. but the problem with Cloud would be, would always be, there, in every way, there'd be one route where that it was a bender, and three went vertical, and the Mac just never played it. You know what I mean? Because he's not used to playing it. Right. Yeah. He's not used yeah. to playing that guy. Now all of a sudden, it's bunch, and now it's cloud, and we go, okay, Mac's going, yeah, got it, and fucking three. You know what I mean? And so it's just like, we stopped doing it. You know what I mean? Because it just changed. It was, it was, the secondary kind of played in a similar vein, right? But for the, the, the inside guy, it changed the world did. completely. Yeah. And I never did a good enough job of making that connection. And so this was the way of saying this was the compromise. It just played out. Yeah. So these guys continued to play the nail. So there's times where, like, you know, this guy would come in and he would fall, but then you'd have your whole players or you'd have your, your zone and, you, and he'd fall off, which we'll see on the Yeah. But anyways, that's how we played the bunch. So the bunch play. And okay. the reason was for the vertical part. Because that's the thing. You could just play quarters to a two, right? You could go box, mm -hmm. but it'd be the same thing. Like, like Northwestern will go this and run verticals out of that. And so it's the same. Yeah. He's taking three vertical. The guy that never takes them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so 
lattice breeze than if it was merino. So we're in merino this way. Merino, we would always, merino in Montana. boundary, Montana was middle from the field. So Merino, we always put the river lake to the fields. Or Merino, we always put it to the boundary. Montana, we always put the river lake to the field. So we always want that three technique here. So it looked like that. And then uh, we would have this and this. Right? So anytime it was two by three by one, we look like that. Anytime it was two by two, we look like that. You know what I mean? So it's a buzz, you know, that goes two by two. You want it to look like this. Because there's your nickel, you want it to look like that. You know what I mean? That was your thought for Packer. And so we look like that there, and then, you know, he's coming out. And it's this, and it's a nail here, and it's locked. And then, so the, the roller over here, he's going to hit this A gap. This is the lake. Okay? And then we tried to, to rub or pick the guard. And the, the tackle over here, he's played, what these guys are basically playing is the reader that we talked about before with quarters, mm -hmm. right? And so he's going to hit that B, he's going to hit that um, B gap, and he's going to work to the tackle. If the tackle's fanning, right, he's going to get to the back and ricochet up the contain. If the tackle's blocking down, he's going to push and get vertical in the B. Right? This ends reading the tackle. The tackle fans, he's up the field, and he comes around. The tackle blocks down. He's off the, off the gas and a contained rusher. These guys are playing what we call a leader. That's all. Right, this G over here is going to push up in the G, and then he's going to work uh, to entertain, right, and entertain the guard, and then work in the B gap, ear hole, face mask, and contain. Right, the back's going to push out, and his vertical hook on two. The end is going to work his nail hook on uh, three. Three or two, depending on how you count that. And so, if it was a run, it's A, B, C, you know, A, B, C, you're just coming off the edge, right? Or if they block down, like I said, they turn the protection, you know, the ends one on one on the back, which you have to rep that to get that effect. I mean, you have to rep it because he'll be one on one on the back, but he'll kind of be like this if you don't rep it a ton. So he blocks down and watch him go right at him, you yeah. know what I mean? So he's reading that on the run, I'm going. And the three is gonna, yeah. The read he's it. reading, yeah. He's, so he's going. He's um, he's a gap charge, and so he's reading off the the, the tackles. He's um, the tackles tip of the pad. And he's so, reading off the tackle. Um, okay. So if that tackle blocks out, then he's working to get to the back of the tackle and ricochet the contain. If the tackle blocks down, then he's ripping and running vertical on the B out. So he's in the gap. And then the rover we taught it to where he would he would work um, to do the same thing the tackle's doing on the guard. Now we don't always get that. I didn't want to watch the film. There'd be times you see that, it was inconsistent, there's times we didn't. But then you're running this out of mug and mm -hmm. you're running it out of mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. If we just if we just call it just base, then it was always in the boundary, Marino, Rover. Now we traded it if it was two by two. So if it was two by two, the Mac rushed and the rover dropped onto it. Okay. So if it was two by two over here, the rover would drop and the Mac would rush. That same A gap though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. See now we got it as marked here, or here, reading it like that, and then we got it out there. Yeah. Uh, let's see we're here, and we're here. Like that. But the 
cushion points are still the same. Why? Who is that rover? when it's the zero? But really, who's the center too? You know, that part of it. Um, you know, can we dictate them in protections? Can we get them to be a certain way? That's part of it. The other part with bear is like, who's the center? You know, what I mean? yeah. if a lot of times that's there's times where that center is not a really good piece. You get your best guy now. So the part of it, say your best guy is, uh, is is this guy. That's your best guy. So then it's like this. And then yeah, you're putting a one on one on that guy and winning. Yeah. And so now you start changing the pieces, which is you know, this is Marino for this week or whatever it yeah. is. And so we used to, and I think that's the best way to do it, to be honest, because like the stems, you know, we stem quite a bit. And so we could have language of, hey, we're going to stem. Um, what you don't want to do, and I think we made the mistake of trying to do it, is like create a philosophy or fucking create a language. Because after a while, it gets to be like, like really? Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, the, the, like say the language could be, Hey, I'm going to stem from a four-man front to an odd front. I'm going to stem from an odd to a four-man front. I'm going to stem from these shades to these shades. So you got, you know, you could say like tight move buzzer, tight move falcon, tight move eagle, tight move hawk, and run all your stuff. Yeah. And then eagle, move tight, buzzer, and you can do all that. And then, I mean, it just gets to be, you're like a West Coast offense now. Yeah. With your call. Right? And so... But we've done that, to be honest. Shameful to say, we've done that. Now, the 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 best way I think is just to say, is to have a call that just says move, and the D line coaches with his guys and say, hey, this week the move is this, yeah, and that's what you're doing. You know what I mean? And they know it, and you're dealing with humans. You know what I mean? And not robots and shit. And just say, hey, that's what we're doing. And then it's quicker for everyone else. They get the move. They don't. They don't need to know because they. they the other thought would be, well, hey, let's have different words. We could say, you know, um, like, uh, I don't know, cheeseburger means move from this to this. Mm -hmm. Hamburger means move from this to this. Chicken sandwich means this. Ham sandwich means this. But at the same time, that's still a lot. You know, yeah. And it's just, you're just, we've, we've tried to yeah, and I think, jump shift, and move, I think the, stem, I think yeah. it's just, hey, this week, this is how we move. And you do it that way. In the beginning, in the beginning, I would not have thought that. I would have thought we'd like to be more, we'd like to be like professional, you know, yeah. and have it a system and do all that. But I just say this to you after having done the other way. Yeah. That the, the just getting, hey, we're going to move like this this week. We're going to move in camp. This is our move. It is immediately faster and better and quicker than having a term. So it's a trigger of, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's the same with this. Like we could call that something. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But it's better just to say, hey, you and you switch this week. Right? And whatever this is, Marino, you switch. Yeah. And then you rep that and say that's Marino for this week. Now what you have to say is next week, you know, okay, what's what is Marino like? Okay, Marino's back to the old one. You kinda we yeah. talk like that. Mm -hmm. But this would be better than saying, Hey, this is like um, you know, I don't know. This is Pepsi Marino, right? We're gonna run Coke Marino. I mean, it's like whatever, it's just you're building all this. So you want to be, what is the way to have your cake and eat it too, I guess is the thing, right? Yeah. And it's been more of just like, hey, uh, you with me, you got it, we're good, that way. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to naming a bunch of stuff and then going, because once you name it, then you're more a labeler than a coach, I think. Yeah. That's just opinion, I guess. All right, no, so but you're right, because then you got to come up with, you get yeah, close eight thousand signals and you stops. get close eight thousand. Yeah, it never stops. Yeah. Uh, so I think but I think you know, I think some people like that though. I think some people they enjoy that. Like the, uh, and so other people do not. And I think that probably has more to do with it. So okay, so yeah, so mug and bear. Um and then Montana would be the same thing, just from the field. Yeah, but we're playing two kick. You know? Okay. 
But let's go with Rodgers, I guess. Okay. Rodgers was so... Um, Rodgers kind of replaced Brees two years ago. We ran every game. That was a major call. And we still ran... We still ran Brees this year, and I like it. Uh, we ran more Rodgers, really, than any other call. Mm -hmm. And so, Rodgers... Uh, was two running back. So Rogers was uh, what was Rogers? What was the the, the, the scout that was yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was Rogers. And so um, the Rogers had a different had a couple different. Uh, let me see if I can remember. Rodgers, it was to the back, but we gave them two patterns, so they chose them. They would call a pattern out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they had the options. So they could spear it like this, or they could, you know, this and some of the defense would call something else, but this would be, this would be a spear. Right? We called this a bomb, beat the tackle going through the B gap, so they bomb it, they spear it. Right? Uh, we called this um, uh, straight. Right, and then we call this uh, track. So th those terms they just use. So they didn't really mean anything to the nose and the end that was dropping. You know, but it was you know those those three that they would communicate. So right. the bomb, and then, the top one up up there. That was the track. Yes, the track. Yeah. Um, yeah. This was a scrape. Scrape. This was a bomb. That was a spear. And so that that's all going to show up. And we ran this in Nebraska. We ran Rogers every every game, I think. Um, like versus versus Minnesota, we ran um, we ran Smash. He's got such a big slide team. So you know, we want to show people here. It was just NCAA. Never went with more than two, but they had two. So you would you would just call Rogers two packer two packer, and then they pick the pattern. Correct. So yeah. they would on, they yeah. on the field. The outside back would work. Yeah. He would call it, mm -hmm. and it would be similar to what we talked about. If that back flip, we just played it. We yeah. didn't we didn't try to change it. Because the big thing is we're field defense again. I think when you blitz a back, and again this is a four man rush, but when you blitz a back. It's much easier when you're a man. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's some moving parts when you're in zone. And then there's way moving parts if you're in zone and you blitz it back and the back trades or, or flips. And then you flip. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some people changing the responsibility. So the man, you know, like the Ryan one hole, the spike, all that, that's when we're kind of tied yeah. into that. Um, but then if he flips, we wouldn't change it. But the, okay, so let's talk about, you know, Rogers and how we line up. It's been a while. We're not, we're nowhere near Rogers right now at LSU, so let me see.
let's do Bob, I guess. So we're going to go Bob in this. So Rogers, if we're in the odd, we're going to load the front. So we, all we'd say is Rogers right. Rogers right. And then we will go Bob. Right? So we're going to look like this. that are rushing. Are these guys? Now you get your other hand. And then the rover. The oh, rover. yeah, the, the other hand. So in, tackle. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it. And then you got the man. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so those are the guys that are rushing. So we bomb, right? That would be a bomb. And then we get a line that way. If the back were to flip, we just play. If we wanted to scrape it, we could scrape it. Whatever we want to do, we could, we could play it out. But that would be, that's how we, and then, you know, you could get to the four man front if you wanted and run whatever you wanted to do there. And so, like, say you wanted to do this, 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 and this, right? And then, um, say you wanted, you know, this pattern. Scrape or the spear pattern, do that. I just got a track, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I like Rogers. You know, we ran it, the first time we ran it was this Auburn bowl game. It was one of the better things we did. Because uh, they were all expecting man in a lot of those instances. Um, we were able to attack them in the Soviet zone. And so, in a way, right, that's an overload as four from the side. Yeah. These particular ones, you know. So you're buying guys. <coughs> and uh, you're winning those, trying to win those one on ones. But yet, all, it would just all play out as two Packer, right? So, you know, if it was Trey over there, it's just Packer, right? But all this would still be fitted up. And so, once you went Rogers right or Rogers left, right, the front would load to that side if it was odd. You know what I mean? If you went Rogers right or Rogers left and you were doing it out of an even front, right, then that meant you were river of you know, river lake. You know what I mean? Yep. So all that was tied in. So we didn't so like this would be part of what we just talked about. So if we did like Rogers this week and we're gonna do it out of odd, right? The odd load then was built in load, right? So the kids knew. Mm -hmm. So Rogers right mean load right. You know what I mean? We said Rogers left, that meant load left. So they could get lined up. Right? If we were doing out of an even look, Rogers right meant river, you know what I mean? Rogers left meant lake, because we're yeah. doing it to the back. Yeah. Right? And at that point, even if there's a tight end over here, but the back was over here, mm -hmm. it didn't matter if so there was a three and a G or whatever, because it was third and nine were blitz in the back. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's why. And then you just had, I mean, if it was empty, we went to the two receiver side. Most of all of our stuff was two receiver side, aligned empty. You know, the shell calls, right? The Ryan, Ryan right, Ryan left. Mm -hmm. you know, it's one hole, so we would play. That went to the two receiver side. And so, 
we go right or left to the true receiver side. That's where we would set it. Right. Yeah. And we just play Packer and nail right to the other yeah. side. Kick's gonna be like a three roll. Okay, so um, uh, let's see about this. So this corner over here, we really put him in like a swarm. This is what we call it. So that's another way, I guess, of saying trap. Mm -hmm. And then this safety here was a third. And then this safety here was probably you know, really close. Right? This safety, this corner here was loose, man. Right? And then you have a curl flat drop here. And then you have all the same things, angle, all that. But then the difference is, is for this guy over here, right? he was a vertical hook drop on two. Because you, once you do this, you worry about the seam. And we didn't turn and run with him, we just pedaled him. Okay. And so he would pedal out. But is that vertical hook was saying that if he went vertical, he went as far as this guy did or his two. If he had a new two, he'd come off, but he would, he would take that seam as long as two is vertical. So he plays back to the seam. Correct. Yeah. So he played the hook as far as the, the, it went vertical, right? And then we have, over here we had this, the difference was this guy over here was a middle um, a middle hook, is what we termed it, right? So, you know, if it was 3D, this would be a strong hook right outside of three. Mm -hmm. And then this was curl flat, and that was man, right? Yep. So that, we're getting something there, which I, this was really good to change the picture pretty much from the normal 3D we played. But then, you, you know, there's all this all this area in here, this grass from here and here, you know? Yep. And you're doing that to get something out of there, you know? And so the, you know, this vertical hook you needed because of the seam issue and then here yeah. you know this kid could not play like a weak hook weak hook was straight back on the hash and all that because it, you know this dude's playing more this way as a playing as opposed to playing that way the nickel was and so he couldn't afford to do this because he's already doing that right so we played this guy in a, in a um, played him uh, both to be honest middle yeah. hook so he would push to three right because if three sat down Right, that the the nickel here was in the middle of the C and the Q, right? Or vision in two rather yeah. if two was vertical, he had to hold it. That was the problem, right? So the middle hook had to push to that. And so yeah. we still said, you know, it wasn't the weak hook, it was more of a, a middle hook. I gotta get to that middle of the formation and play that three. And so he would squeeze the stick. You'd get some help by the by the nickel on that if two sat down. But if two was pushing up, I'd have to squeeze it. So I'd have to fight that. Now I'd have help over the top, but I'd have to fight it. And then he'd have to go to read that one. And the harsh part was going this way and being able to read the bend. You roll him on it. We had to, you know, there's no one else to play the bend. Right. So that was the hardest part with this coverage. All of this, we had plays off of this, we had picks and uh, trap. I mean, we trapped people here. The, the vertical hook helped us, and we never got hurt in the seam. The hardest to me was this guy pushing to this. And then on that bender, being able to play the bend, right? Whereas it's different if we do it this way, and it kind of comes to you. We couldn't do that because of all of this this grass and area in here. So we have curl flat, middle hook, vertical hook, and then we have swarm. And then the, this safety over here, the uh, was play out the same as all of our three. So he was in post. If you got three vertical, um, three pushing vertical here, he play. If you got the bend, you had to give that to the middle hook because of all the, the area here with two. So we weren't running with this guy. We was yeah. dropping back and getting depth. You know? The squirm um, was cooling inside. And so he could be aggressive on any two out cut. He, he would make plays on three on an out yeah. uh, if it was laid down. And then he had to buy one coming in. One came out, he had to buy it. So, 
Once we started running this, we, so this is kick. Once we started running kick, we didn't get three on the seven cuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. That those went away. Because the, there's a chance that it's muddy. So, this was a new coverage for us last year. It was one of the better things we did, and I think it gave it gave um, it gave the field corner some relief. And so, field boundary, we looked at field corner relief and boundary corner relief. You know? And then it came up like you know, like USC with the they had a guy. What was it? Um, God, what was the receiver's name? I forget his yeah, name. Juju, Juju Schuster. Schuster. Yeah. And so, where is Juju? Yeah. When Juju was to the field, we called two kick. When Juju was to the boundary, we called two packer. And we took whatever the, the front was with it. You know, yeah. Montana, two kick. Marino, two packer. All of that was cool. That was fine. But it was more of the coverage. Where was it? Right. And so that's different than saying, when we could have put it on the kids and say, hey, this is a check with me. Right. But I just, you know, it's third down or it's passing situations. You waited to see where he was. I waited to see where he was, and I called him. And then I had the guy upstairs. He was alert for it too, so he'd go, you know, take Juju's to the field, Montana two kick, right? Juju's to the boundary, okay, Breeze two packer. We just be like that. Montana was what we just talked about, Marino. There's really not any difference. Um, it's just going the other way now. So we would always go River Lake to the field in Montana. Mm -hmm. So even if they had it in the boundary, River Lake to the field. So Montana was a passing call, you know, a pass, pass defense. Right? So the, the Mac here did not hit it. Right? We'll work this way, okay? And then this, this end would work. Read the tackle, contain, right? If that was your curl flat, and then your rover here was your middle hook, and things like that. And then, so, you know, I'm ricocheting off the guard, I'm ricocheting off the tackle, I'm reading the tackle at the end. And then it has the ability, like all the other stuff. So if it was empty, it played. So it would be a three call on the boundary. If it was empty. Uh, if it was bunch, we played, we kicked, we, we kicked it. Which for a lot of people, I, that was, we almost, we almost tried to be, um, you know, like, uh, have kick as an adjustment to bunch because it worked out so good a lot of times but um, we just play a yeah, bunch. Two by two you're back to four? Yeah. Yeah back to yeah, the two which is really four. So mm -hmm. the the two which is really four, we only use the term two because if it was like a pro look it'd be cloud. So if any form of pro any form of it was cloud. Okay. Like tight end gotcha. Z was cloud. Gotcha. If it was twins it was nail. Okay. Yeah. So if it was double twins, nail, nail. If it was pro twins, cloud nail. And a lot of times in eleven, that would include like the sling looks, you know. A lot of uh, so this is cloud. That was that could be flipped, right? That could be the field, and the other thing could be the boundary. Yeah. Cloud, cloud to one extended receiver, nail to two or more to two, I guess. So, yeah, that was it. Um, and the only other one we ran out of um, two kids. 
ship was we ran uh, Namath, and in that one we bring the nickel <coughs> and we push the Mac out. That one's a little bit some space you gotta cover in that one. But it wasn't a main it wasn't a main a main call. But I do think there's merit on it. I do think there's there's merit to do it because I wasn't a big fan of this and just looking at it. Name it. You know, the guy that got me to run it was the uh, the well, all, all of them, the BYU guys and the Stanford guys. Because um, this is a staple for them. Like, this is BYU's number one call, this one right here. And um, then the, the Stanford, it's a main call. And it's just, I can't, I couldn't get out of it. Like, what the, man, you're bringing the nickel and the max got to get all the way out to two, right? And the rover's got to get all the way out to three. And I just had a hard time with that. And so, you know, it was, they were insistent that it's really good and Dave needed to run it. So I had it, it was one of those deals that was, it was drawn up and it was kind of in the book, but we weren't running it and we weren't installed. Yeah. Yeah. But then um, we started running it in camp, kind of got to the deal to where in camp um, there was a place for it. And that thing was hidden. Uh, so it was effective, and the reason was because the nickel was coming from, it was not topped. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they was scanning for him. So he got one-on-ones all the time, or in fact, in the count for him. Right? You go far, and he's topped off. He's sitting there for him. And so the tackles, right, they're working to the end. They're not pushing out because there's no one over the top of the nickel. So the very fact that the coverage is difficult makes the blitz better, and, uh, and so you kind of have to. I think there's a time and place for it, you know. <coughs> um, so they have a nickel. You're showing what the safety is. Yeah, it'd be this, and he'd be this, and so then he would push here, and push three, and then that would be cool flat. And then it'd be, it'd be this. Yep. So that'd be me. So I think um, we had more free runners than Namath than about anyone, any of the other ones. You know, the other ones we had the twists and the reads and all that. But that one, the nickel came clean a lot. That'd be Namath to kick. And that, that was a player, so we'd play that out. Um, mm -hmm. if, oh, let me say, we trade three receivers. If it was traded, if it was three stand-ups, we would trade it. Back with us. Yeah, that's those are, those are them, I guess, right? That's it. Yeah. So yeah, there's not a lot, man. There's not a lot of now. The only other thing, there's not there's simple patterns, you know. Uh, I think it's the mix and it's how fast the guys run, you know. Now the, the um, fall and clubber. So if we're in fall. So I say, um, I say it's something like, like that. So we could go load. We could go. Um, let me see, I'm, I'm probably going to screw this up. So I, I apologize for this. It's been a while since I've been doing it. Okay, so if we're in fall, it would be this, 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 right? And then you know, this is a gone, right? And uh, this is a strong hook, right? This is a low hole. This is a weak hook. And this is a go flat. Right? You look like that, and that's, that's our three. It's all three man rush. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yep, we could do it out of uh, what do you call it? Um, what is this mug? Do we have mug? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we could do it out of load. So, you know, and then we just look like this all in here. I think 
we did this versus Minnesota. We did both. And so I think we did. And then we did this here. it was and then clubber was just kick. So you could go um, and then you go clubber. <laughs> so for that we had a um, uh, we filmed the signals. Which is always I remember when at Texas Tech we played um, we played uh, He's at Oregon State now. He was at Baylor. He was the head coach. What's the guy's name? Uh, Baldwin. Dave Baldwin. And at Texas Tech. And they filmed their signals. And somehow someone left Baylor and came to Texas Tech. And then we got the signals. Now, I was the GA, so I was like the worst thing ever to happen. <laughs> because the DC didn't want to make a call until he knew what they signaled. And so I was so incredibly stressed out that game. Because he was just waiting on me to sit and it's just so, it was so black and white that with that guy, so it was, just, oh my God, it was bad, you know. But we filmed the signals too. And, you know, club, uh, we played club and bass, and that was just drop eight, kick. Okay. And then clubber was in high school, right? Drop eight, kick. But, I'm just saying this because I can't, every time I it goes, I come in my head of our guy with the D line guy with Scott. So we're filming him, he's right in the corner of a, of a room, and he was filming so the guys could have it. But he did club was this, <laughs> and clubber was this. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, <laughs> he, he's a good dude, but yeah, I don't, uh, I'll always remember that. So this is clubber, and so. So we go clubber, and so then this is the kick, right? So this is your squirm, and then this is your um, your vertical hook, rather, right? And then you were really close to this, which was a positive, right? So this was your um, uh, your low your low hook, right? And then you had this guy as as your middle hook, and then um, right? who else am I missing? Vertical hook, low hook. Uh, oh no! You see, you still got Yeah, the safety's high. And so then we had we pushed out this this way with the low hook, right? And this was your middle hook, and then you had your curl flat. Yeah. And so it was good. I mean, you weren't as concerned with all of this, right? So clubber was yeah. a good coverage. You weren't concerned with this middle area. Now it's a three-man rush. You know, that's the flip of it. Yeah. Is that we had. And so it'd be the same thing. You could do it both out of bow and out of mug. If you had that to two by two. Yeah, we'd play it. Yeah, we'd still play it. Still play the the to the to the field. Yeah. And then over you'd go on the boundary. Yeah, it could be a gone or it could be a uh, a three call. Three call. Yeah, just play it. And the, the the final one that we had was three Cleo. And all of these were the same. It could be out of low, it could be out of mod, the majority of the time they were. And so then if we're in three Cleo, we did it with it was like this. This was a swarm. Okay. This was a swarm. Right? And then, um, you know, he was pushed out on two. He was pushed out on three. He was on two. It looked like that. I mean, we would move these guys. They wouldn't necessarily do it out of this. You'd do it out of like mm -hmm. a load, maybe off the ball. But that would be the, the picture. There's three clear. I think this is the one we ran versus you guys. We ran load, three clear. I think what it was. So we were in here so these guys could move off the ball to get to where they need to be. Uh, but those would be the max drops we had. I mean, interesting, once you
what you guys do what's in the back to the because that's what um like I say the Panthers do a fair amount of that. They have a lot of success with it. And so but, uh, as opposed to you know given we had success with the load because they would forget about this guy and he'd come right they wouldn't be able to find out, especially with all the population here initially and getting out. So we had we were able to get some with this guy. The other thing you do is run a twist if you want it and you had to balance it out. There's some rush lanes and all that in there, pass rush lanes. But uh, I think there's a lot of merit to bring in those guys and getting that one on one. The Panthers have made a living off of that. They call that Portland. They play two deep over. So you take a pee break real quick, yeah. I'll pull some of those up and that'd then, be great. then we can pull up the other video and that'd be great. Run through that. Good so. Like I said, we just felt like if we could crowd this here and play to the twin side, we felt like we had enough to. We when we going into it, we thought, okay, we could we could hold in well enough on some of it, but some of it. But Both of these, like Romo was one of the top call for our offense when we played. You know, all the things, that all, and all that. But it was um, I'm trying to remember. What was that? Whoever the, the, the tight end was, the rover had him, and we were like that. And then, uh, you know, we wanted to try to show the uh, single high, single high, so mm -hmm. like that. He also played two men. And so, no, you know, it was the other way. Like that, the other way, right? And so, he had him. And so the thing is, you're going to get this, but we twisted it. It was that, that, and just that, yeah. right? Here, so if they, he blocked, then we were hook rush. Yeah, that was Ethan. So he's doing a four rush. He had the back, right? And then they played two man behind it. We played that at USC. You set the away three from away the from the back. Mm -hmm. and that was Ethan. And then Romo was, um, Romo was a, uh, I mean, I like Romo. It was low again. You know, like, uh, and so this guy was a whole player. So it's really is it a three man rush? I guess it was, but yeah. we would hug rush this guy to the back. And so you Which occupy. to him it looks like you're right. bringing him you pressure that way. You have your whole place. Yeah, that's the shit that Because what happens is for us the number of times over the last two years that we've been in man under and had people covered and had a quarterback scramble for an eight yard gain for a first down. They, would slide it. It would if they were to go big on big, which our offense would go big on big here. No, like I say it'd just be the other way. Those were the two ways we played men, so yeah. like two men. This here's I'm gonna try to get see like uh, here off the, the three by one bunch. We sort of had a good idea. We didn't turn a good idea. We didn't turn it. What does can you get it all in the yeah camera? Then? Yeah, so at least you can kind of see what. Yeah, no. Uh, these are just like. White guys running twists and stuff. <laughs> 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 okay, right here. A pale All leg. Right. So, so this game right here, we won the whack with this play. So this was a score now at halftime. So this was La Tech. La Tech was the number one offense in the country at this time. Right? They were averaging over, over 50, like 56 points a game or something like that. Okay, so we held them below their average, right? So like. At halftime, right? I forget the exact score, but it was like six points, maybe, maybe six points. Mm -hmm. We were up like twenty-one to six nice. at halftime. This is overtime, right? We were up twenty-one to six, right? And this is lot tech, and so just the tempo over there was just going so fast, mm -hmm. you know. And um, God, man, guys were just getting worn out. You know, I look at him and just get worn out. Yep. And so, I mean, what it was. Kind of helpless feeling. Right? He just kept on playing and all that. It's, I've never been a part of something like that. But this. Was, so, anyways, we're getting down to it now. So, off we went up. Uh, we went up and scored. So now their their ball. 
right? We were up first, which you don't want to be the other way, but this we knew what we had to do, so it was fourth and three. Okay, now, with this though too, this is Sonny Dykes and all those guys. And so through that game, um, we picked up that when the, when the signal guy, when they did this, this was look over, and they pulled on his ear. Um, so that was look over. And so the thought there was, all right, we're gonna call a call, because they're reading the box. We're gonna call a call, they give them something. And then I know that, you know, I, I was gonna call that anticipating whatever the box was, and then we're gonna make our final call. Right, so I was gonna give you a dummy call. They would get that, but then look over them, and all the offense would look over them. We were taught to look over them, and then we'd be able to have Do you have a call to tag it, or is that just any time? That's any time. Any time they look over, we look time. Over. No, we would say, look, look, look. That means all we all look over. Mm -hmm. right, so we have hurry, 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 which means they're huddling the line quick, mm -hmm. which means tight four. And then we have look, 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 which means they're looking, so we look. Now, that's got to be not just the quarterback. If the quarterback does it, then we don't do it, because the center still has his hand falls up. Yeah. That's the whole, all 11 guys looking over. Mm -hmm. And then we would look. Okay? And so, in this, in this deal then, so this was, this was, he grabbed his ear. So this is fourth and three and all that, right? And so it was a big, it was a big deal, I guess, right? So we went uh, tight four right here. So we get lined up and tight. I try to, and it's a look, look, right? And so they go, and so we knew that. And so then we went peso man off of that. So we went quarters to man. But you look at the, and so it's just the advantage of, of playing field boundary and all that and getting lined up. Mm -hmm. Because we can get to it. Now watch the center. See the, center, the guard, he's looking back. So he never sees when it's tight. He never sees that there's a guy that comes right to him because we stem to it late. And then we kick his ass. And then that's it. That was that one. You know, Utah State, black champs. That was it. And so the, 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 we wanted to show a light box knowing they'd run it to clip back into um, Peso Man, right? And then, and then be able to play, uh, uh, you know, a four-two box. Yeah, he didn't. He he didn't. Yeah, he didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Time, I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. It was covered. Yeah, and this was the other one. Okay, so this was this was the, the mouse we talked about. Okay, so like the thing was when we do the mouse and empty, we wanted to, you know, if there were tr true mm -hmm. scat, just pointing where the fifth guy was, we wanted to put them away from where the shallows were coming from. So where do the shallows come from? They come from the twins when we put them to the field for the trips. They come from the trips we put them to the boundary for the twins because it didn't really matter where we put them is whether all the lines going to slide. We just have the front tied, the, the stunt tied opposite that. You mm -hmm. know? But we wanted the, for the coverage, we wanted the whole player to be coming at an angle to intercept or cut the crosser. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So the crossers came from the twins, so we would mouse over here to the side. So we just go mouse left, mouse left. And so that, notice when he's walking over here, right? They see it and they all point it out, right? So right away when they're pointing out, these guys are going, "Hey, you know, they're pointing." <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, "Fuck yeah, just, just run it, bro," right? And so th they're all going to slide this way, and there's the twist, yeah, right? Yep. And then this is the guy dropping back in the hole, and it's just man free. That's good because then you, you dictate the. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, like so they're over here, they're pointing. There's the guy. Right, just trying to sell it, right? So that you know, because the thing is, if we don't do that, we just put him here, and he's going to set straight back, mm -hmm. and then whatever twist we do, they just eat up the twist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll push hard, and we'll give us that. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think the rest of this is just all those are the main parts. I think the other thing with the four eyes is these guys just pushing vertical. So this was just past year. So the four eyes played like threes. So you go hips, mm -hmm. hands, firing out. Right? Hips, hands, firing out. And so the, we wanted to go, like, we get these down blocks, we want to go from a primary gap to a secondary gap, like you see it right there, once that ball will cross. Right? Primary gap, B gap, and the ball will cross and go secondary gap. So we wanted to go, you know, lock out, peak, and shed. Right? Lock them out, peak, ball cross, we cross. We go primary gap, secondary gap. That's the thought. Let's see what else is on here. The same thing. These are all the counters and stuff. So right here, so the four eyes firing out. We call that attack, react. Right here. 
go from primary gap to secondary gap. And there, is this out of the lower? No, this is just quarters. It's just yeah, or uh, what is this? This is quarters base base man. Right? Yeah, this is base. This is, uh, we're playing man. This is man. It's under one. So, we'll, so these two are sliding this way, sliding here and sliding here. We play this 4i, we play this 4i vert. So he's <coughs> right there, get knocked back on that. And then this safety is working off the fullback. And then, um, or this safety is working off of this guy. Seven is working off of that guy. These two guys are working off the tailback. Now, the, 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 the other big part of it, too, is that prior to the snap, we have already seen that this guy's light and this guy's heavy. I mean, mm -hmm. so they, they had already talked it out. They had already known that, hey, this thing's coming over here. They're going to counter this way. But primary gap, secondary gap. All right, let's see. Okay, this is field slant. Okay, so we're bringing this, so we're sliding. That's what you get. We get the one on one. Yeah, so you get these guys comboing off hard, right? And so that's the thought. Now, the more they're vertical, the more you want your movement like that, right there. Are you under center here? Mm -hmm. I mean, your your blitz are coming on the slant, chase. Yeah, you see we are. Okay, so, yeah. So he's got to be responsible. They run the boot. He's responsible for that. So, so he's trying to see the match right here. Okay. And so he wants to build shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. So he's attached to the to the tackle. Okay. The tackle's down. He's down. So you want he's tilted here a little bit. You want to be. You want to really see if it was clinic tape, a little bit more square. You know. Okay. And so that way, if he pulled it, he would, he would be able to okay. work out the field and cut it off. Again, so we're slanting. Here's the rib cage of the next guy. We're slanting here to here. Rib cage of this guy. Right, and then we go primary gap. Slanting here, rib cage of the next guy. Now, there's merit, I think, also in the slants. If you're slanting, if the splits are reduced, like these splits are way reduced here. And this is a bigger split to just line up there. There's merit in doing that. They say. I'm not going to you know, waste my time picking it up and put it down. I'm just going to line up, right? I'm going to line up in a G and fuck it. You know what I mean? If there's a bigger slant right here, take the slant. We started doing that. This is two years ago. We started doing that this year quite a bit. It's based upon the splits, just line up in it. Pace teams, right? Or when they're going fast all the time, you show the green, uh, green mint trade or switch. There it is, right there. And so when we when we post that up, what that meant was it was like a hockey hockey switch, right? So when teams are going fast, we post that up on our sideline mm -hmm. and to their field. And what that meant was, hey, if the ball ever came this way, any form or fashion, we just keep running off. And then I guess the guys that were off the field ran yeah. out. So you told them when to stop. Yeah. yeah. So if, if green, oh, but only if it finishes on that side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so we, good. they would show it to our sideline. Yeah. And then they showed it to the uh, field. Yeah. And so if the ball came anything over that way, mm -hmm. just keep on running. And then our guys were ready, ready to They're run out. out. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. So it was like a hockey switch. Yeah. Um, the rest is. More for the play. Here we go. It's not really fair, I guess. I mean, all of our D line kicking ass is going to be versus Purdue. So. <laughs> 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 it's not all yeah, just kicking ass, There's man. So Chick yeah. <laughs> and, and so, um, you know, <laughs> knock back here. But this is a good picture. This is how we play our 3 2. So this would be in flight adjust. And so if he blocked down, we wanted to step down and squeeze right off that as best we could and not get vertical, right? But there's the, the um, 
knock it off. So this was uh, eagle ed, we would call it. Okay, so this is tight end. So instead of sliding there, we just lined up in it. And so in all of the, let's say this, Lining up in it, and Ed was five technique. We just said eagle Ed can play four eye. And then if we're in, so all these are strength based. We're based upon strength tight calls or you know strong right calls, whatever you say. And then this we said was uh, falc uh, or uh, hawk rather. Hawk. So now we're doing this, right? And we're in a G. So if we go hawk Ed, we look like that. We just go hawk. That's a four eye. So that would be how we line up in four and a half fronts in three, four. Now, if we're field based, right, we had a uh, buzzer, which was three technique to the boundary. We had falcon, which was three technique to the field. Right, so the buzzer would be say the fields that way. Here would be a shade, it would be a four eye. That was buzzing. So, like, you could do what could you do? You could run wizard or buzzer, right? Um, you could run field slant out of buzzer. Say, so we're just going to rush this, do this, and do this. Right? When you run hawk, where, where are you putting your other backer? You stack Stacking one. back. So, mm -hmm. that's how you get to your four three. Mm -hmm. We run Falcon, right, or Buzzer this way, and we run Field Slant, right? Mm -hmm. You can run Buzzer. Falcon 3. So instead of field slant, instead of buzzard slant, instead of field slant, we just line up in. So instead buzzard is 3 technique to the boundary. boundary. Falcon is 3 technique to the field. And then those are what we stem from. You know, so when we're in tight, we just show falcon, or we just show buzzard and stem from those things. Have you ever given those guys the independence to say, hey, you can line up wherever you want, but that's snap you need to be. Um, um, what color you need to be. Yeah, there's some. I think in the very beginning we used to. And the only disadvantage with that would be like offensive line coaches would say, hey, you see any irregular look, anticipate the stem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they would just they would wait and sit on your stem. Well, when we started doing it off the looks that we had, then you know, a little bit more correct. Yeah, you correct. have a standard look. Yeah. 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 That's the way we used it. Yeah. So the falcon and buzzer, the nose went opposite. So if you went buzzer, the nose going field. Two feet. Yeah, we were shade and four. That's the only time we play shade. But then if we say Ed, Ed pushes to a G and a five. And she like in the middle. You know, yeah. But see, we could run buzzer. Right? Buzzers will be more of what we do at LSU, more so than the tight look. We'll run tight, but buzzer is more guys vertical, there's more yelling, yeah. nose isn't too gapping, you know, the yeah. act attack is more this way. It fits us more, but we're still at the four eye, so you, you, still, got, you still got one gap. To you got the four eye strong, right. you got the right. nose, this is going to be an A gap penetrator, right. three technique weak. Right. So that's what I, I want to, when we get through a little bit of this, one thing we needed to do was talk about a couple of your, some of your two back fits and some things like that. That's yeah. one thing I know that, that, 
like I said, we keep you here for, for a long time. But we know you got flight too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's a um, primary gap, secondary gap. Yeah. Airport Friday after spring break should be nice. Yeah, primary and secondary. <laughs> Center pools, react attack, more falcons on. Cut, and he's going to be four eye. So, the, big, the thing is, if when you run the four eyes, if that's something that you do, is to stay. I mean, you know, we treated that like a. Um, we treated that like a. Uh, this was like a three technique, right? He's like a left three, so if this was a scoop. So he wanted to play into that, which that's important because there's nowhere where you'll get cut more than if uh, that four eye gets vertical and the tackle comes off right now. That's when you get hit. I mean, because you get sealed, because you got to turn about a 30 linebacker or whatever else, then you're sealed now, you know? And so you want to play into the tackle. Like this guy does a great job. Right, and scoop eventually becomes slip. Yeah. It comes off and he makes a play. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. 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 Right. I see him react attack here. Right, firing out. So he's getting into him and then he's getting vertical. Yeah. So react. I like the vertical, uh, then these guys are attack, react. So, this was the first week, 2015. You can see how they're not, they're not getting their guard up, and they're chasing, right? So mm -hmm. these guys are chasing this guy, so we'll get what we want, but they're all flat. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the linebacker using his hands, striking. To this. Was that something that, uh, uh, this reminds me of something I wanted to ask, like the way that started wing set here. Mm -hmm. So is that something you'd standard, pretty standard, you know, you'd slide them then when you got the wing? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, we're just stemming right They're here. They're just stemming. Mm -hmm. So if you get a wing or if you're playing a wing type of team, is there something that you'd like to do out of your? You could, if it was just quarters, you could go. You could go on uh, line or ram, but like I say, it just depends on what they do. If they come back, you don't like that as much because yeah. you're gapped out. Now you got to play gaps. And so you'd like to be able to keep the four eye and zero and the four eye. So the Mac would go C gap and play back, and the Rover would go zero and play back. And just read it, you know what I mean? Key that wing. But if they run down, you know, they, they created a. So that the, the F to a wing, to the wing side, the F would be right outside of two. We played, um, we played hammer to that, so he played two, and the Mac fit in that C gap, you know. The Mac would have to be like a, uh, the Mac would have to be pretty, pretty interested, you know, you know, in that C gap, he has seven technique on the run. Would you have started this typically in a hammer or a red hammer? Like if the wing went to the flat, would 36 take it or would it be C? If, if, if the camp rule would be a him. Okay. And then it depended on what they do. Like if they ran like a bunch of um, like stick route yep. and all that, and we look at playing red hand with it. Okay. Yeah. But camp rules would be hammer. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is, um, I think this is Fang. Fang would be like our 5 0. We bring five guys and play. Um, uh, just like man free, you yeah. know. The problem with that always is the uh, is getting cut. So this is okay. Here we're playing cover two. So we, we, we call this fluty actually, right? So this is just quarters but in the F, but you get the movement, you know. And so there, there we just right. We're running it out of. Uh, what is it, buzzer, mm -hmm. buzzer dead, right? Yep. And there's the movement. I'm just gonna bring in the F. Same thing. Now 
Italians line up in it. And so the ability to stem and then to uh, to show a front and get to another front, right? It's yeah. Really indecision, especially the later we go. Could you run DB one first? So this is Peso Man. And so this is a tight end over here. So this is a late call. Right? So we're ending up playing a six on this. This is the safety. He's down. And he's got the tight end man for man. But that the split over here by S forces him down in that crease. Okay. This is the nickel out on two. Yeah. The corner's over here on one. When one brings it in, he's going to work the outside, get, get depth over top. This is a cut left to begin with. Yep. Because the X has got a normal split. So this is cut left, cut left, cut left. So the Mac is in. Anticipating with the back being away, the rover's going to hug rush. He's anticipating a cut. You can see it there. Right? As he, give, if he, as he gives ground grudgingly and works the, uh, works the cut. Right? Pass, rover hug rushes. Right? The Mac's going cut, 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 cut. And then seven falls off. Now, like our, our outside leverage here, we like to see this, the safety over here, or the, the nickel over here, use his help, right? He's got good leverage on the seven cut, but mm -hmm. don't want him to be too high. He's too high here, you know? Yeah. Right? And we'd like him to be lower and use all of this. I think he's rightfully so, I guess, nervous about that receiver. That was the receiver we're concerned about. So he's yeah. too high on him, but he's protected, right? With the split and everything else. And, you know, I think that's part of it. Like, like, like. You know, I'll rush here. Right, cut, 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 cut. So he cuts it and he falls off. Now he's responsible to see the cue. Alright, this is it again now. So if it's two by two, we're gonna cut. Well, it's always hard with something because all the, the amount of yeah, which one is the tight end, you know, just all the the white guys that are out there. So this would be cut right, cut right, cut right, you know, to the side. So you can see we're gonna hug rush here, and you can see the linebacker here giving ground pressure. He's looking for the cut. You don't get it, so he now his eyes go back to the cue. This was cut right. Okay. Sees the quarterback. And you can see all the, everyone playing their leverage, outside leverage, outside mm -hmm. leverage, right? Okay, this split allowed outside leverage. I'd like to see this guy more aggressive on the cut. scratch and sniff. Okay, so this is four by one. So they're in four by one to run the down play. They want to run the bender back here. Right? Because they want to do this and get so this is a six, that's a three. And then this you know, safety here at the tight end. And this pace of man. So we brought the this linebacker here through the A and the thought was to get a jump here or jump here where he could play it. So it didn't, you know, it didn't come downhill. They get their angles and they just bend it off the guy. So, so he's already, he's just going to plug to the back. Correct. Yeah. So if it's scratch, this is scratch when the onside linebacker sniff. But you can see, I mean, because the, the combo, see, they're working to this and they're working to that. You know what I mean? And so he's going to get that A. If anything, it's going to be the center as they come off. That's how that's how it'll look. Yeah. Then you're hoping you get something out of this. Is Pushes back one, uh, one, yeah. one, you know, that combo block over here because a lot of times they're pushing that, you know what I mean? And so instead of them pushing, it's you pushing now, you know, with all of it, right, from the zones coming from that side. So yep. this would be scratch, this would be sniff, so come on over and just push it out. Because the thing we didn't want to do is, you know, have them dictate it where it's all down, 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 that thing comes right off here and the quarterback mm -hmm. and now it's all that. All right, this is Spike. And for us, don't know. You know, and this is a man, peso man beater right here. So this is a spot seven, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So spot seven. So the thought now is just lick, 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 and spike. So it's going to the tight end. So there's the back. He releases and he takes the back, right? And Mac is hitting it, right? And what the different? The problem here is here's the hole dropper. All oh, that's good. The rover should be the contain. He should be coming here. If that tight end. If the tackle were to block down, you, you know, it always helps us when guys do that. But if the tackle were to block down on the Mac, then the rover is the contain. So we don't get the rover now. The other thing with this, when this thing comes down, the safety's got to be more down. Yeah. He's got to be on that tight end. It would clean that up for that corner and mm -hmm. over the top. But this is Lake, Lake, Lake. Um, okay. River, uh, River, River. There we go. Right here in the blue side. And so he was outside of two because he's got that. Right? So they're in this to try to rub you and all that. Mm -hmm. And there's the Mac. But now we get, so we're in load, I think, right? Let me see. Yeah, we're in load spike. Let me see it. So there's your, there's your four guys. Right? There's your whole player. There's your hub rusher. Okay. Okay, so your four guys are right here. He's hug rushing. So there's the tackle coming back on that guy, but now he goes. Right? And then over here, we're cutting. And so. You know, I don't know. I imagine it would play out like this. We don't really, not with a straight face anyways, what we say all this. But, you know, so he's coming across, so he's cutting this. All right, so it's cut left over here, right? And then over here, he's cutting that. And then he falls in the hole. And that's what happened, right? So it's cut, cut. Get the line on the quarterback. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where you can go live and, like, we got, I got talked to after this because you can't, which I agree, you can't do this. So it's kind of like you're live, but you're not live. Right. Like if it's something like this, then just kind of yeah, right. tackle them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then if it's like, if it's don't it's slam them after right. that. Correct. Right. Yeah. Does he let it be live on quarterbacks? I mean, like all of them at times? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So then this is Mug Belly Training. Okay. So now, you know, he's rushing. We want him to come underneath the back so that we can get the. And you get the hug yeah. rush, and then here's your you know, this big split here, yeah. right? So right here they're talking cut over here. They're saying cut left. Yep. So we're gonna cut this side. So he's gonna work over the ball, and give ground gradually again. There's your cut. He falls off. Okay. And then over here, you know, yeah. I mean he's got a big vision in this guy. There's a there's a, uh, uh, a break to this, and it's not just you going for the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. Yeah, he wants to go to the recognition point, you know. And so anyways, you like to see this guy take this all the way back. And here right. you can see that here we're not trying to read it. We're just going vertical, yeah. vertical, vertical. Right? And then the footwork, he takes it up. Comes under. Yeah, that's really good. And then, um, okay, this is empty. Uh, so, the, I, you know, I don't know if this was spike or belly, but it's a shove, right? So mm -hmm. a shove over here to the left. Two receiver side, shove left. So it has to look like that. Okay, so a man here, man, there's your whole part. <coughs> um, Purdue. All right, these are little people. But we're in cowboy right now, so we're in seven. Seven DBs, and so now we're going to say we're going to run all the same stuff. We call this Gibbs. Remember, we ran it out of Cowboy. That was the reason why we brought the safety. But really, I mean, it's just Spike, right? It's spike with little people, okay. right? So uh, these are your four rushers right here. We like for this guy to time it out. He's a true freshman. He's probably either whatever, whenever you guys play. Who knows? He's, you guys are playing at the end of the year, you know, but we're going to, you know playing in that first game. But it's like play action pass, throw it deep. I mean, I know these safeties, you know what I mean? This is one, this is the other one. <laughs> and so, the, I mean, they're, they're not, they're, you know, this kid should be holding it. Like, see, I, yeah. Yeah, see, I don't know what this is. He's, they're telling him to come down. We want to go and tie this out and hit it. Okay, it might have been because this back was wide. But anyways, these are the four guys. Okay. Uh, but it's the same thing, right? There's your four rushers. Here's your hug rusher. There's your whole player. And everyone else is man using leverage. So this is doing some lock. 
and love it. So you have no D lineman out there? No. Uh-oh. Tell the Packers that shit. <laughs> Already been giving those guys shit. Man, we're going to go with seven backers. All right, this is Spike. We're going to go to the tight ends. And so like I said with the Washington, Washington would go Spike right. And they would blitz, you know, these two guys in here and he'd be the whole dropper. Mm -hmm. Well, we did it the other way. So here's the example now. So this is Spike. We're going this way. We're going Lake. We're going here. If that back were to flare, he would play him. He would play the back, right? If the back, if the back were to, if the back were to block, then he's in the hole, which I think this is, right? And so if the back flares, he has him. He's in the hole. This guy is containing no matter what the back does, right? This guy is right here. Lake, Lake, Lake. You know, this is a cross pro. The back's supposed to go over here, but I mean, that's part of it, I think. When you actually, like, do shit, you force people to have to do shit. I mean, you force yep. them to have to carry out mm -hmm. their responsibilities. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And so he's got to come across, but he ain't. And so there's your hover. There's your hole player. So he uses his correct leverage, uses the hole player. And you see his QB. So that's the thought when you get all these routes come inside. Yeah. You know? The tight end, the over routes, the main thing. But I like how, see how Mike's playing it. We're not playing it that way right yeah. now. And LSU, we're playing it too he, on he top a, and all that. Right. Yeah. He was a pretty so good if, if, the, if the back did step across now, now your hover player turns into a hug player? Yeah. Now he's, he's a hover. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Because the angle is sure. working with us. Right. I just so want to make sure. Yeah, I was if correct. he steps in here, we don't want to go in there because there's all that. Right. Stuff right. right. That's like, but if he steps all the way across. I drew a mental block. Go back from the rule of this again to start so that. The hug player is the he's a inside hover right now. He's yes. the hover. Yep. Yeah. That's the hug. Guy steps up inside or across. Yeah, this guy's the hole player, but he's going to have his scap. He's got for he's scap he's got whoever, yeah, yeah. Yeah. whoever these outside guys are. Yep. The back is to them. Yep. They've got the responsibilities, but the scat applies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The back gets out. We got him. So if the back crosses your face, so even if it was something like, like that right there, mm -hmm. he has him. It's that, that, or that. If back crosses your face, you got him. So yeah. you know. But it's got to be immediate right now. Mm -hmm. So if it's right. something like this, you don't got him, he's in the hole. Yep. He's, he's hovering right over it. Yep. I always make fun of this. Was, uh, look, at, look at how he runs. <laughs> yeah, something. He runs like... It's kind of like a, like, what is it, like the marching band, the guy in the front? Did you want anything for lunch? No, I'm good. Brought over or anything like that? No, I'm good. Let's, let's, you guys want something? No. I'm good. Man, uh, so this would be Spike over here. So the, the, yeah, the slide goes away. If the slide came too, then he would just go BA. Okay. This is Spike over here. So they're aware of the split. So this is a, a Z uh, crack. And so they're all saying over this because we're all, this was their main, their main gig. They got a lot of people on this. And so there's that, you know, he knew it. So you can see he's not really firing out because he's got it. Mm -hmm. And then there goes the Mac. There's the hug rush. There's the whole dropper. guy was a huge human. And you know, if we were just to just say, hey, we're gonna line up and just roll, if we want to really roll, uh, then these are two years ago. So so this is Spike over here. Now but over here this was a cut right. And see I think we're talking it right there. There's the talk, cut right, cut right, cut right. So what that means for this guy is he's got to be able, he's gotta get get to the middle of the field, middle of the ball, middle of the formation rather. Okay, now his problem, so all that's great. Now, cut the route. Now this is where it comes. So you're talking about receiver, you're talking about that, you're talking about all this. Yep. Say, so, yeah, that's what, it, that's what we've done. Now, now um, he makes you think twice about it because he is watching the sack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. His eyes have got to be on his work. Mm -hmm. so that's a good lesson because what that does is, 
And I, let, I appreciate this dude because that ties him up. He doesn't let him go, which he shouldn't because yeah. he didn't cut it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he cuts it and it's clean, now he becomes the, now he becomes the whole player. player. Here's a yeah. dig, and he's under the dig. See what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But I appreciate this guy staying. I think it's and right? Staying on it because it, was, it wasn't cut. So you want you want to cut that and have him fall off. So cut right, cut right, cut right. So here's the slide coming to you. We're trying to cross pro it. So he goes, he's a three technique, he goes B to A. And I like how aggressive the hog rush is. I think that's how you need to get it. You protect it with your whole part. Okay, so this is lake, lake, lake. It's a spike. There's a stem. You can see where the whole the whole player helps you. Trying to hit the slant and right in this window. Right here. Okay, everyone's matched up. Man to man. He should be quicker. What bring what brings him back? What brings the whole player back right away? You know, he starts he starts across, right? Um, starts off looking across to cut something. Uh, I think he's just looking at the cue. He sees the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Okay, just read. Yeah, quick. You, know, you can tell right here. Out. I'm telling you, there's no cut call because he wasn't. His eyes didn't go in or out. Okay. Yeah. Thirty two should be faster. Go go go. See, thirty has the ability. Yeah. You know, thirty has the ability to make those jump cuts and the freeze rushes. You could you could get that done. Thirty two's got a fucking roll. Is there a reason there wasn't a cut call to the left here? Cut left yeah, with that would, tight split. Yeah, we would do it if it like, was a bunch, or if it was like a um, maybe like a stack of linemen over there. Okay. Yeah, but it was just three close that it would, you know, maybe sometimes I guess that'd be game plan. But okay. Yeah, it'd be if it was just a traditional trips, then we we just visioned it. So okay. Saw the quarterback. Okay. Here's another one. You guys watching the sack, right? And so. Uh, this was cut right over here, or cut left rather. Okay, and so you know Joe's just watching it. This was a big. What was this? Third and six. Right. This was right before halftime. We just or third three. We just finally got kind of back in the game. We got some rhythm going. We're going belly training, mm -hmm. right? So we want to get him hug rushing. He should be looking here. He should cut that. The corner matches it, falls off, and he's in window for the follow. Yep. We got to cut this guy. It's just cross protection here. So Derek's going to be first. And Marcus is second. Sees the center go away. Keep going. All right. Get this. All right, so this is shove to receiver side. Shove, shove, shove. This was this year. So shove left. There's your twist. There's your whole player. Man, I think what they're expecting quarters right here. So, this is low. <laughs> There'll be a quarterback get here. I can yeah. drop this. Load. 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 <laughs> load. So, I imagine that we slide towards the load and yeah. bring no one back. That's yeah. probably what happened. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the Gophers were such a big YT protect team that, um, you know, we wanted to go to the tight end. So, I think what it was was what were the rules? There was a tight end, if a certain tight end was in the game. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to blitz the tight end. Yeah. If that tight end was not in the game, then we blitz the back. Those were the rules, right? And so, if a tight end, a certain tight end was in the game, everything was to the tight end. If the tight end was not in the game, then everything was to the back. It was right. a slide, right? So the tight end is in the game. So we're going to the tight end. So that the, the from what I remember, anyways. And then, you know, the, we're saying we're saying that 
the tight end stayed in, and so we wanted to bring the safety on the line of scrimmage instead of keeping him off. So like versus YT teams, we wanted the tight end to block the guy that was covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where if we just kept the safety off, he'd block something yeah, else. Yeah, he'd block the man. And then you say, well, hugging, but Correct. then you're too, you're too deep. So that's the reason why he's walked up to get to get the block. And then so it's probably Wozniak, right? Yeah. And or then is that Langan? That's Langan. It, it might that's have been Langan, yeah. yeah. It might have been. Yeah, so we're going, well, here it works out because we're going with the back still offset that way. Uh, but then here's 48. 48's hug rushing. And then we're in the, this is a cut right. You can tell by his look, right? So he's looking over there. There's nothing. He just sees the cue. is a um, load spike. Spike left. Oh, this is link, 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 rather. And then very shoulder play. So he's going. He's your hug rusher. So all these are slide to you. That's how I feel. The load spike's really good. You're just basically running NCAA blitz, really, is all it is. So that, that, but the thing was, we did so much interior pressures, you know, tolzines and ordens. And yeah. You do enough tolzines and ordens and uh, wizards like Deuce Coles, and you get this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you get where they're just, where they're just walking down. You know, and so the 3-4 the allows you to do that, right? If you're in a 4-3 or 4-man front, and you bring five guys, you know? And so it's a little bit more you got to pay a little bit more in terms of coverage for all that. So, um, you know, we were able to get this based upon all the inside pressure that we gave. And so it wasn't like we just came out the bus getting that, you know what I mean? Yep. So you had to, to yep. pay for it with inside stuff. Yep. And then you got this. So how much do you work on the, the patience of, a, of the linebackers on waiting for the stuff to come through before they go? You know, Quite a bit. I mean, a lot of that's that stuff with you. And so, you know, 53, yeah. like how we like walking out and then hitting it. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, I think a lot of it, like, what I what I like is like 53 right here, kind of, you know, how he's getting, I like that. You know what I mean? So he's not going when the ball is snapped. I mean, you know, I think there's just so much, I've, this is, there's so much hype with some of the guys that I'm working with now. They're good players and end up being good. But if the hype don't help the guy, time out of blitz. Right. And yeah. Mm -hmm. It don't help him. All that hype and yep. like the 40 yard dash time yeah. and all that shit. The stars don't, it don't help any of that. Yep. It don't help, you know. And so we're having guys that when they want to go, they want to go. But it's almost like they have to drop the hype and they have to drop the fucking, uh, you know, the Superman stuff mm -hmm. to get built, ground up. Yeah. freaking opens up. Yeah. But then, so what I would say would be, if a team were to go big on big here, so here, here, right, and it's this, and it's this, and it's this, and then I bring this guy here, mm -hmm. and then bring him here, mm -hmm. and then hug rush him here. It depends on how you block it. This is far now. So far. Oh no, it's just spike. Okay, so this spike is driven. So this is the old play. So the safety's got the tight end, tight end block, safety in. So he comes on in. Mac is coming off the t off the, the spike, the free technique, and he's gonna spill. He's gonna spill it. Mm -hmm.
crazy that I'm 53 though. The redshirt freshman, 50 is a freshman. And I look at, I think Jesus. You know, it's uh, and the spring was close, and it took it took a while. Um, this was okay. Now we're in three. Okay. So this is Bledsoe. So we're bringing the safety. This is YT protect. Okay. And so like in a lot of these, some of these are gonna be on this on this reel. You know, the thought the thought is is where is the tight end? You know, let's 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 if it's to the field, let's go far. If it's to the boundary, let's go blitz up. Because or you know, whatever the creeper was, say it could be breeze, mm -hmm. right? It could be mammoth, I guess. But with the thought being right here, we'll talk about all this in, in a minute, in a second, but like See, what if they got five guys blocking two, and then we got two one-on-ones? That's the thought. And then that's the that's what you like. That's what you want to try to get. And so the, you know, if there's a like a, if the tight end's the tail, then let's go with the tight end. You know, so you kind of hold it and see where he lines up as yeah. best you can. All right now over here, this is a uh, a gone, on. and then it goes to uh, zone it. So they say zone it because he's on near the hash. So there's the zone. Now, the thing you could say is if you want to, you could say like one or two call. You have to say that as well. You just said zone it down there. And then you're gone on the tight end of the boundary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why he's gone. Now, the, like you see it right there. Um, there's the, the, what do you call it? The uh, uh, Todd Granthams of the world. All right, a couple of those guys, they add in. So, four man rush. Five man rush, they got locked. I guess it's probably merit to do it, you know. What I would like for the lower to do here is the, the, uh, when that guy blocks his angle pedal and be in the window of this. Yeah. You know, so he's standing right about in front of that 40. You know, he's got to throw it through or over. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and as opposed to this. So that's one thing. There is merit to that, like, especially when it's three by one and the yeah. back's in the backfield. Mm -hmm. and you're a curl flop player and you run Bledsoe, you run Brady. Right, and that safety kind of comes down. And there's, you could do that. You could outrush and then turn it into a fire zone. Your weak hook player know, now knows he's got to cut routes. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, not, there's no curl flat guy over there. Right. You know? So it changes the coverage when you do that. Yeah. But there's people that do that, though, and so that the format the creeper becomes a fire zone. You know? But we want this guy to be, to be um, buzzing out, right? Now, you can see the strong hook here with 58. You see the weak hook, see him get back on that hash. Mm -hmm. He's thinking bender, thinking yep. X-dig, all that. Are you saying make it bigger and build the block? You know, it's not what. And then this is the freeze rush, you see 21. Yeah, I watched that. Pretty good. Spins right in. Yeah. yeah. Two. This is Brady. Brady three. We're bringing from the boundary. This example of the tackle block out, bring stuff in. And I've gone either side, hook flats on the inside. This was a scary game. These guys came in from that quarterback and they they just got like Manny Diaz over there fired, right? Yeah. Texas. That's who right. before. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a way. He gets they rush for like 600 yards. Yeah, on it was a way scary game. But they're a 32 year old quarterback who was a freshman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Bledsoe. At Utah State, we did not play gone calls. And these, it, a lot, all of these are going to be like true. True, three, three, three deep zone. But this is where, um, so a true curl flat down here, strong hook, we cook, mm -hmm. right, curl flat. There's I like the buzz, the rollers getting out. But you can see the, uh, the, the, what do you call it? What you get out of Bledsoe is that right there, right? The, the track with the tackle. Yeah. And then you get the one on one. So what I would say with the back would be the, the, the corner needs to get on this, on the feet of, Running back, yeah. Because all this, like, if, the, if we were to cover back doing that, 
that, that would be enjoyable. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it would be much harder if that back got right on our toes and made a cut. And so he's just blocking himself with all this right here. That's not doing anything to anybody. Get right on his toes. That's a good job with the track. This is uh, Belichick. Now, we don't get the. This guy should get. This guy should be picking up a bender. We've uh, we've shown this play on a mobile defense. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Belichick. So that's the cloud. That's a dawn. That's a strong hook. That's a weak hook. So we're watching the second game. He's got. To, he's cut yeah. out. This was our uh, Panthers. This is far, I guess, right? This is far, so it comes up this way. You can see they're really, really vertical and intent on getting to the linebackers. So any movement, right, trouble. And that, yep. that slot's responsible for that nickel. So he's supposed to be coming down. A lot of guys. So this is a gone. So this is a gone over here. Okay, so he had the C gap. He had the A gap, so I didn't wind up like that. C gap, A gap. He's playing off that A. He's playing off that C. This is three to four I. There's your angle, right? There's your track, right? And then there comes your nickel, right? So they're working this combo. They're working this combo, which gives us a one-on-one, -on -one, which is what you want. All right, this was a game. So much was to tie in. Like light T protect right here, everything mm -hmm. was off the tight end. Let's go far. So this is exchange. Let's go. We didn't talk about that. Oh we yeah. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> and then everyone else played, let's go on. Swish man. Go flat. We cook. is far. This is YT protect again. So this is another one to the tight end. Yeah, so he's running the track off the top of the tackle. Tackle's down and comes off his ass. There's the nickel. That's a gone. That's a strong hook. That's a weak hook. There's your curl flat. I like that right there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Zona. There should be a tube over here. So you like all that. And this should just be zoned out. I like what he's doing. We yep. should be deeper with the crow fly. That's really all we got right here. Once he gets this, he's got to go stay that so we should be deeper here. Typically, um, so this is a mistake, really. Uh, but you know how they're doing it. We, uh, we traded it. We kept it on. What's this trade is trade? Mm -hmm. So I'm try not to do that. There's too many moving parts. Yeah. So you can see right here. This is this is a true zone right here. Yeah.
blood cell. This is a trade. Trade curl flat, curl flat. Of just blood so and the people working to the Mac, working to the field, you know, and getting the two on twos in the boundary. Right, now we're in the 2D. Okay, so this is breeze. This is quarters over here, this is half over here. Right? And then um, that's a track. There's another, it's a max protect, but we got two on two here, and I got five on two over here. That's a good picture of the bite and throw away. Good job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can yeah. see he's trying to work a freeze rush on this. Feel his life. Uh -huh. Try to go through him. Okay, we screw this one up. Um, this kid this kid plays like it's a strong hook and he should be playing with nail hooks. How he overdrops it. She should be on side of it. But, you know, Iowa always put the back in the boundary. You know, it seemed like wherever, wherever we looked at him, at the, yeah. the center was never slid in the boundary. The center always slid in the field. So that, you know, we get this, uh, that's another freeze rush right here. Now, you know, these are the toughest routes. So we get this, like, you know, the, the corner, if that happens, the corner, the nickel on this place hide a little for us. We don't jump yeah. it. You know, they can try not to undress this guy with this. Yeah. You know, and so he played top down, top down, top down. He, no different than, you know, like a smash or something. Mm -hmm. Right? Just try to play top down with that as best you can. Make him throw that the further throw, not the deeper one. Right? Then over here, this is the uh, freeze. Right there. Okay. Now we're in mug. So here, this is two packer. You can see where he's playing out. So he, these two are working a nail on these two. He's locked on that. So you just get different levels and you play it. Okay, I said, you know, this is mug and reno. We'll climb over here. I like how I'm right, trying to hold it, hold it, hold it, make him have to mm -hmm. diagnose that. And then this is where we moved our pupils. So our two best guys are to that side. Mm -hmm. and that's our best guy right on the back. Our other guy is the guy that's looping. Okay, this is at the end of the game. So he should be staying for it, so he's thinking he's got two, he's got three right here. He, this is a nickel, he's got two. So yeah. He should be dropping straight back on three, and max on two. Mm -hmm. right, so this is no real here. This so is there traded. any particular, I mean, rule wise, just because the nickel's always in the field, you just got to know two by two, three by one, or is the nickel. I mean, he's always a three drop, I guess, in the field anyway. Yeah, this he would be, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, he doesn't have to. I thought this was the end of it, but nope, we were back out. Yeah. This is two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we were back out in about 30 seconds. Yeah, I think by these time these guys are having up. I think yeah. this thing is so quick. It's immediate. Make sure that they got stuff. Make sure you have to make quick decisions. Yeah. All right, so this is uh, Bear, Montana. So if the ball's in the middle of the field, the passing strength is the field. So go okay. there, Montana. So there's, there's the twist. Here is the uh, corner on the squirm. Oh, this is the yeah. uh, kick. Yeah, two kick. Mm -hmm. That's the nickel. Right? You gotta be, see, this is spring. You gotta be flatter because of that right there. Mm -hmm. Right? You gotta be pushing more this way. There's your curl flat. There's your angle pedal. And he's trying to hold and not. not Give it away to because he knows he's a quarterback, right? And he should be, he's a really close guy. Uh, 
this is uh, load breeze to packer. I'm going to show this look. So this is a uh, uh, nail, a packer to this side. Now you have what he needs to know is hey, well, this van on the outside, so the road is flat, so any crosser is what we say two. So any crosser comes, you got to go, so you get surprised. So he's yeah. just kind of pedaling out. He's got to take this thing across because it's man to man out here. Okay, so here's your, your load, and there's your breeze. Release the back. Yeah. Why can't we be wider and do a four eye over here? Hunt you down a little bit more and get a, you get a hard, a hard look at and give this guy a chance. And really give this guy a chance. kick. That is the field over here. Right, there's the turn. You have to run with the bend. Right, this is your main hook or your vertical hook. He's got to be more aware of what's happening here. His vision is just on the cue. Yeah, that's the score on there. Good. And you got to take one in. That happens. There's the third. third. Refresh me again on Montana two kick here. It was two by two. Uh, or it could be Dan on the cloud. It did, yeah, exactly. Okay. You'd cloud a tight end if he's attached. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy watching this right here. Look at that. That's my guy, too. God, I forget his name. God, what's his name? Krenwick. Krenwick Sanders. So he's going to be playing. He's a great kid, but he would just. He had a hard time covering him, you know, he kind of came out like that. <laughs> he had great, he's the best hands on the team. This was that one game. And so, um, we they called his due to Packer. He was a cowboy, and so we just move around, but it's basically, you're running like Breeze to Packer is all you're doing. But it's just for little people, so there's an illusion, just other stuff, I counted all that. And the whole thing we done was, was <laughs> we could get them counted. They would count over here and protect and all that. And then once they made their call, then we just move. And they sort of walk over there and rush from there. And we had a lot of two on ones I had. Yeah. So when we were in circus, the circus was more of a stamp. So it wasn't like a everyone doing what they wanted to do. Right. You know what I mean? You started it was, you, it was, it was a true move? Yeah. And we didn't say move. We went off the indicator. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? And so like, um, whatever the indicator for like, the hands, like, what was this? This was the, his hands right there, right? That was what it was. So when he sinks in his hands, well, that's when we move. We didn't say, we just worked off of it. But like, so, circus, sometimes you get guys just doing individual, guys yeah. doing their own stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And so the whole part of that to me would be to, hide, to make them give the show population one way to run it the other way. Right. And so, you know, we get them like, hey, you could play anywhere within um, a gap and a half, whatever that is, radius right. from where you were. You right. Know? And you could show here, but no more than that. And then when you got the when you got the, the indicator, then you want you to, this is what you're seeing here, we would move back. You know what I mean? So that's how, I mean, that's how we play our circus or our We whatever. call that circus. That's what I was talking about earlier. If you give guys freedom to do different. Yeah, it was but just. But then there's an indicator that gets them Correct, back. correct. So that, yeah. Uh, this is, what is this? Okay. This is, um. Uh, what is it? This is Rogers, True Packer. Now, see in this one. With the scissors, right? Yep, scissors. Right now, mm -hmm. you can see they, they saw it right here, and it's because of these guys. We have both the guys on the same side. So these are the two guys that weren't coming. These are, these are our two best guys. That's the F and B. Mm -hmm. And they saw it. Good so job. I think, mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, Good job, I think Steve. if we didn't have that stuff, you would still, I mean, you would, it'd be cleaner. You know what I mean? You, 
it'd be hard for them to pick it up and see it. But they're picking up. So they're seeing it over here once it gets out. These guys are all smart. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I know you. Smart. You're not supposed to be over here. Yeah, this is where they're smart, but. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then there's a trade off. I knew what they were doing. And it's like it's even worse if you know it, we still can't execute it. Mm -hmm. It's D2 pack. It is versus. We played all that, all the versus these guys because all those empty things. Yeah. So what the hell is this 3rd and 11 ace ran the ball? They refused to. This is, um, what is this? What do we say this was? This is um, Rogers, two back. So we're just going to the back. And so there, and he's on two, he's on three, he's on two. And the thing about it, when you, it's two by two and you show it the other way, I mean, you get the overhanging here, you got this look here. I mean, I think yeah. that's going to hold these guys for a second and you bump on out. When Mitch Lindner had had enough, he went postal on them, all the guys that used to supposedly protect him. He had like three surgeries. I mean, just to just to heal shit. I mean, he was so broken. What is this? This is uh, this is Green Mister Packer. So this is more or less a. Um, so here you kind of get that. See how he how the mm -hmm. guard fights back. So he sees this guy lead. Who is this? Thing? Yeah, he sees the center lead. The nose lead, mm -hmm. the guard sits, comes back. That's the issue. You get some far, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Because we're bringing yeah. this guy, right? Because that's who they're working towards, right? Yeah. So they're going to come on back. Now, all that's cool. Back. You just got to yeah, make them execute fast, yeah. right? And you got to have yeah. this, that, and the other thing. You know what I mean? There's a mix, and all of a sudden, it's, you know, that's rocket. And all that. And over here, he's, he's slow play, so it's like a slow play. Yep. Yeah. He's playing A. He's playing A to ball with all this right here. This yeah. guy is. Let this guy. So I like what 93 does when he cuts it off. Your coverage to this was wow. yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're yeah. four so to the, the right field right. and cloud to the boundary. Yeah. So this is nail here and he's cloud. Yeah. So this is Greece. So we're short, right, on the run because we got eight of the ball. There's no one in that seat. Yeah. And I mean, if we're quarters, then we're gapped out. But there's no one. So he's playing eight of ball. So he has to use the movement. So Greece would be the one. You know, there's Montana, Marino, all those. Breeze would be the one that I would call kind of run pass. You know what I mean? Like when yeah. it's the second and nine, yeah. if, if I call around that time. Where you feel comfortable because you're using the movement. Yeah. You're trying to use the movement anyways. Yeah. And this guy would kind of pace it out, fall back. I like right here. Like right now at LSU, our guy would be <laughs> See ya. I can run fast from this guy. Yeah. Well, 93 did it. Yeah, he does it. He's the key. Back. Yep. Yep. Cuts it off. Mm. Okay, this is Wizard. So, right now, this is Lee, Lee, Lee. So, this is quarters. So, this is Lee. He's rushing. And then, so this is three by one. So, when he motions across, he goes deuce left, deuce left, deuce left. Gotcha. So, he taps it off. Yep. And, so, and now he rushes. And Foster. Oh, no, that's Bjork. Joe Bjork. Bjork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Bjork. So, Lee, Lee, Lee. Deuce, 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 deuce. And he's going to go, uh, in his path, he's going to go be the three technique. Yeah. Guard at him. He's got a two-way go. Mm -hmm. Guard down off the ass. Mm -hmm. 
and you keep him straight so that you know we felt that like if this happened and he slanted and he would like everything else come back. Come back. Yep. So we want to keep him vertical. <coughs> This is switch alert, switch alert, do flood. So this would have been a wizard call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is wizard word right now. Yeah, so they just fanned out to no one, so it's just take two, it. On, two on one. Yeah. There was a guy over here, the overhang, they just kept walking out. <laughs> Yeah, same thing. Uh, this is two by two switch alert, switch alert, do slow. Stem to it. So I think what's cool about it is we're going to stem and go Orton kind of under. You can see Orton. What's about to happen is he's going to drop cold flat. He rushes. We cook strong hook cold flat. Right? But you can see when the, the the front. So we showed we showed a, a buzzer or, 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 or eagle rather, and then got back to under. We're going to slant to it. Going to slant you know, and him hit it. That's one way to do it, is to do it from that odd look slamming, right, to create the underfoot. And then, you know, you could do it where you just line up in it, like, and go odd, stem to this, you know, and hit it from there if you do the next time. This is the one they say your nose bobbed his head? Uh, no. This is the one that... Yeah, yeah. this is the one we got him. Okay. Yeah. That's the one that I talked to the... Before <laughs> I talked to the... But so here's the very next play. Do you give them a heads up going into it that you have a move call mm -hmm. in? Yeah. yeah. A loose man, gone, strong hook. We cook. He needs to begin back to he should be here for this deal. Yeah, they're all looking yeah. at it, looking at the deal. But here's an example though of how we stand on the ego of the runs it. You know. And so, you know, we can slant to it or we can line up in it. So it gives them a different, a different look, right? All right, and this was the next place. So now this is Mug Marino, or Man. This is Nail. This is Cloud. Can't really tell what the tackle was doing, so I see why. This is, I think we're in uh, Tolzien now. So okay. Tolzien, if it's just two by two, it's going to look like wizard. You know, so this is Tolzien. Yeah. So this is going to be, uh, you know, red hand right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so. Shay. Shayless. He stays zero, four I. And so we like, you know, this is difficult, but we want him to be tight. So he played the dive. If the mm -hmm. cue keeps it, he plays the cue. And then he's got this head again. Now, when we played Tolzien, we put this guy vertical. He was attack react. Do you see the difference in that? I was just yep. going vertical. Mm -hmm. So he played attack react when we played Tolzien. So he pushed vertical with the flag on the backside. That's how we're playing everything right now. Issue and it probably just fits those guys better. Yeah. Right? And so here's three by one. So here's that formation, that four by four by one really that kind of gives you trouble. So this is closing. You see here, right? Gone call. I have that stack. 
tigers, just pulls you in again. Right? Uh, have her here, we're good, have her here. So if it goes away, then he's A gap here, we're gapped out. If it goes away. He's A, right? he's going to be B, he's going to be C. He's A, he's B, and then this is C over here. There he comes. So that's our B. You can see not the best, right? He needs to be staying in there instead of ripping out. Yeah. He needs to stay in. And then, you know, this is the attack react. That's how that looks when it's attack react. Right? He's going to be more off of an edge. He'll be really thick on the guy. Sorry, Tolzine over here, so this is the strong right. So this is switch alert. This is hammer to this side. Uh, I like I like on this one that he he needs to slide. So this stuff would come out in a stump review. You know I mean? So it's okay to do that in a stump review. Right, that's where that's kind of taught. Yeah. Right, where they're reading the slide, yep. and everything. So this is that YT protect. These guys did a ton. Right, they can hide in. They bring the guy across. So this would be one we want to run like let's go and stuff like that to that side because of this. But you know, we're all we're all right with some of this stuff if we read it. If we re we see it's passed, we read out of it, knowing that it's it's going to be okay. Right. Mm -hmm. You can jaywalk, bro, when there's no cops. Right. <laughs> And there's no cars. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to jaywalk when there's like fucking uh, cars coming, right? Yeah. So that's all the stuff that he teaches. When to jaywalk. Alright, second and six. Okay, right here. That's where you can see the big gap. Side guy. Yeah, so they, they kept bringing it down. Your roll here with the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is 3D, I, I yeah. want to say. This is Trey, right? Oh! Yeah, so we're. Oh, is it 2x2? Two two? Is it 3x1? Three three by one? Yeah, so this should be. We should be in trips over here to this. It looks like we're in quarters, though, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can probably screw this up. Should be a trips call. Which would have put you in yeah, to a gone. Yeah, it's like he made, he's making an attack tackle right here. Yeah. Instead of being an overhang. Good thing, 3D thing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Break your order. Yeah. And so, so this went is. Back two by two. Yep. So this went 3D. Mm -hmm. The two by two now on quarters. You give. You mentioned yesterday you, you you do each week like an indicator cut up. Mm -hmm. You know, you get you're giving those to all your backers. But how long is that cut up? I mean, is it 15, 20 clips showing uh, it? Maybe. Is it run and pass? Is yeah. It just kind of. Maybe eight or nine clips, but it just shows. A little bit under center, a little bit uh -huh. gun, a little bit just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to be able to try to find in the cut ups in the cut up in the games that you look to find that. You want to find the people that are, are blitzing, right? Because you want to see. Because it's one thing. Because if, if if you just take like, like, who would it be? If you took a, if you took it, uh, I guess. If you 
took a team that just rushed four guys, mm -hmm. and that was the game that you got the indicator cut up from. Right. It's good, but it's not. There's no that quarterback is in stress. Right. You want to find the game where it's a big blitz team. Yeah. That's the game you want to get the indicator cut up from. Okay. Because that's going to be your, he's going to now everyone give a fuck whether there's this or that. And right. You know, it's the double cadence, it's the whatever it is, that's where you get all that. Okay. Because the team is just rushes four all the time. Yeah. How does he handle the pressure? Right. How does he react? Right. Yeah. yeah. Keys, or just how does, keys. when the ball's coming out, what is their pre snap defense? Go to, right? Yeah. 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 Show that you. Offensive, yeah. Um, they did not be an offense on defense, not a page. Yeah. <laughs> really. This is Orton. So I think here we played quarters, two backs, and it went to went this, so we went three deep. Right. So it's not three deep until we get motion. Yeah. But yeah, this is Orton. So he's rushing, and we slant these guys out. But he's got to be careful. 53 got to be careful and still play that B gap. Right. what you missed on the other play. Right. Versus whoever yeah. it was, was just that immediacy right there. Let's see. Orton, yeah, so this is a good picture. I put this on here because the this is what we were doing so much of this. See how they just block, they keep full turn. Right. And then they know they slid it, I guess, right? And so this would be where we were, and I don't have it on here, but this is where you want Boomer. Okay. Right? So Boomer, the only difference is he drops curl flat and he rushes. Yep. But this is where you want Boomer. Right. Just for this. Because that, I mean, that's what they're doing. Yeah, you just, just flips those two guys. Yep. Yep. You just play that game now. You do enough of the inside stuff, that's how they're walking. Yeah. Yep. And all you're looking to do is get a one on one. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, know, you, more, you stress the protections more than you beat them. <coughs> you guys so, work, you know, aside from the, the one drill where everybody's going, like you break out in one on one period. Are your backers going with the with the backs working on blitz pickup? Yeah, that'll we we'll try to do that individual. Try to take at least five minutes. Sometimes out of end. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, this is Tulsi. Two, three, two. So this is how it'll look if a team block slide, it looks like that. Yeah. Right? If a team were to block big on big, then they're going here, here. So you want to go to court and all that, you want to go to AF, like you saw in the USC, USC thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. This is Wizard. This is Lee Lee Lee. So that's a Lee again. And of course. <coughs> he's really gold. He's cheap and he's fucking around with this. If you leave, he did a good job of that, probably too much. But screw up top. So it's hammered over here. These two are here. Uh, this is box. So <coughs> make the max drop. So one, two, or three. Like that. You want to be flatter and match that up more. I like I like fifty-three. Uh, you should look the same. But you know, all those spacing and spot routes, we should be right over them. And then these guys kind of play a switch with everyone else, too. You know?
this was the one doing it. So I think, like all the stuff the Vikings do, makes sense. And it makes sense with all this because you can do all of these out of bear and do them all out of mug. We're looking at doing it at altitude, and this probably fits us probably a little bit more than doing it as much as the creepers. I don't know, you know, but like um, so if it was two by two for male, if it was two by one, three by one for a dog, or uh, three, three under, you know what I mean? Yep. So like say if it was, you know, say it was something like this, and then he reads it, and then you write a poem, yep. right? And you're like that, and you could do the same thing. That's what this is in terms of. We just bring up the safety. And so this is dog. This is uh, three, three on three. You stretch him off the edge. You know, and they can't, they can't pick him up. And they got three guys. Yeah. So it's four on three. It's just a, it's just a uh, deal of, you know, your stress and coverage a little bit more. Can you, can you get to that? Can they get to you? Yeah. What made the, the termination of the safety come in here? This was weak, just weak, so we called it wham. So we had wham and strike. Okay. So wham was weak, and then strike was strong, so you have something where the, now the nickel can come and strong and do it. And so uh, I think the ability, because like I say, if you did it two by two, it'd be, it's three by, it's three by one. I mean, dog makes a lot of sense, but if you did it, you know, say it was something like this. <coughs> you want to try to show something like that. Yep. Back there. I mean, so you don't have a, there's not a tilt, right? You want to show the tilt. So now it can be four this way, four that way. Now you got some four. You know, Safety is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. My sneeze, these were all my dark, some of the other overloads. This was the nut shot. Let's so let's let's yeah, this, this is five from the side right here. So, I mean, we're able to get. A lot with the um, the creepers, you know, pressure-wise, and so a lot of the zone blitzes, the usefulness for them are just the overloads. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. where those come in. Yeah. They just get true four from the side, yeah. and let's you know, if they're, if they're if they're picking off our creepers, then let's get somewhere where we got pressure. You know? Yeah. So don't really have any zone blitzes in the package to where there's not, you know, four guys coming from the same side. You know, they're coming from the side. That makes sense. I mean, you can do something I can't pick up. Yeah. You know. What is this? This is, okay. This is, uh, what do you call it? We just talked about it. The small uh, Romo. Oh, so Romo. Yeah, so it's empty. We played it because this is the Mac on the back, so you can tell you don't really know what the fuck he's doing. So this is the whole player. <laughs> Stay over right. the top. All right, yeah. <laughs> so he's man to man inside, but this is what I'm saying. So it's really a three man rush. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we called it to the tight end, so it hits. Yep. 
Right? Yep. There's your hole player. And there's your hug rusher again. It's the same thing. The tight end was on to so have the tight end block the guy that's covering you. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And if he does block out, that guy just he's already mm -hmm. in position to just hug yeah. right there and hug himself in. Yep. Yep. Marino made a lot of sense. All the stuff that's weak is the best, right? The, the boundary stuff. Yeah. You know, Breeze, my, uh, Marino, <coughs> right? Let's so. This is Mug Man. How far up the field do you have him go before he starts wrapping? Two steps is a one step. One step. Mm -hmm. One step. Mm -hmm. Just one hard step. He'll just truly see if the tackle mm -hmm. kicks or the not. outside foot, mm -hmm. and then he's just mm -hmm. you know, scraping as tight as he can for mm -hmm. the most part. Mm -hmm. This is mug man, so this is a hug rush. Just playing man to man. So this is usually the first one. I hear. It. I like how aggressive he is. Go get him. And yeah. If he felt. Threatened with this guy being wide, and he stays late, and he passed, he passed the buck to this guy. And that meant now he was contained, right, as he hit it. So these, these would be the four rushers now. If he said link, and these two guys would have the back right here. Right? And then you'd get the same thing, like say if you said link, and this happened, and then he's containing, and it looks like all their stuff is turned up the other. You, we have, we have, we have this. Yeah, you guys can yes, yeah, that is, yeah, yep, yep. It's in our exos too, so you can pull it on the iPad. Um, would you go through Aikman and Romo one more time? Yeah. Um, just for that part, and then. Uh, You'll need to leave. Um, we'll get you out of here in like the next 15 to 20 because you'll 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 want to be comfortable on the safe side to allow. Yeah. MSP security is fucking terrible. Right? Oh, wow. so what time is the flight? Five. Five forty-five. 45 yeah. Five. Yeah. And so Aikman, we just want to set it away from the back. So Aikman. So like I've, I've messed that up already. So it's like this, this, this. So we go, so what we would say again with this, we wouldn't say River Lake, we'd say Aikman right, Aikman right. So we built it. And so we'd set it like that. And then the rover would be here in the corner. And then the Mac. And so he wants to hit it and penetrate. So we're penetrating that, penetrating that. Push up, and then he's contained. And then we're anticipating this, you know what I mean? Yep. So we want to get that, to get that. Yep. And that's really what it is. Now, the, he has the back. And so if the back were blocking here, he hugs it up. He hugs. And then, um, you know, he tries to show it like that. Yep. <coughs> yep. Um, yep. And then, Romo. So Aikman was good. Aikman was good versus. Um, it was a good changeup. We play a fair amount of midfield, mm -hmm. so like two man, and so he always wanted to change. Romo was the lead. Romo might have, now you know the thing about when the wins and losses. You play anytime you play in Minnesota, it's third and something wrong. You know. Yeah. So your percentages are going to be okay, right? Yeah. You know, Romo was the big. Was 
with that being said, Roma was the best one that we had, right? It was one like almost, it was like almost 90% win. Mm. Um, and we ran it all the time. So the, the, it's one of those things, though, where it's like, you know, I don't know, man. I, I think um, it's kind of like Spike in that there's not a lot, I mean, there's guys rushing, but there's not a lot of guys rushing in the sense of, get like the, um, you have to, you have to, and I mean myself, I kind of have to um, find the right time to get it in and all that because they're not just like blowing and going. I, I just, I feel like if you, that's what you do, you know, you blow and go, what concerns me is the running lanes, the scramble and all that. Because just like I haven't done that, you know what I mean? And I think anytime you're teaching that or I've taught that, then, you know, I'm kind of talking, I feel like I was talking out of both sides of my mouth to say that you rush, then I said, oh, so you're going to contain, all right, you know what I mean, <laughs> you're going to contain, you know, like, where's the rush, you know what I mean, when is that, and so it's been, I, I say all that to say, like, if I were to bring up Romo right now, or Spike right now, back at LSU, then I'll be going, so we're not rushing off the edge. You know, where that would come up. You know? yeah. And so that's the price you pay for the other thing. So yeah. I think either, you know, either you're gonna you know, either say it up front or we're gonna have leverage and contain and we're gonna um, we're gonna uh, be creative in here and change the math or we're gonna we're really gonna rush and get after them. Yeah. But then you're also gonna contain it too. I mean so that's there's you kinda choose choose where you live, I guess, a little bit. So if it was this, this would be we we go Romo left. I think I have a picture of Romo. I took a picture of him um, in uh, my phone. I imagine I just sent it to you. And so you look like this, and so it depends. You know, if this if this tight end was a big threat, we put him off the ball. He looked like that. Okay. So you know, like this, and then. So then Romo would be, he's here, he's got that same scat, that scat rule. So he's this way. And so then these guys are rushing, so it's like that. And then he's in the hole. And so at that back of the flare release right now, but you know, he would contain. That back blocks. He's the hug rush. He's the hug, but he's going to get him. Right? Tight end blocks. He's that yeah. end. Deal. I think, let me see. I think I've got it in here. So Romo was one of the better ones. The whole player helped us out a ton. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the whole player, and, and really, even though you're technically rushing three, by by doing what you're doing, you're getting the fourth guy there. They called it Marvin Flat Wrap. Hmm. You send this to me? Yeah. So this was one of the better ones we had. Like I said, this was the best one we had in terms of percentage. So, um, I get halfway bashful about saying it because it's only yeah. like a three. Oh, no. Rush, you know? Yeah. If you could send that to me, that'd be. Yeah. Yeah. But what, it, I don't know, I think like, um, I don't know. I, I mean, I like that. fits that. me, because the personality I got is just hard. Cause right away, if I were just to see just the blowing and going, I mean, it's like kind of talked about it yesterday, I think I, I, right away I hear bugles and, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And fucking drums and shit. And it's just, you know, I like this because you got, you got kind of, uh, you got to feel safe a little bit. Well, this is a, yeah. this, uh, and, and look, in, in Man Under, then all of a sudden, you get somebody picked off or something beats you inside quick, you get a whole guy. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and it's just a, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a good one. That's a, so this was Roma. So we, we played out, and then if it got into the back, 
fight it. Yeah. Like you saw on that one clip. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then the other cut that's in there has got all of the uh, the mugs together and it's got all the bears together. You know what I mean? So okay. all that's kind of you can see the three D the, the mug, um, Bledsoe three mug far three, right? the bear, blood cell three, right? all that. Right? So there's got them grouped by that. Um, I'm going to uh, check your flight again real quick. I know Sundays, it's Sunday Easter, right? I think. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be hard for me to stay on that. You have to worry about. Well, the hard thing is, happens. there's nothing to wreck. It'll be on Monday coming back, so I have to worry about something happening. You're 5:53, and get to you're on Delta. Okay. So when you go those times, that's a 5:53. Cool. So we're, we're gonna run you out there a little bit. Um, on some of your, you know, whether it's Type Four or Wizard or any of that, two back run game. Yeah. You just get two back power, things of that nature. Yeah. How, how are some of that, right. you know? Spill everything. Spill, okay. Yeah. And then for the, the inside guys, spill everything. Inside guys, spill everything. The outside guys, love it. Yep. So if you were to come across, if he felt this thing bend, and if it was immediate bend, then he'd go. But we spilled it this way so that he could get over the top of that. Or some people will man this on the back side. And they'll go like that. Yeah. So we can get over the top of that. Yeah. And not be so tight here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or if he was leveraging it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and if it was like a way zone, Inside out, and I think I think um, I don't know why it, it's a mistake to play it outside in. In other words, right here doing this way. Yep. You're gonna go back for days. Yep. You know, once you, the guys that they read to me are these guys. Yeah. The action. So we play fast and get over on this on this action. So I'm right back here all the time. Yep. So you play it slow so that the, even when it's this. You fox the post with this guy. So similar to how you guys play it on one zero seven. Mm -hmm. He's here, but on pass, you will push the post. Yeah. So he's sitting here. So I mean, we want, you know, at at um, 
you know, just trying it's the tight end side. You know, I, I could at the Panthers when I was there for the training camp they used to turn Rex and Lee, right? So the side of the tight end. Mm -hmm. That meant that safety was in the fit. You know, and the other safety was off. Yeah. Right? So this safety would be out and the safety would be in. So like you'd be thirties and he play backside, he called this a nest because he was the cutback player. So if that yeah. so this ball can do what? This ball can uh, press. Mm -hmm. This ball can uh, belly. This ball can bounce. So the press and the belly is what we're playing. We're reacting to the bounce. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the Mac is here. He's going to fit inside that guard. He's fitting in the A. He's fitting in that nest C. Okay. And then we'll use the onside safety to fit in that C. In that front side C with the thinking being. The ball doesn't want to stay on path most of the time. Right. Anyway. And then if we get play pass, you know, the safety over the top, anything, you know, like that. That right? box the post. Yeah. All right. And so it looks that way. Now, so if the presses were there, the bellies, right, he's in position. He should be hitting it and then falling back. He's in that crease. Yeah. Right. And then, but, you know, we want to go work it to where, and Wisconsin, where we were able to get it to where it bounces like this. And then we just play football, sure. right? And then we go C and we go A. Sure. But if it, if and if your outside backer keeps it leveraged, right. the yep. bounce, you can flatten it out. That's right. And so, so much of it is that the backs will be, the, the, we're in, tight, in the tight front, it is a, um, we're playing off that back. Because mm -hmm. I think what they, what they want you to do in that scenario is make a quick decision. Yes, but you don't. I, I don't think you want to do that. You know, I, uh, I, you know. Like say, for example, if that Mac were to make a quick decision and just run in that A, right? That ball is going to jump cut to the C, and the yeah. safety's going to what the fuck? Yeah. But the rover would make a quick decision, run over to this A. The ball is going to belly and come right. Just to have them stack on their bigs, really. right? That's all it is. Yeah. And then I think what happens is the running backs when you like that, the running backs kind of. Like, Make a move, make a move, yeah. make a move, you know what I mean? And that's what you want. Yeah. Now all that is the movement that is happening in the other calls complements the fact that the old lineman would fire out so I could go get in their ass. You know what I mean? I think if we just sat there and just played this, then that's a, to me that's an entirely different story because if the linebackers are are kicking back to George Benson and all that shit and the D line's <laughs> Shots. Yeah. Right? That's the that yeah. would be the, the flip. Right? Yeah. If there's enough movement and enough whatever else happening up here where these angles are flatter, right? These angles are like this, because we're not sure of where the thing's coming, yeah. then we can do that. If we're not doing that, then these angles are gonna be more this way. Which I would imagine you're still you're still over Bill with the inside guys and, and, yeah. and box everything outside. This is where the, the gap runs are where you like the four eyes and everything the most. It's because I mean, you're not a three get double, you know. Yeah. A lot of times this guy can open up that guy, right? Yep. So he's gonna work his hip back into that double. He's sitting here. That's a leverage. Max gonna spill the guard. The rover's gonna near hand far shoulder the Y. The safety's in the fit. And then this is your fox, the post guy again. This guy on him on the backside. Yeah. It's gonna be a slow fall. Uh, the guard misses uh, near hand, far shoulder on the tight end. Now, if the uh, it was it was you guys, you guys used to run like inside power, didn't you? Yep. 
Minnesota. That's, yep. always, that's what I thought. And so, yep. like, say if you got that, and it wasn't here. Yep. Which some people will do with a four eye and an eye, right? Yeah. And so, if we got that, then this, so the backside player, the power, the gap scheme, if there was a tight end coming down to you, we'd near hand to far shoulder. If we didn't have a tight end coming down to us, we overlap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's all that's happening now. And so now we're still we're we're still going to get this. He spills, right? And we get it's going to look weird, right? Having that guy go like that. Yeah, because there's nobody to pick him up. Right. He's there. He's there. Yeah. So. And so that's how we fit, like um, that's pin and pool, right there too, right? So like if there was. Wisconsin runs the, uh, yep. the two back in the pool. So, I mean, how is that? How do they do it? They walk out? I can't remember. Um, yeah, that, that's. That, that one right there, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right in there? Yep. Okay, so. And probably, you know, a lot of them will do down on the nose and pull the center even on, on some of the one back team. Right. So that say if we got that, I think Wisconsin when they did it, it was fullback, it was like that. Yeah. And so you were here, and you were here, and you was an extra shooter. Yeah. All right. And then, um, and then if there was like a 12 personnel, Spill the first spill. contained second, and spill the second. The, ma the Mac would spill the first. Yeah, so this would be spill the first. Yeah. And contain the second. Yeah. Okay, spill the second. Yeah. So the edges help you. Yeah. Get those guys off the ball. Yeah. Well, that's what we, I mean, we get that with the, I mean, and, and even what we do with playing so much nine technique, the ball's got to stay yeah. a lot of times up in twos, you yeah. know, it's party in the sea gap. Yeah. You know, that's what you got to be able to, right. you know. And that's where, like, what you got to do with the movement, and we would do with Trace, having the ability to bring this guy under. Right? Yeah. This big. Yeah. Like that, mm -hmm. right? Or you know, uh, like that. You yeah. know, somehow affecting that CDF. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the mix.